Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. Circle B, I think. Oh. Uh-huh. Come on upstairs and have a drink with me. I gotta get clear here for a few minutes. All right, let's go. Yeah, they are kind of loud, aren't they? They sure are. You ever get fed up with it, Matt? Uh, fed up with what? Everything. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, make yourself to home. Ah, oh, thank you. What's bothering you, Kitty? Oh, nothing special. Just the whim whams, I guess. Oh. Pour us a drink. Okay. You know, since you're so fed up, why don't you get out of it? Go back east. Get married and settle down. Nice, quiet bank clerk, a tub of wash and a cook stove. <laughs> and, uh, kids? I'd like kids. Let's have that drink. Yeah. There you are. I'm not getting out, and neither are you. So let's live while we still... Oh, if that's some drunken herder, so help me out. Yes? You sit downstairs, and Marshall was up here. I'll come in. Matt? What's on your mind, fella? I thought maybe you could give me some information, Marshal. I'm looking for some folks named Crail, Mr. and Mrs. John Crail. I understand they've got a place around Dodge somewhere. Ah, uh, yes, Miss Crail does. John Crail died about three years ago. No. Are uh, you an old friend of theirs? They're my folks, my ma and pa. What? I'm Billy Crail. Maybe they mentioned me. Oh, why, uh... Yeah, yeah, your uh, mother's always said that you'd come home someday. That she, she's never given up hoping. How is she, Marshal? Oh, she's not too good. She's got a big ranch on her hands. She's been trying to run it alone since your dad died. You, uh, think she'll recognize you? She might not at first. It's been 17 years since I ran away from home. Yeah. The kid does crazy things. Maybe not right at first, but I'll convince her all right. Yeah, you probably will. She'll even help you do it. Where you been all these years, Willie? Just drifting. Here, there. You know how it goes. Yeah, sure. How do I get out to the place? Uh, I'm anxious to see you. Uh, it's about five miles east of town. You just follow down river. You can't miss it. Thanks a lot, Marshal. I guess we'll see each other again since I'm going to settle down, eh? Oh, sure. So long. All right. Let's have it. 
What? What do you mean, Kitty? Well, I know you, Matt. Something was wrong there. What was it? Well, it's just this, Kitty. A few years ago, Miss Crail asked me to try to trace her son for her. I did it. But then I didn't have the heart to tell her. Tell her what? I got a report back from the war office. Billy Crail had joined the Union Army at the start of the war. He was killed in action at the Battle of Shiloh. This is it, L and M filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip. Much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior filtration. Superior taste. Superior filtration because of L&M's superior filter. White. All white. Pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Tasty. Full of flavor. And light and mild. No doubt about it. L&M is America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it. L&M filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. through these here circulars till I'm blue in the face. They cut throats, cattle rustlers, horse thieves, bank robbers, anything you can think of. There ain't nary one of them fits the description of that Crail fellow. Now, just keep looking, Chester. Might be two or three years back, but I've seen that face of his somewhere. And it had to be in one of these circulars. Well, I just don't understand how he figures to get away with it. You can't fool a man's own ma. I might in this case. She hasn't seen him since he was a boy, and she's pretty old now. Her eyesight's failing her, her memory's none too good. Well, that ranch and all the money she's got put away, he sure seems... Wait a minute, Chester. You find something, Mr. Jones? Uh-huh. Yeah, I thought so. He sure looks like him, all right. It is him. Three years ago. Height 6'1", weight 185, sandy complexion, so on, so on. Sure so on. fits him. Wanted in Lubbock for questioning in connection with the holdup of the Lone Star Bank. Previous arrest, Pecos Crossing, cattle theft, acquitted for lack of evidence. Convicted San Antonio eight years ago, armed robbery, served four years, paroled. Known associates, Nate Barger and Ponca City Kid. Reward $1,000. Calls himself Johnny Red. Well, Chester. Chester? Let's go get him. see him nowhere around. Ah, oh, that's good. I was hoping I could talk to Ms. Crail first. Think you'll put up a fight, Mr. Jones? I don't know, Chester. Who is it? Hi, it's Marshal Dillon, ma'am. Well, if this ain't a surprise now, come on in and set a spell, Marshal. Pardon. Thank you, Ms. Crail. Good to see you, Marshal. And you, too, Mr. Proudfoot, isn't it? Uh, yes, ma'am, please. Uh, I wasn't too sure. My eyes ain't quite... Well, come on in, gentlemen. Oh, glad to see I do like company. It seems like nobody ever comes out this way no more. Now, set yourselves down there now. Oh, thank you. Uh, rest your feet, and I'll get you a cup of coffee. Oh, well, don't bother, Miss Crail. We don't have much time. Time? Well, it won't take no time. I got it already made. I'm just fixing to have some myself. You might take oh, your hat off, just Land to... alive. Oh. If a body can't do a little something for a company, she ain't fit to have none. <laughs> well, I, I guess it does get pretty lonesome out here to have... Well, it did. 
Oh, I've got a big surprise to tell you about, Marshal. Your, uh, son? Oh, shucks. The way gossip flies around Dodge City, a body couldn't have a chance to get ahead of it. <laughs> oh, here you are. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. you. He's come home. Just like I always knew he would. As, uh... Has he changed much, Miss Crow? Oh, good heavens, yes. Well, he was just a boy when he went away, and now he's a grown-up man. He's fine and then strong. Uh-huh. Uh, then there's no doubt in your mind that this really is Billy, huh? Why, that's downright silly, Marshal. Well, you can't fool a mother. She can always tell her own. Why, the second Billy walked up on that porch and said, How are you, Ma? I knew him just like that. Uh, I see. You know, I've been sort of going downhill since John passed on. The work was hard. and seemed like I'd kind of lost my reason for living. I don't think I'd have lasted, Marshal. Well, now, Miss Oh, Crayola. but it's different now. The minute Billy put his arm around me, I started feeling like a young woman again. And I still do. Well, I'm happier than I've been in years. Yes, ma'am, you sure seem to be. My son's come home. Could a mother ask for more? No, ma'am, I, I guess not. I, I suppose that is all that matters. That's all. Well... Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, Marshal. I've been talking a leg off you. I haven't even thought to ask what brings you out this way. Why, oh, nothing, Miss Crail. As uh, a uh, matter of fact, we just rode out for a friendly fish. Oh, well, I'm mighty glad you did, Marshal. You stop by just any time. And you too, Mr. Proud. Oh, well, I thank you, ma'am. Well, thank you for the coffee, ma'am, and uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. 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 Yeah, you, you, you couldn't have done nothing else, Mr. Dillon. Oh, it would have broke her heart if you'd have told her. Yeah, I guess so, but she's going to find out anyway, sooner or later, when he steals her blind and then runs out on her. That's a bad deal, Chester, any way you look at it. Marshal? Well, well I... Kind of sets you a problem, don't it? Well, I may set a few problems for you before I'm done with you, Johnny. And break an old lady's heart? I don't think so, Marshal. And the name is Billy, by the way. Billy Crail. Not in Lubbock. Lubbock? Where's that? Don't worry, Johnny. When I send you back, there'll be somebody along to show you the way. I don't know why you keep on calling me Johnny. Because that's your name, Johnny Red. Bank robber, gunman, cattle thief. You fell out the list. Maybe you could get my mother to fill it out. Miss Crail's an old woman. Now, she doesn't know that her son was killed at the Battle of Shiloh. That report was a mistake, Marshal, but I figured it was best to let it stand. See, I deserted two weeks before Shiloh. Oh, yeah, sure you did. I don't know where you got this crazy idea I'm somebody named Johnny Red. And before you go off half-cocked, I'd say it might be a good idea to check with the sheriff in Lubbock. Meanwhile, I figure it's like your friend there was saying... You wouldn't want to break an old woman's heart, would you? What's the matter? Oh, lost another patient this afternoon. Let somebody die? Oh, oh, no, no. You kind of figure on that happening, but you don't count on them getting well on you. <laughs> and they don't very often. Well, who was it that pulled this mean trick on you? Old Lady Crail. Oh? Mm-hmm. A month ago, I wouldn't have figured her to live through the winter. Well, I even thought she might leave me something in her will, too, but I... Uh... <laughs> well, doggone it, she was jumping around out there this morning as chipper as a young filly. Ah, she's a young mother now. Well, that's no joke, man. That's exactly what it is. That boy of hers has been home three weeks now, and it's made a new woman out of her. Yeah. Only he's not really her boy, Doc. Huh? Well, no, what do you mean by that? He's an ex-convict from Texas. I had a reward circular on him from Lubbock. Oh, now, wait a minute, Matt. He, he might be able to fool other people. But I know, I mother. know. A mother can always tell her own, huh? That's right, yeah. Well, maybe this is the exception that proves the rule. Well, if you really think that, and 
If he's wanted, well, why aren't you going out there and arrest him? I got no charge against him, Doc. A wired Lubbock. Seems he was wanted, but not anymore. They already picked him up and then turned him loose for lack of evidence. Well, if he's not Billy Crail, then what's he up to? What's his reason? Well, you know how much that ranch is worth. And Ms. Crail keeps ever since she's got out there at the place because she doesn't trust banks. What more reason would a man like that need? You better come quick, Mr. Dillon. I was wrong, Chester. Jake just brought the simmer on stage in. He got held up right outside of town. They shot the guard. Stand aside and let Doc get in there. Please. Well, they finally got to me, Marshal. How did it happen, Jake? The boldest thing I ever seen was about three miles out of town. They throwed some cottonwood limbs across the trail so I'd have to pull up, and that's when they jumped me. How many of them? Just two. A couple I've never seen before. Brassy as sin. Didn't even bother to wear masks. And they hauled off and shot Barney there without even giving him a chance. What did they get, Jake? The cash box. I don't know how much was in it. Oh, Matt. Yeah, Doc. Well, there's nothing I can do for him, Matt. Two bullets right under the ribs. I doubt if they even knew what hit him. Well, take charge of it, will you, Doc? Matt, somebody said Barney got shot. Yeah, he's dead, Kitty. Oh. Jake, uh... Would you recognize either of those men? Oh, sure. Like I say, they didn't worry none about being seen. One of them was a tall, skinny fella. The other one was a kind of a kid. The tall one called him Ponka. Ponka? They were strangers, though. They ain't from around here. Well, sounds like a couple of fellas I saw on the Long Branch today, talking to Billy Crail. Oh? Uh, Billy finally left, but they stayed for another hour or so. Talking real serious together. Those two gunmen, Jake, where'd they head for when they left you? Huh? Well, it was a funny thing. I figured they'd make a run south. Instead, they rode east, down river. That trail don't lead nowhere. Yeah. Except to the Crail Ranch. <laughs> Thousands of smokers who are changing to L&M every day. To the millions who now smoke L&M, here is your assurance. L&M gives superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white. All white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M's superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L&M today. Real quiet. Yeah. Too quiet, maybe. No lights, neither. Pull up, Chester. Let's walk from here. Yes, sir. All right, now watch yourself. I am. Jerk the screen open. I'm going to go in fast. I'll keep you covered, Mr. Dillon. All right. 
right, Chester. Come on in. See if you can find a lamp, huh? Well, I think there was one over here on the table the other day. Yeah, here it is. Well, light it and bring it over here. Yes, sir. Come on, come on. Here you are, Mr. Dillon. I will. Oh, my. Hold the lamp down. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, she's dead. She's been beat bad, too. Well, it's not question that he's wanted for now. It's murder. Reach. Both of you. Oh. It's you, Marshal. Who are you expecting, Johnny? Nate Barger and the Ponca City Kid? That's right. They're down there. They're digging by the riverbank. But they'll be back. They won't find what they were. Johnny, who shot you? I don't know which one of them it was. It don't matter, though. I'll last till they get back. But not long enough for a murder charge, Marshal. Don't try for your gun, Marshal. I'm not that much of a fool. Not with yours on my back. I wouldn't want to shoot you. I got nothing personal against you, but... Your way of handling this ain't the way I... Put out that lamp. They're coming back. Oh, they're out there now. Stay where you are and stay quiet. i got to get to a window. All right, Chester, let's ease out the back way. Come on. Yes, sir. They're over here. Stay close to the house. They'll walk toward the porch. We'll have a chance to take them from the side. Then. Yes, sir. Tell you one thing. Yeah. He's still alive. She's showing no lie about this time. Hot brand and iron might help. All right, hold it. You're covered. Right over there at the corner, Bunker. I'll get him. I warned you, Parker. All right, drop the gun, Barger. Go on, drop it. All right, I did. I dropped it. I give up. Don't shoot. You keep your hands high. That's right, Nate. Keep them up high. John? Johnny, no. Say hello to Parker for me. No, Johnny, just... No. Johnny, I had my hand. All right, drop your gun, Johnny. Sure, Marshal. I'm through with it now. He had his hands in the air. He had no call to shoot him. You... You would have took him in alive. He might have got out of it. This way, it works out better. More sure. Oh. Johnny? Yeah, Marshal. Well, I guess you know how you stand. You don't have a chance. It don't matter. I lasted till it was finished. What started it? An argument over the split? No split. I wasn't in with them. They... They followed me here from Texas. That's right, Marshal. I'm Johnny Red. I never doubted it. They thought I was double-crossing them. They laid for me out here at the ranch. Thought they'd kill me. And her. They beat her, Marshal. Trying to find out where she kept her money. But she wouldn't tell. She lied to them. Said it was buried down by the riverbank. Where is it buried, Johnny? No place. I took it into the bank for her last week. You what? I, I figured it wasn't safe for her to keep it here. 
Been a lot easier to get your hands on it, though, when you were ready to leave, huh? So you still think a mother can't tell? Sure, Marshal. I've been called Johnny Red for years now. But my real name is Billy Crail. I, I wasn't lying about that. She was my mother. Huh? She was mom. He'd have just stayed away, hadn't come back home. She'd still be alive. It was her own son, you might say, that caused her death. Now, the doc says she wouldn't have lived through the winter anyway. And Billy made her happy for a month at least. I don't know, Chester. I don't know. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know what I like about L&M's is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Darn good smoke. See for yourself. L&M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Virginia Gregg, Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, and Paul Dubar. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff, to the last puff. Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke, brought to you by L&M Filters.
Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, but it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Chester. Oh, it's a sad thing. Maybe the cavalry does come busting into town, getting drunk, spoiling for trouble sometimes, but I don't like seeing them come in this way, sewed up in sacks, laid out over their horses. Yeah, I know, Chester. It all makes a man feel so sad. And mad, too. Yeah, there'll be plenty like that. Oh, that's certain. Look at them. Lined up all down the street, watching. Like that Will Bailey over there. He's got more reason than some. I know his brother's in one of them sacks. Imagine him standing there, watching, wondering which one. Oh, it's an awful sad thing. Well, let's just hope there'll be no more brought in like this. I wasn't very hungry, Kitty. Ah, oh, and that cook made up some of that beef stew you like. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I guess I could manage a little then. Well, I'll get it. You sit down. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Hello, Bailey. Oh, hello, Marshal. I, uh, I'm sorry about your brother. Yeah. We all are. A lot of good it does. Yeah, I know how you feel. About the cavalry will get the ones that did it. The cavalry. It'll take them weeks to get ready. By the time they go out, those Comanches will be nowhere near Cold Creek. Oh, Marshal, we're going out on our own. You better think that over, baby. We thought it over. And we won't bother about which engines did it, either. That'd do a lot of good, wouldn't it? Starting an Indian war all over again. I ain't gonna argue with you, Marshal. But I'll tell you one thing. There's one man right here in town who's gonna die first. You mean Amos Cartwright? That's right. The one who led those boys into ambush at Cold Creek. Bailey, that's only a wild idea. Amos Cartwright's always been a good, reliable scout. He came back, didn't he? He was the only one who got out alive, wasn't he? He was scouting way out ahead. And it was his job to spot the Comanches. But he didn't. Well, there might have been reasons. Yeah. There were reasons, all right. He's a Comanche himself. Lived with them, married one, rode on war parties with them. And he led that patrol into ambush for him. Killing Cartwright's not going to help your brother. And it could get you into trouble with the law. I'll take my chances on that. All right, Bailey. Maybe in a couple of days you'll cool down and see some reason. <laughs> Here it is. Getting cold. Oh, thanks, Kitty. That Bailey's pretty hot, isn't he? 
can't say I blame him too much. No, I can't either. Too much. Do you think what he says about Amos is true, Matt? I think you ought to have proof before you condemn a man, Kitty. But Amos is a queer sort. So are a lot of others out here. Now, that's no reason to kill him. No, of course not. Well, how is it? What? How is it? Uh, oh, I guess I was hungrier than I thought. Oh, the cook's getting better. <laughs> I guess there's still room for improvement. Bailey. Hey, Miss Cartwright. All right, don't touch your gun, Bailey. You don't stay like that. Amos, you better find someplace else to eat today. I come to see Bailey. All right, you've seen him. Now go on. Mister, I don't allow nobody to say things about me. I said them, and I'll say them again. You're no better than a Comanche yourself. You're a lying, sneaking, murdering savage with your buckskin shirt and your Comanche leggings and your braided hair. And you're the same as kill those men at Cold Creek. All right, that's enough. Shut up! Come on, Amos. Mister, I'll see you later. Where are you taking me, Marshal? Just outside here. Amos, this will all blow over in a couple of days, but until it does, I think maybe you better stay out of sight. Maybe out of the fort. I can take care of him. It's not just him. He's got half the town believing it. You believe it, Marshal? I don't believe anything. I don't see the proof for it. And speaking of proof, if you've got any on your side, it'd help to bring it out. How do you prove something that nobody saw? Nobody alive, that is. Well, maybe if you ask the colonel for a statement. I don't ask no man's help. All right, then. Be pig-headed. I might ask him myself. But you take my advice, Amos. You walk easy for a while. No need for you to bother about me, Marshal. I can handle this myself. I hope so, Amos. I hope so. This is it, L and M filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip. Much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior filtration. Superior taste. Superior filtration because of L&M's superior filter. White. All white. Pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Tasty. Full of flavor. And light and mild, no doubt about it, L&M is America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it, L&M filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Good afternoon, Corporal. Oh, howdy, Marshal. The Colonel here? Yes, sir. Right there on the parade ground. Yeah. Which one's in the hoose car this time? <laughs> Nobody at the moment, Corporal. Well, ain't that a wonder? Pass. Thank you. Well, Marshal. Afternoon, Colonel. Who's in trouble now? That's about Amos Cartwright, Colonel. Oh, that. Yeah. You know what they're saying about Amos. I know. Well, feelings are running pretty high in town, and there could be some trouble. That's your worry, not mine. Well, I just want a statement from you. What kind of statement? Well, that Amos Cartwright didn't lead that patrol into ambush at Cold Creek. I can't give you that statement, Marshal, because I don't know if it's true. I see. You have evidence against Amos? No. This story sounds plausible. 
But I've cut him off the payroll. He won't scout for us again. Yeah, but if it weren't true, would he have come back, told the story, taken off the burial party, all that? I don't trust a man who's lived as an Indian. I don't like having to use him. I see. Frankly, I don't care if they do string him up. I got other things to worry about. We're getting the stores ready for a major expedition. We're going to put down those Comanches for good. Well, thanks anyway, Gunner. Sorry you had to come all the way out here on such a hot day for nothing, Marshal. It can't be helped. I'll see you later, Colonel. Is it, Chester? Oh, my gracious, I'm glad you're back. Oh, what's happened? Just what you was afraid of. Bailey and Amos. What? Bailey's dead. Bailey? Just, we got him right up there at Doc's. That's why I called you. All right, let's go. Sure, he didn't give him a chance, no chance to talk. Took him by surprise, come up behind with a knife and slit his throat. Oh, my gracious. Where was this? Over there by the labor stable. Must have been waiting for him to come for his horse. Got clean away, too, before anybody knew what happened. Oh, hello, Mac. Doc. He figured it was him or Bailey or it was a matter of honor or something. He didn't have to do that, Chester. He probably headed south for Comanche territory maybe two hours ago. I guess there's not much to do about it now except tell the cavalry. They'll pick him up eventually. This isn't a military matter, Doc. It's my job. Matt, you can't go down there now with all this Indian trouble. I don't tell you how to set bones, Doc. We going after him, Mr. Dillon? I am. You don't have to. I'll go get our saddle pack. Matt, use your head. Maybe if I'd used it before, Bailey wouldn't be dead. You think we're gaining on him at all, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, we should be, Chester. I can't find him none too soon for me. Oh, we sure picked the day to come out here. Yeah, it's hot, all right. Yes, sir. There's somebody following Amos, Justin. What? Yeah, pull up. Let's take a look. Here. You see, that's the print of an unshot Indian pony. Well, now, why would an Indian be trailing Amos? I don't know. And why is Amos wandering like he can't make up his mind where to go? Um, for a while, I thought he was heading for the Washita. Now he's veered west. Maybe throw us off, huh? Yeah, he's leaving too plain a trail for that. He doesn't expect anybody to come after him down here. Well, you beat me. Why, this is quite a view from up here, Mr. Dillon. See for a long way. <laughs> you see, Amos? Nope. I don't see no engine, neither. Oh, uh, hey, here's something, Mr. Dillon. What? That Indian pony stopped here and stood. Yeah, probably looking out there, watching Amos. And, and then turned off and went that way. Yeah, but running. See how the prints dig in and stretch up. What do you think that means, Mr. Dillon? Probably means trouble, Chester. We better find Amos quick. Come on. I'll be glad when the sun goes down. Careful, Chester. Come up easy on top of this hill. Yes. I reckon we might be getting close. Maybe. Uh-huh. I 
don't see a thing, Mr. Dillon. He's down there, Chester, making camp. You see that movement in the willows there? Hmm? That'll be his horse. He'll be over by the water. He sure could have fooled me. Come on, we'll stay behind the hill. We'll circle and quarter and crosswind. Yes, sir. No, drop it. Now you just stand there. You can give me no fair draw, Marshal. No more than you gave Bailey. I want to take you back to Dodge alive. All right, Chester, come on. Tie the horses in the willows with Amos's. Yes, sir. Now you just kick that gun over here. Throw the knife in, too. Careful. All right, you can relax now. Figuring to ride tonight? Later. After the horses are rested a couple of hours. Think you can get me back to Dodge, Marshal? I think so. It's Comanche country, you remember. Maybe you're banking too much on that, Amos. Maybe. Ah, this is quite a fix you got yourself into, Amos. Is it? Yeah, I'd say so. On one side, you got all the white men hating you. On the other side, I shouldn't think the Comanches would be too fond of you either. Why not? Like Bailey said, I'm most one myself. Yeah, but there were Comanches killed at Cold Creek, too. Some. They must know that you've been scouting for the blue coats, huh? Well, it don't matter. You don't hold no grudge against scouts. As long as you scout against their enemies, the Cheyenne or the Apaches or one of the others, but you led the cavalry against your own tribe. I wasn't smart. I ain't worried, Marshal. You're the one ought to be. Maybe. You hate me too, don't you, Marshal? Not exactly. Just trying to understand you. It's a hard choice to turn against your own kind. I'd like to know what makes a man do that. Now, if you knew the way it was. I can remember the day it was like this. It was towards dusk. I left the horses, three of my best, Right out front of her father's lodge. Never waited so anxious in all my life. And then he come out and took my horses into his herd. That meant you were accepted, married. And we lived fine. I had a lodge of 14 skins. I brought meat to her family. I took coup. I was respected, loved, and it was good. It's all good. Why'd you leave then? She died, bearing a child. Oh. Amos, at Coal Creek, did you lead the cavalry into ambush? I didn't lead them. But I knew. You knew the ambush was there and you didn't warn them? I huh? couldn't. It had just been the other way around. They were my friends, relatives, people I'd lived with. Whatever I did, it had been wrong. So you ran away and did nothing. But a man's got to make his choice, Amos. And by failing to whack, you made yours. Maybe. Coming back to Dodge was a mistake. If you'd have stayed out, you might have been taken for dead and forgotten. And now you've gone too far. Killing Bailey, the way you did it. Now, there's no choice now. There's only Dodge and a noose. You ain't got me back to Dodge yet, Marshal. Maybe you ain't going to. What? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I see what you mean. Mm-hmm. What does he mean, Mr. Dillon? Take a look, Chester, coming over the brow of that far hill there. Glory be. All right, come on, get on. Out of sight. It's a war party. 
Yeah, a big one. I say, must be 50 or more. Amos. Yeah. Comanche's all right. You lose, Marshal. Maybe we all do. To you, to the thousands of smokers who are changing to L&M every day, to the millions who now smoke L&M, here is your assurance. L&M gives superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white, all white, truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M's superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L&M today. Chester. Them Comanches don't look so terrible warlike to me, just riding easy like they was out for a breath of air. Circling. They know we're here. If they was to decide to rush us, we wouldn't have a chance. Well, that's one thing we could do something about, Chester. What? Kill the horses. What? Pull them up in the circle and shoot them, then slit their bellies. Oh, my goodness gracious, what for? Those Indian ponies will balk when they smell the blood. That'd stop a charge. We could use the bodies for cover. Oh, but, Mr. Dillon, out here without no horses... Well, maybe it won't be necessary. Amos, hmm? do you recognize any of them? Yeah, that one out front on the pie ball. That's Buffalo Tongue. It's my brother-in-law. They've stopped. Yeah. Now, we'd better go get the horses. Oh, wait a minute. You might need your horse. Yeah, sure, but I doubt we'll ever get a chance to use them. Maybe they don't know you're here. You keep out of sight and wait for dark, maybe just an hour or what so. What are you thinking, Amos? I'm thinking about that noose back in Dodge. And I'm thinking you're wrong about them Comanches. That's my wife's brother out there, Marshal. I've rid beside him on many a party. Now, see? He's coming down alone. Well, that's true, Mr. Dillon. He is. Amos, I'm warning you. Even if you're right, it'd be me they're looking for. If they don't even know you're here... No, Amos. Marshal, three men can't stand against 50 commands. All right, It's like you said, a man makes a choice. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Amos, so long. come back. Mr. Dillon. Keep down, Chester. But, Mr. Dillon... Maybe he's right. That's all we can hope for now. But he's our prisoner. He was our prisoner. Now we'll see. His brother-in-law has stopped. He's... Mr. Dillon. Amos, look out. No, no, Mr. Dillon. No, no. Chester, don't stay down. Never. We can't. It's too late. Our guns won't do Amos any good now. We got to think about ourselves now. I know that, but just... wait a minute. Phil, why they're turning away without another look? Mister Dillon, they don't know about us. They know, but they don't care. We chance that, Chester. Now come on. Go. Oh, my goodness. Amos? No. No, don't, Marshal. Not yet. It's got to come out, Amos. Here, I'll cut the shaft. No. After. In a minute or so. It won't matter. Marshal. It didn't even bother. It didn't even bother to... Take cool. Just... 
Mr. Dillon. The air went most clean through it. They're going away. Didn't even seem to notice us. There wasn't a battle, Chester. There was an execution. It was awful having to just stand by. Like he said, a man has to make a choice. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon, what do you mean? They didn't even bother to take coup. The scalp. It's the worst possible insult. When an Indian won't even claim his coup or touch the body. Oh. You reckon he knew what might happen? Yeah, I think so, Chester. Well, maybe it was better than the noose. Yeah. Maybe it was. All right, come on, Chester. We got things to do. This is William Conrad. As you may know, Gunsmoke is going into its second year on radio. Now, during this time, many of you have written the makers of Chesterfield and L&M Filters, asking them to put Gunsmoke on television, too. Well, here's some good news for you. Gunsmoke is going on TV starting Saturday, September 10th, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, over the CBS television network. If you enjoy our radio shows, I know you'll go for Gunsmoke on TV. Now TV will have an authentic adult western, the Gunsmoke you know. Remember, next week, Gunsmoke Radio at this time, and in three weeks, Gunsmoke TV at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Both brought to you by Liggett and Myers. Makers of Chesterfield and L&M Filters. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Barney Phillips, and Joseph Kearns. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way. With Accuray, this amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff to the last puff, Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week, transcribed for L&M Filters. Gunsmoke, brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. A 
Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. Transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? Ain't that Doc Buggy setting out by Joe Crumley's shack there? Huh? Oh, yeah, must be. Masters like them couldn't afford a buggy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, let's stop and see what's going on, huh? All right, sir. <laughs> I bet old Doc will be surprised to see us way out here. <laughs> Yeah, it's not much of a place Cromley's got there, is it? I'm strange. My. They better quit if you ask me. Now, let's time to the buggy, Chester. All right, sir. Who's that out there? Uh, it's Matt Dillon, Miss Cromley. Hello, Marshal. Ma'am. Matt. Hi, Doc. Chester. Hello, Doc. Uh, we, uh, we were on our way to Fort Lauderdale, and we saw Doc's buggy, so we thought we'd stop and say hello. How you do, ma'am? Chester. Uh, your husband sick, Miss Cromley? No. No, Marshal. He died, Matt. Oh, I... I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. Doc done all he could. Just... Just weren't no use. I might as well not have come. I couldn't do a thing for him. Now, Doc, don't say that. You've been up 24 hours trying to save him. It's not time that saves a patient, Mrs. Cromley. It's knowledge... Knowledge I don't have. You know what there is to know, Doc. Nobody knows more. Her husband's dead, Mrs. Crumley. I wanted to save him. You tried. Uh, what are you going to do now, ma'am? Uh, can we help you in any way? Thank you, Marshal. There's nothing. With Joe gone, I can't stay here. I reckon in a day or so I'll... I'll pack up and move on. I... I don't know where I'll go. I, I've got no place. I, excuse me, I've got to get in place. Oh, oh, that poor lady. He didn't have to die. It's not your fault. Well, then Doc. whose fault is it, I'd like to know? Now, Doc, you're not making sense. It's being a doctor that doesn't make sense. Spending my life trying to look into the faces of people like Mrs. Crumley. And having to listen to them thank me for letting their people die. Oh, I'm sick. You need a drink, Doc. I know what I need. Now, why don't you leave me alone? Get your horses off my buggy and go on up to Larned or wherever you're headed for. All right. Yeah, sure, Doc. Come on, Chester. Yeah, Doc. How long are you going to be gone, Matt? 
No. Maybe a week. Uh-huh. When you get back to Dodge, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. If I'm still there. Yep, come on, Joe. Well, how do you do, sir? Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Chester? How do you do? I came by before, Marshal, but uh, your office was locked up. Well, we've been away. We just got back. What can I do for you, Mr. Betchell? Why, nothing, sir. Only wanted to meet you. I met most everybody in Dodge by now. I've been getting acquainted. You know how it is when you move to a new town. <laughs> you gone into business of some kind? Well, not exactly, Marshal. I'm a professional man. Oh, well... What? <laughs> that is, I'm a doctor, Chester. I know. Well, we, we've got a doctor. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure meeting you both, and I'm sure we'll be good friends. I, uh, I would admire to buy you both a drink next time we meet. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Dr. Betchel. It was a funny thing, Chester. What? Doc said he'd buy me a drink when I got back. He did? Yeah. If he's still here, he said... Superior filtration, superior taste, superior filtration because of L&M's superior filter. White, all white, pure white, the purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild, no doubt about it. L&M is America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it. L&M filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Don? Yeah, Chester. You want to stop in Delmonico's for a cup of coffee? <laughs> All right. Hey, look, Mr. Dillon. What? Huh? Over yonder. It's Doc, by the window there. Well, he hasn't left. No, sir. Hey, there's Miss Kitty. Out there in the back there, see? Oh, well, I'll go say hello to her, Chester. You go sit with Doc. I'll, I'll join you in a couple of minutes. All right. Well, hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Sit down. Ah, thank you. Good to see you back. How are you, Kitty? Well, I'm all right, but I'm the only one. Oh, what do you mean? I mean Doc. He's acting like a bear. Oh? I asked him to sit with me when he came in, but he just grumbled something about not being fit company for anybody. And he went over there and sat all by himself. You know, he's been like that for a week. Yeah. 
Uh, he took Joe Crumley's dying pretty hard, Kitty. Well, that's just part of it, Matt. Oh? This new doctor, Bessel. Ever since he came, Doc's been getting grumpier. <laughs> Maybe he's been losing patience for Bessel. Ah, uh, Doc's never had any competition before. Well, he's got it now. Look. What? Bessel. Oh. You don't mind if I yeah. Coffee, now, what's he up to? You know, he better stay away from Doc if he knows what's good for him. Or maybe he's only trying to be friendly. I don't want to talk to you now, about anything. Don't you get all riled up, Adam. There's going to be a fight in a minute, Matt. Yeah, I better go see what this is all about, kid. Let me know if you find out. Yeah, I will. explain my position, and if you had listen to me for a minute instead of hollering all the time... Well, maybe I'll start carrying a gun, Betchel. Hello, Doc. Matt. Hello there, Marshal. Sit down, Bethel. Well, thank you, sir. I was about to. Just what are you buttoning on this for, Matt? Why don't you go arrest some drunks or do what you're supposed to be doing? It's good to see you, Doc. No, it is. Hmm? Hey, Doc. There's Jake Worth out there. He's beckoning to you. Uh, why don't you go see what he wants, Chester? Yes, sir. Who is Jake Worth? I don't think I've met him. Uh, Jake's a rancher, one of the biggest in the country. Yes, you ought to meet him, Betcho. <laughs> yes, he's worth a lot of money. Oh, no, Doc, there's enough here for both of us. He just won't be reasonable, Mark. Reasonable. About what, Betcho? About my practice in here. I don't see why we should be in competition, do you? Well, if there are two doctors in the place, I guess they're bound to be in competition. Oh, two doctors. Now, wait just a moment. Everybody I've talked to admits there's more work here than one man can handle. Well, I guess that's true, isn't it, Doc? No, oh, sure, it is. That's true. Why, of course it is. I've already got some patients. Now, my idea is to split the practice in a friendly way and then really go to work. We still have more than either of us could do. Tell him the rest, Betchel. Oh, yes, tell him the real idea. Well, sir, since we will be giving people better care and all, well, it's only fair we get paid more for it. Now, what do you mean? He wants me to agree to a raise in fees, Matt. Yes, a raise. <laughs> he wants to make a lot of money. Everybody pays more than they can afford or they stay sick, according to him. Well, now, why shouldn't they pay more? Where'd you get the idea that being a doctor is like running a business, Betchel? There's nothing wrong with a doctor making a living, is there? You haven't even proved to me that you are a doctor, Betchel. Are you going to start that again? <laughs> He's one of these bleeding blister men, Matt. <laughs> That's all he knows. Now, Dr. Adams, I am a patient man, but I've got my limits. Now, you watch what you're telling everybody about me, or there's going to be some trouble. Are you threatening me? Well, I'm just not going to stand for any more of your talk. Well, what are you going to do about it, then? I'm hey, going uh, to insist on... Uh, Doc? Yes, what is it, Chester? Hey, Jake Worth has brought his boy to see you. Jake? Which boy? Billy. You know, Doc, the, the puny, sickly one. Jake says he's getting worse. He's took to having fits lately. He's got him in a wagon outside. <laughs> All right, Chester. I think I'll go with you, Doc. You'll be in better company than staying here. You're jealous, Adams. You're jealous, and what's more, you're greedy. That's enough, Betchel. Why, sure, you're on his side, Marshal. But I don't care. I've already got quite a few folks on mine. Any scoundrel can fool people for a little while. <laughs> you coming, Matt? Yeah. Okay. You're uh, being pretty hard on him, Doc. Not hard enough. Ah, over here. Hello, Jake. Hello, Doc. Marshal? How are you, Jake? I just couldn't leave him here alone, Doc. I never know when he's going to have one of them fits again. They come on terrible sudden. I got him in the back of the wagon here. Wait a minute, Jake. What's the matter, Doc? Uh, I, I might as well tell you now. There's no use my even looking at your boy. What? Fits and the way your boy is. I don't know anything to do for him. But you got to do something. Uh, I'm sorry, Jake. Uh, I'm real sorry. Maybe I can do something, Mr. Worth. Who are you? 
My name is Betchel. Jameson Betchel. I'm the new doctor. Oh, sure. I've heard about you. Oh, and I don't listen to him, Jake. He can't help your boy any more than I can. Doc Adams is a little old-fashioned, Mr. Worth. I can tell you there's always something that can be done for any patient. Oh, well, that's a lie. Let him talk, Doc. At least he's willing to try. There's nothing to try. I tell you, medicine doesn't understand cases like your boy yet. You're jealous of Dr. Betchel, ain't you? Oh, my jealous. Well, that's what I've heard folks saying. I didn't believe it at first, but I do now. Jake, I've heard all I need to know about Betchel's doctor around here, and I don't think he should be practicing at all. I told you to stop saying that. Now, wait a minute, Betchel. Let him talk. Well, I don't want to hear no more talk. No wonder so many folks are turning away from you, Doc. They need somebody who will help them, that's why. You think bleeding your boy is going to help him? There's other ways to treat him besides bleeding. Uh, Like what? Well, if you don't happen to know, I don't... Come on, Dr. Betchel. Get to work on the boy. Why, certainly, Mr. Worth. Perhaps it'd be better if you drive him home first. I'll get my horse and follow. Anything you say, Doctor. Yeah, Doc. I, I'm going to take down my shingle. And I mean it this time. Oh, now, Doc, you can't do that. You just come and watch me. Once Doc made up his mind about something, there was no talking him out of it. He took down his shingle, all right, but nobody seemed to care much. Till two days later, when Betchel nearly doubled his fees. And then everybody blamed it on Doc somehow. They got mad at him. But that didn't bother Doc. He started going to bed early and sleeping late for a change. And most of his time was spent in my office playing penny ante poker with Chester. He wouldn't even talk about it. Till the day I heard something I thought might rouse him, I went back to tell him about it. I'd ask you, care, Doc. You just amaze me something clear sometimes. Mr. Dillon, you are getting this game. This is the easiest money I ever made. Oh, yeah. That's a while. Get it back, Chester. The whole 90 cents. Uh, Doc. Yes, Matt? You know old Miss Cullen. Mrs. Cullen? Well, I ought to. I brought her back to life half a dozen times. Well, you won't have to anymore, Doc. What's happened? She died about noon today. She did? Dr. Betchel decided a good bleeding was what she needed. Bleeding? That poor old lady. Her boy told me. No wonder she died. She couldn't stand that. Why didn't she send for me? Oh, maybe she'd heard that she'd quit. I'd have gone if she'd wanted me. The only reason I quit is so people will find out in a hurry what kind of a doctor this Betchel is. It'd take him twice as long if I was still on the job. And the sooner they find out, the less harm he'll be able to do. What about Miss Cullen? Oh, she she was 90 years old, Matt. Betchel killed her all right, but she couldn't have lived much longer anyway. Well, maybe her death will save lives in the long run. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you're right, Doc. I hadn't thought about it that way. I'm going to go to the Alphaganza and have me a drink. Anybody want to join me? Thousands of smokers who are changing to L&M every day. To the millions who now smoke L&M, here is your assurance. 
L&M gives superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white. All white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M's superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L&M today. Buying, Doc? Oh, yes, I'm buying, Chester. You know, a man who isn't working shouldn't be spending money, Doc. Can't think of a better time to spend it. Marshal. How are you, Sam? Uh, What'll it be, gentlemen? Shot of rye and a glass of beer all around, Sam. Sure, Doc. (laughs) Oh, Sam. uh, By the way, how's your back feel? Oh, why? I haven't noticed it so much lately. Well, I told you it might go away by itself. <laughs> well, you said there was nothing you could do for it, so I went to see Dr. Betchel. Oh, he did. I suppose he fixed it. Hmm? He told me to mix some cold water and vinegar and salt and rub it with that. Vinegar? So, uh, oh. I've also been taking unicorn root and cayenne pepper. Well, you're a strong man if that hasn't ruined you. Well, <laughs> made me so sick I can't feel my back no more. Hmm. Uh, Doc, I, I shouldn't have gone to him. That ain't no way to treat anything. I'll get you your drinks now. Mm. Well, Doc, there's one man who's found out. One isn't enough, man. Doc. Hello, Jake. You gotta come out to the ranch, Doc. You gotta come out now. Why? What's wrong? It's the boy, Billy. Oh. <laughs> Well, I can't go, Jake. Of course you can. It's not my case. I told Dr. Betchel not to come back no more. I told him on my way in here. I guess you didn't make it too clear, Jake. What? I might have known that this was what you had in mind. What are you doing here? You're after Dr. Adams to take care of Billy. I sure am. Well, he's not going to do it. Don't you tell me what I'm going to do. Betchel, after what you've done to that boy, it's a wonder he's still alive. I should have stopped you right off. What did he do, Jake? I'll tell you what he did, Marshal. When it got real cold at night, he took the boy's clothes off and made him go outside and lay on some sacks. And then he threw buckets of ice-cold spring water and kept it up until Billy was hollering and screaming. So it finally made him quit. And that boy's real sick now. But Betchel ain't gonna get nowhere near him again. If you'd have let me finish the treatment, he'd been all right. Finish the treatment? If he'd have let you finish the treatment... The boy that died of pneumonia. Adams, you talk anymore. I'm just going to tear you open. No, you're not, Betchel. Oh, let him fight his own fights, Marshal. No, I won't let him. Doc's too valuable a man to get busted up in a brawl. Why, golly, the Marshal's right. I'll stand up for him, too. You're just a fool, Jake. Get out of the way. You're coming with me, Doc? On one condition. What? That Betchel leaves town. Why, you can't... All right, hold it, Betchel. I don't know how you got started in this business. Probably in a medicine show. It's happened before. But you're a fraud. You're the most obvious fraud I ever saw. I won't. And I won't stand for your posing as a doctor anymore. Not around here, I won't. You've done all the harm you're going to do. I'm with you there, Doc. I said I'd tear you up an Adams and I'll... Don't try it, but... I might have known a doctor would be carrying a knife. He ain't no more doctor than I am. Chester. Yes, sir? When he comes to, lock him up. 
We'll throw him on the first stage, leaving Dodge. I'll do it with pleasure, Mr. Dillon. Will you come now, Doc? You understand, Jake? I can't cure your boy's fits. I should have listened to you in the first place, Doc. There are a lot of people who should have, Jake. That's true, Marshal. Will you come, Doc? You can keep those drinks, Sam. I don't have time to waste in here anymore. <laughs> This is William Conrad. As you may know, Gunsmoke is going into its second year on radio. Now, during this time, many of you have written the makers of Chesterfield and l m Filters, asking them to put Gunsmoke on television, too. Well, here's some good news for you. Gunsmoke is going on TV starting Saturday, September 10th, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, over the CBS television network. If you enjoy our radio shows, I know you'll go for Gunsmoke on TV. Now TV will have an authentic adult western, the Gunsmoke you know. Remember, next week, Gunsmoke Radio at this time, and in two weeks, Gunsmoke TV at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Both brought to you by Liggett and Myers. Makers of Chesterfield and L and M filters. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillard, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, James Nusser, Frank Cady, and Ann Morrison. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember. Only Chesterfield is made the modern way, with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff to the last puff, Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M Builders. to you by L and M filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke.
Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Go ahead, Chester. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Well, say, who's that new girl Miss Kitty's over there with? I don't know, Chester. Let's go meet her. Uh, well, I'll come over there in a few minutes, Mr. Dillon. Oh. I got to give Sam some money back I borrowed off of her. Okay. Ain't much. Hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Marshal Dillon, Bella Grant. Oh, how do you do, Bella? I'm pleased to know you, Marshal. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I will. Matt, Bella's been here almost a week. Oh? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Kitty, you see, I, I've been awful busy lately. You and, uh... sure have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, how do you like Dodge, Bella? Well, aside from the heat and dust, I like it fine, Marshal. <laughs> Heat and dust is about all there is to dodge, though. Uh, not quite all, Kitty. What? Oh, Jerry Cass again. I'll see you later, Bella. You don't mind. <laughs> Would it matter? Kitty's always joking me, Marshal. Yeah, she bears watching that way. Goodbye, Bella. Bye. Tell me something, Kitty. Huh? Isn't it a rare thing to see Jerry Cass in town here? Oh, he's been coming in lately. Oh, since his pa died, huh? Well, that was three months ago. It's the last week he's changed his ways. Ah, Bella? <laughs> he's real sweet on her, Matt. Well, she seems to feel the same way about it. Well, he's a nice boy, but she's running it, if you ask me. He never had a chance once she started after him. Well, I guess Jerry's never known much about women, Kitty, being raised by his pa, huh? No? Well, he's going to learn now. Shut up. I told you for the last time. Who's that? I don't know. I never saw him before. Now get away from her and stay away from her. Starting trouble with Jerry, man. Yeah. Wait, knock him down. You stay here, Kitty. She didn't have to hit him. You'll be the next one I hit. No, she won't, mister. You looking for trouble, too? Seems to me I found it without looking. You sure have. <laughs> Hey, Chester. Right here, Mr. Dillon. Get a couple of men to help you carry him, huh? We'll let him come to in jail. All right, sir. Hey, Bruni, you and Cyril, give me a hand. Fella, I, uh, I guess you can take care of Jerry. There's going to be trouble over this, Marshal. Oh, is there? Jerry will tell you. All right, I'll hear it from him when he feels like talking. out from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. No other cigarette gives you L&M's assurance. Assurance that it is best. L&M's got everything. Superior filter, superior taste, superior filtration because of L&M's superior filter. White. All white. Pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of l and M superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. Buy l and M today, America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it, 
L&M filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Claims he don't like being in jail, Mr. Dillon. Well, I can't blame him for that, Chester. He says he didn't know you was the marshal. Uh, what would he have done if he had known? Try to shoot me? I didn't ask him that. In fact, I didn't feel much like talking to him anymore. Uh huh. In fact, I was getting pretty sick and tired of his sassy remarks. I... Oh, hello, Jerry. Oh, Chester. Marshal. Well, I guess he didn't hurt you very much, Jerry. I never thought he was going to hit me. Kind of took me by surprise. Yeah, it sure did. Marshal, um, I was wondering if you'd let him out of jail now. Oh? Uh-huh. So she can go finish the fight somewhere? No. I don't want to fight him. I want to be friends with him. It's hard, but I want to try everything I can. Why, Jerry? Who is he? Why, it's Briscoe. Briscoe? Briscoe Cass, Marshal. What? My brother. Don't you know him? Your brother? I never knew you had a brother. Yeah, he come back last week. I thought you must have run into him around town somewhere. Well, I haven't till tonight. What do you mean he came back last week? Well, you see, Briscoe left home now to, oh, 15 years ago, Marshal. He's been living in St. Louis. But when he heard Pa died, I guess he figured his kid brother needed looking after. But I don't. I can take care of myself. Ah, Chester. Yes, sir. Go turn Briscoe loose, will you? All right, sir. I'm going on 25 now, Marshal. And I've always worked hard on that ranch. I wouldn't do nothing wrong there or anyplace else. Now, does Briscoe think you're doing something wrong? Oh, I shouldn't be complaining to you. It ain't your trouble. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. Go on ahead, Briscoe. Hello, Briscoe. Why didn't you say you was a marshal? Well, I guess I figured we'd talk long enough, Briscoe. That's no answer. Maybe I don't aim to give you an answer. I don't think you and me are going to get along too well. Men that act like you always find it hard to get along. I don't want no trouble with you. You don't have to have it. No. I guess you're right. The kid here's got me all riled up. Him and that dance hall girl. There's nothing wrong with Bella. You mean she's pretty? Sure, she's pretty. I told you a hundred times, she's pretty. She's smart. She's a fine girl, the wonder of the world. But she works in a saloon. Well, what's wrong with that? No brother of mine's going to hang around a saloon girl. Maybe she won't be a saloon girl for long. Jerry, I'll see you dead before I see you marry that girl. You can push me only so far, Briscoe. Because I've tried to be friendly with you don't mean I'm afraid of you. I'll kill you first. Son up, Briscoe. Now, I've heard all of this talk I want. You two get out of here and settle this at home, but you settle it without gunplay or one of you'll end up on a rope. Now, is that clear? It ain't me that's looking for a fight, Marshal. Then you're old enough to figure out some other way of handling it, Jerry. This is a family affair and I'm not mixing in it. Unless I'm forced to. And then I'll mix real fast. Is that clear, Briscoe? I'll straighten them out, Marshal. There won't be any trouble. Well, come on, Jerry. Okay. Bye, Marshal. Chester. Jerry. Bye, bye Jerry. I declare I can't figure that Briscoe, Mr. Dillon. Jerry hasn't got him figured either, Chester. What do you mean? I'm not sure myself, but he's playing a game of some kind. And from what I've seen of him, you can depend on its being no good. <laughs> Hello. 
Ah, Doc. Uh, oh, <laughs> come in out of the sun, Matt. Yeah. This is no day to be out riding horseback, Matt. I can't pick and choose when I have to work, Doc. <laughs> work, you say. What work you been doing? <laughs> well, I've ridden 30 miles since dawn. That's uh, get shot at? No. Uh, shoot anybody? <laughs> no. Well, then you've done no more work than if you'd spent the time sitting here watching Front Street. Uh-huh. <laughs> You've been here all morning, I suppose. Well, I'm just settling my dinner. Oh, I eat awful heavy this noon. No, not me. I don't have that problem. <laughs> hello, Marshal. Hello, Miss Cullen. How are you? Doc. Oh, oh hello, Miss... Uh, what's her name? So, say, where have you been, Matt? Uh, checking on a trail herd coming up from Pampa. It's two weeks late, and the owner got to worrying some about it. Oh, so you find them? Oh, they'll be here in three or four days. Well, it's a good thing you didn't wait to ride in with them. Oh, why? <laughs> You'd have missed the fun tomorrow. What fun? Jerry Cass is getting married. He is? Yes, he is. He announced it last night. And Bella's willing. What about Briscoe? Is he willing? Well, that's where the fun comes in. Briscoe says he'll stop it with lead if he has to. <laughs> well, I guess it's time I got mixed up in it. Huh? What? What, what are you going to do? I'm going to talk to Jerry first. Have you seen him, Doc? Well, isn't he generally over at the Long Branch uh, eyeing Bella? Yeah, I guess he is. Now, don't you go to sleep sitting there, Doc. And why shouldn't I? Because we might be needing you before the day's out. Wide awake. Like you've been herding buffalo. Oh, you know where I can get a job doing it? Everybody's always looking for a different job than the one he's got. Yeah, maybe you're right, Kitty. Oh, of course I am. But you didn't come in here to talk about that. No. I guess I didn't. Uh, Kitty, I'm looking for Jerry Cass. Oh. Well, he was here. He said he'd be back in a little while. Uh-huh. I, uh... Don't see Bella around anywhere. She's over at the rooming house. She won't be in for another hour. Are you expecting trouble, Matt? Well, I hear most everybody is. You know what I think? No, what? I think if Briscoe had left Jerry alone, he'd never have asked Bella to marry him. But the way things are stacked up now, he's going to go through with it whether he really wants to or not. Well, that may be, Kitty. Well, here he is. Oh, Marshal. Ah, how are you, Jerry? Right now, I'm kind of mixed up. Well, what's the trouble, Jerry? I've been over talking to Bella, Kitty. You know what she's saying now? No, what? She says she ain't going to marry me unless I quit the ranch and move back east somewhere. Oh, no. She wants to live where it's more civilized, she says. Uh, Jerry, she decided this kind of on the sudden, didn't she? She sure did. Well, how come she waited till now? I don't know, Marshal. But I like that ranch. I don't want to leave it. What would I do back east, anyway? Well, what did you tell her? What could I tell her? She's got her mind made up. It's tomorrow we're getting married, Marshal. I, I'll lose her now. I, I don't know what I'll do. Uh, where's Briscoe, Jerry? I don't know, and I don't care. As long as he stays away from me. Marshal, I just don't understand it. Why should Bella suddenly start talking like this? Look, Jerry, I want you to wait here. What? I got an idea. Maybe I can find out what this is all about. Oh, maybe nobody needs any money today, Chester. That ain't altogether true. <laughs> Look, uh, you wait out, will you? Mr. Bodkin might handle easier if I go on alone. All right, sir. Come in. 
Well, Marshal Dillon, come in, come in. How are you, Mr. Barkin? Fine, thank you, Marshal, just fine. Have a chair. All right, thanks. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Barkin, it's about uh, old man Cass. Mm. Jerry's pa, you know. Well? Well, I remember he was kind of peculiar in some ways, but uh, not when it came to business. I'd be mighty surprised if uh, he died without leaving a will. And uh, if he did leave a will? Well, he'd have left it with you, probably. Most people do. Mm. What's your interest in Cass's will, Marshal? Well, one is a friend of Jerry's. Two is a lawman. Well, all right. I've got it right here in my desk. I haven't gotten around to putting it back in the safe yet. There you are. Ah, thanks. You, uh, been studying it over lately, is that it? Oh, goodness, no. It's only a few sentences long. Yeah, so it is. Uh... Why'd you have it out of the safe, Mr. Barkin? Well, yeah, Briscoe wanted to show it to Jerry. Why, right. Jerry hadn't seen it before? That boy never comes to town, Marshal. Oh, he's been coming lately. He has? Oh, yeah. When did Briscoe first see this, Mr. Barkin? Right after his father died. He, he wrote me for a copy. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to borrow this for a little while, if you don't mind. Well... Take good care of it, Marshal. The best care it ever had, I promise you that. Thanks, and goodbye, Miss Parkin. Goodbye, Marshal. Come on, Chester. Well, you find out what you wanted, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I sure did. Well, good. Look, uh, I'm going to see Bella. I want you to pick up Jerry Cass over at the Long Branch and bring him over to her room. You understand? All right, sir. I'll get him, Mr. Dillon. other cigarette gives you L&M's assurance. Assurance that it is best. L&M gives you superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white. All white. Truly the miracle tip because when it's added to l and superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. No other cigarette gives you l and assurance, assurance that it is best. l and has got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter-tip cigarette. Try l and today. Uh, can you tell me what room Bella Grant's in? Uh, 23, Marshal, right at the top of the stairs. 23. 23. Okay, thank you. Marshal Dillon. Now, uh, leave the door open, Bella. What do you want here, Marshal? Well, I want to know why you changed your mind about marrying Jerry. Well, it's none of your business, but I didn't. I only said I thought it over and I couldn't live on a ranch. Uh-huh. Well, that's what you told Jerry. 
And that's what I'm telling you. I'm not made of leather. I'm a, I'm a woman. A city woman. And I hate the country. Then why did you say you'd marry him in the first place? A woman can change her mind, can't she? You didn't change your mind, Bella. What are you saying, Marshal? Why don't you tell me the truth? Oh, leave me alone. I got enough trouble. Uh, I got it, Mr. Dillon. Oh. oh, come on in, Jerry. Sure. Briscoe's coming, too. Oh, Briscoe? Well, he's seen us and followed us. I couldn't stop him. It's okay, Chester. I'll get rid of him fast enough. There he is. Quite a party. What's this all about? Why don't you come in and find out, Briscoe? What are you up to, Marshal? You're a preacher on the side. You're going to marry him yourself? Quit bluffing, Briscoe. What? It didn't work. You're all through. What are you talking about? There'd be a shooting if I told you. Now, Chester, hmm? you spend a lot of time at the depot. How soon can Briscoe get out of town? Well, the uh, Santa Fe pulls out at half past two, Mr. Dillon. Half past two, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, you just got time to make it, Briscoe. Are you crazy? Oh, Jerry. What? Here. What's this? I don't want you to open it yet. It's your pa's will. Pa's will? i never seen this. Before. Where'd you get that money? I borrowed it from Mr. Bodkin. Well, Briscoe. He's lying, Jerry. It ain't Pa's will at all. It's his writing. Briscoe's leaving, Mr. Dillon. Let him go, Chester. Left the ranch to both of us. But we both got to work it and live on it. Excuse me, Chester. I want my handbag. Oh, oh, why, sure, Bill. And if either of us leaves for longer than four months, he loses his share to the other. Uh, Bella! Where are you going? You stay here, Jerry. I'll be back. Bella! Never mind her, Jerry. You stay in here. Why? What for? You read the will. If either of you leaves that ranch for more than four months, he loses his share in it. That's what Briscoe was trying to get you to do, go back east with Bella. What are you saying? He didn't even want me to marry her. He only acted like that because he knew it had brought you into doing it. And also it'd make him look innocent later. After he got you a share. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. No, you stay in here till he's on that train. Let me get out of here, Marshal. I'm going after him. No. That's Bella. Come on. It's Bella. He shot her. And he got shot, too. Look at him. Bella. Bella. Uh, Briscoe's dead, Mr. Uh, Dillon. She got him plum center. Bella. You hurt bad. He he was no good. No good at all. Why'd you do it, Bella? I'm sorry, Jerry. You're a nice kid. I'm sorry I had to hurt you. He got me into it. Brought me here. I wanted to get out after I met you. He, he said he'd kill me if I tried. Oh, Bella. He killed me anyway. Oh. Marshal? Yeah, Jerry. You had it all figured, didn't you? The whole thing. No, not all of it, Jerry. Not her loving you. Loving me? Not hardly. She was with Briscoe. She said she tried to get out, didn't she? Yeah. She kept you from killing him, didn't she? From maybe hanging for it? You were keeping me from that, Marshal. Yeah, I know I was, Jerry, but... Bella didn't know it. Maybe she did love me. Well, it cost her her life.
This is William Conrad. As you may know, Gunsmoke is going into its second year on radio. Now, during this time, many of you have written the makers of Chesterfield and l and Filters, asking them to put Gunsmoke on television, too. Well, here's some good news for you. Gunsmoke is going on TV starting Saturday, September 10th, 10 p.m. Eastern Time over the CBS television network. If you enjoy our radio shows, I know you'll go for Gunsmoke on TV. Now TV will have an authentic adult western, the Gunsmoke you know. Remember, next week, Gunsmoke Radio at this time and Gunsmoke TV at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Both brought to you by Liggett and Myers, makers of Chesterfield and L&M Filters. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Virginia Christine, Vic Perrin, and Joe Duvall. Farley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chester Field. Smoother, cooler, milder, Chester Field. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chester feels best for you. They satisfy you. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Best for you. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week, transcribed for L&M Filters. This is William Conrad. Well, tonight's the night for Gunsmoke on television. And one of Hollywood's biggest stars, John Wayne, will be on hand for the premiere. Be sure and watch Gunsmoke tonight over the CBS television network at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Gunsmoke, brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Oh, 
How was that for, Chester? Oh, I don't know. I just wanted to make a noise, I guess. It's so blame quiet out here on the prairie. Now, you've been mighty quiet yourself. I guess I run plumb out of conversation back a couple hours ago. It, it ain't I'm unsociable, Mr. Yeah, Dean. I know, Chester. It's been a long ride. Yeah, but we'll be in Dodge by dark. Uh, yes, sir. Just in time to go to bed. <laughs> you didn't have anything better to do, did you? I guess not. Game of checkers with Doc, maybe. Oh, that man plays the dog gone this craziest game of checkers. Hey, uh, Chester. Mm. Over there. What? Well, that smoke, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Must be a grass fire, huh? Well, was smoke got black? Well, what is it then? Isn't there a ranch over in that direction? Well, now, yes, sir, there is. Not far, neither. The fellow's name Claiborne, as I remember. Come here from Indiana about four years ago. Him and his wife did. Awful nice fella. Come on, Chester. Planted corn the first year, but it didn't turn out very well. Come on, Chester. But we they... better take a look. Could have happened. Yeah, there's one thing for sure. It wasn't an accident. Hmm? Look at the tracks. Horses. They're all milling around. I'm sure a lot of them. What I don't understand is where is Mr. Claiborne? Here's his house not hardly burnt to the ground yet. Take a look over there, Chester. Mr. Dillon. Come on. No. Yeah, he should have stayed in Indiana. And his wife, too. And I didn't even know they had a little one, Mr. Dillon. Looks like they was trying for cover in that little creek bed there. Well, they can only do one thing for him now. Maybe there's a shovel left back there. Mr. Dillon, who could have did a thing like that? That's plain enough, isn't it? Yes, but I didn't hear no Indian trouble right now. I didn't either. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. If them Indians were just here not very long ago, they couldn't have gone far. That's right, Chester, they couldn't. All right, come on, let's get to that shovel. Mr. Claiborne. Look out there, Mr. Dillon. What? Planted corn again, and it's doing real well, too. Yeah. Now, wait a minute, Chester. Listen. Horses. A lot of them. Yeah. You think it could be them Indians coming back? That could be. Get the rifles, and we'll try a run for the creek bed. Oh, too late, Mr. Dillon. They're coming over the rise. Mr. Dillon, it ain't Indians, it's the blue coats. Yeah. A patrol, a whole company of them. Oh, my, ain't they a welcome sight? Yeah, come on, let's go meet them. out from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. No other cigarette gives you L&M's assurance. Assurance that it is best. L&M's got everything. Superior filter, superior taste, superior filtration because of L&M's superior filter. White. All white. Pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of l and superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. <laughs> 
Buy L and M today. America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it. L and M filters. L and M's got everything. It's the best. What are you doing out here, Marshal? Uh, we were riding in from Pawnee, and we saw the smoke, Lieutenant. We were a little too late. Uh, so I see. Where are Over they? Over there. All three of them. Mm. They're pretty close on their trail now. Maybe we can get them before they find another ranch. Well, from the prints, I figured them for Kiowa. But I didn't know there was any trouble. Well, there isn't. For the tribe, these are just renegades. Not more than eight or ten of them. Uh, Got all fired up and jumped the agency. Fired up with cheap whiskey. Well, maybe... But we can't be more than about half an hour behind them now. With luck, we'll get them before nightfall. I sure hope so. Marshal, we'll take over here for you. The horses need a few minutes rest. Then we'll go on. All right, Lieutenant. We'll head on into Dodge. And keep your eyes open, Marshal, on the way. Yeah. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Dillon, it's a cussed crying shame. Them Indians can be as peaceful as anything, and then some ornery white man comes along and sells them some of that red eye, and they just go hog crazy. Chester and Indians no different from anybody else with too much to drink. Now the problem's deeper than that. What do you mean? Well, the Indians have lost a lot. They're a conquered people. That doesn't sit well with any man, Chester. There are times when it makes him mad. Mm. Yes, sir, that's so. I guess maybe you can't blame him entirely. Uh, not entirely. Mm, sir. Well, see, now, that's a pretty little valley. Hey, look, there's somebody down there. Yeah, it looks like settlers. They do indeed with that Conestoga wagon. <laughs> they build them a sod hut, too. Well, looks like we got neighbors we didn't know we had, Mr. Dillon. Or maybe we're losing them before we get to know them. Hmm? They seem to be packing the wagon. Maybe they heard about the Indians. Yeah, that's likely. Now, come on, we'll ride down and say hello. Afternoon. Howdy. I'm Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. Ah, uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. I'm Sam Fraser. This is my ma. Hi. Sam. This is my wife, Alice. Hello. How do you do? This is Tad, my kid brother. Pleased to meet you. Hello. We're headed for Dodge ourselves. Ah, uh, looks like you got settled here. Well, we ain't staying, Marshal. We're going on west. Chasing rainbows, Marshal. Farm folks like us. Now, ma. Don't you now, ma, me, Sam Fraser. If your pa was still alive, well, he, he wouldn't ain't. believe... And it's up to me to do the deciding now. If you'll excuse me, Marshal, I'll get back to loading up. Uh, Justin, I can give you a hand. No, thanks. Tad and me will manage. Uh, that's a real nice odd hut, Miss Frazier. It's kind of too bad to go off and leave it. My husband built it. Not him. Now, Ma, Sam, help. Huh. Marshal, what do you think of a son that goes against his father's wishes and him not hardly cold in his grave? Ma, please. Three days now, Marshal. He's buried right over there under that cottonwood. I'm sorry, ma'am. We hadn't been here more than a week. Come all the way from Ohio, looking for a spot of good ground to till, looking for a home, Marshal. And he found it here. It sure is a pretty little place. Hmm? Samuel called it Pleasant Valley. Said he'd be grateful to settle here and spend his days. Only the Lord didn't leave him any days. Denied him like Moses come to the promised land. It would make a nice homestead for you folks. It would. But some folks has ideas. Oh, my layoff. Mr. Fraser. What? Look, uh, 
I know that's none of my business, but uh, is there some reason why you want to give up this land and go on? Reason enough. It's because of me, Marshal. Now, Alice, you ain't to blame. Yes, I am. It's because Sam is worried about me, Marshal. No Indians would scare him off if it was just these folks, but it's me he's scared for. Me and... And the one coming. And what better reason? You think I want my wife and my child living in danger of murdering savages? Oh, Mr. Fraser, this is just a bunch of renegades. The cavalry will get them soon and the danger will be over. And who's to say what they'll do before the cavalry gets them? Oh, Marshal, my family's going to grow up in a safe place. My ma born me in the middle of the Ohio woods. Thick with Indians as fleas on a hound. We was made us Turner stuff in them days. Maybe. But my wife ain't going to live like that. Now, come on, Tad. Hand that up. We're losing time. Um, you going on west? Aye, to California, he says. Might even look for gold instead of farming, he says. Oh, my. I, I reckon most of that gold out there is already clean. Twenty years or more. Uh, of course, you might have luck. We can always that. find a piece of land. Yeah, maybe you can, but nothing better than this. You're nothing half as good. This dirt's richer than molasses in the cook pot. If it was me, I... Well, it ain't. Now, hoist. If I was just a few years... I said hoist. You see how it is, Marshal. Yes, sir. Ah, Maybe he's right. Uh, California might work out fine. Only it's a long way. And with Miss Fraser expecting, it's going to be... Kind of a hard trip. I know all that, Marshal. We'll stay in Dodge till the baby's born. It won't be long now, and then we'll go on. I just want to say one thing, Mr. Fraser, as a lawman in this territory. We have some troubles now and then, sure, but it's not as bad as you think. And in a few years, it'll be as safe here as it is in well, Ohio right now, or California. And this is going to be a prosperous country. My mind's made up, Marshal. Well, all right. We better help you get loaded then. See you safe under Dodge. The worst place to be right now is out on the open prairie. All right. That's it. Now, one more shot. Good. That should ride easy. Well, that's the last. Oh. All right, then, we're all ready. Might as well get started. It's getting late. You got them all hitched, Tad? They're ready. Where's Ma? She's over by the cottonwood. Oh. Crying, I suppose, to shame me. Sam. Well, tears don't do no good. She ain't crying. She's just standing, staring. I tried to get her to come away, but she wouldn't. Marshal, maybe if you was to talk to her. You know, a stranger. All right. Well, sure, ma'am. Uh, Miss Fraser... He's there, Marshal. Right there. We fixed up a cross. Yes, sir. Maybe if you was to pass by this way again, you just take a look. See the marker still standing? Well, I sure will, ma'am. Twenty-five years, Marshal. And all I ever asked was to lie there beside him. It's a lonely place. Mm-hmm. But it's no lonelier than any other, Miss Fraser. Why, in the springtime, this whole meadow is covered with a blanket of sunflowers. Pretty as you ever saw. Thank you, Marshal. I can go now. Ma... Ma, I'm sorry. No need, boy. We all do what we have to do. You're no different. Just help me up. Oh, here, Ma. 
All right. Now let's get this girl into town. Her time's almost come. Okay, Ma. Hey! All right, come on, Chester. Yes, sir. I want you to ride the point. Keep a good watch ahead and to the north, huh? All right, sir. I'll cut up to the top of that hill and take a look, and then I'll ride south flank, cover that side and behind. Well, Mr. Dillon, it sure does seem a shame. Wait a minute, it... Chester. Oh, my gracious, coming over the hill. Yeah. Them ain't blue coats. No, they're not, Chester. <laughs> Other cigarette gives you L and M's assurance, assurance that it is best. L and M gives you superior filtration because of its superior filter, superior taste because of L and M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L and M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L and M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white, all white. Truly, the miracle tip. Because when it's added to L and M's superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. No other cigarette gives you L and M's assurance, assurance that it is best. L and M's got everything: superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L and M today. got choked up some with us going so fast. Well, we'll carry her. Come on. Be all right, Marshal. Sure you will, ma'am. Hang on now. There we go. Over here. Right here, Marshal. Put her down gently. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Oh, Alice. Oh, Sam, don't you worry. I'll be all right. You go on. Do what needs to be done. I'll be all right. But Alan... Go on, boy. Come on, Sam. You got a rifle, Sam? Yeah, yeah, sharps in the wagon. Well, that'll give us three. I ain't got one, Marshal, but I can load for you. All right, son. There'll be plenty to do. They're still up there, Mr. Dillon. Having a powwow, looks like. You figure they'll rush us, Marshal? No. They know we got rifles. There are only eight or nine of them, and the ground's too open. They'll either go on and leave us alone, or they'll wait till the sun goes down and come in in the dusk. There's nothing to do but wait. Well, we can use the time to unload part of the wagon. Uh, just the things they'll need in there, though. And we'll drive it off and cut the horses loose. We don't want them milling around in case of a fight. Sam! What, Ma? Get water from the creek! Make a fire, quick! Ma! Don't stand there! You heard me! Get moving! Yes, sir. Relax, Fraser. She's gonna be all right. Sure, sure. Out here in nowhere with them up there. 
This is just what I was afraid of. Well, plenty have been born this way. Now, you might have been yourself, you know. I know, but... Tad, where are you going? I'm down to the creek. Mom wants more water. Uh, you better go with him, Chester. Yes, sir. Oh, I should have gone two days ago. I wanted her to have the best. Nothing but the best. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. That's... That's why I talked about hunting gold in California. You know something, Sam? A man can waste a lifetime looking for gold when it's right in front of his eyes. Where? Now you're looking at it. There's wealth here for a man, too. Oh, I know it, Martha. Tad! Yeah, come on. Tad! Yeah, all right, Mr. Dillon. Yes, sir, Nick. One of them snuck up close as I chased him off. Oh, Tad. I'm all right, Sam. J- just crease my arm. Well, it's bleeding. We'll fix it when we get him back to the hut. Tight enough, son. Oh, sure, sure, Marshal. It's okay. How's Alice? I don't know. Ma chased me away. I'm worried, Marshal. And I'm more worried about those Indians. It's going to be dark soon. Mr. Dillon, that patrol ought to be around here somewhere. Yeah, I know. I was hoping they'd show up. Well, they can't be far. They was on the trail. Maybe if I was to ride out. Now, there's a better way, Chester. Signal them. How? Have a sign they've been looking for and hoping not to see. Smoke. You mean set the grass afire? No, that'd smoke us out, too. No, the wagon. Oh, but Marshal... Yeah, I know, Fraser. It's like burning your bridges behind you, but it's the only thing we've got. All right. All right, we'll burn it. It's almost out, but it sure sent up a lot of smoke while it lasted. You reckon the cavalry saw it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, it's hard to say, Chester. Well, if they did, I hope they're hurrying. The sun's most gone, all but the tops of the hills. This valley's getting mighty shadowy. Yeah, we better sit in a circle. Each one watch his side. Marshal! Out there, was that... What? No, it's just one of the horses, son, but you keep looking. Marshal! Marshal, Listen! Look, up there, it's the blue coats. They're here. Oh, ain't that a welcome sight? They're charging the Indians. Run them off. Marshal, we're going to be all right. Yeah, Fraser. They'll get them now. Maybe if we... Sam, get in here. Alice. Well, what are you staring at? Body'd think you'd never seen a strapping, healthy baby boy before. Alice? I'm all right, darling. They're both all right. I told you you didn't need to worry about us. All right, now, you men folk, get on out of here. Go on, skedaddle. Uh, yes, ma'am. You too, Sam Fraser. Well, I'll be quick. Well, Sam, uh, Chester and I'll be getting on in the Dodge. We, we sent a wagon out for you. What? I reckon we won't be needing the wagon, Marshal. Sam, you mean we're staying? Well, we buried one here. And we born one here. And we shed Fraser blood in this dirt. And it is good dirt, Marshal. And it is a pleasant place. Yes, it is. You'll be welcome here any time. Both of you. Thank you, Mr. Fraser. (laughs) Welcome to Kansas. And now our star... William Conrad. Thank you, George. 
You know what I like about L&M's is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Darn good smoke. See for yourself. L&M stands out from all the rest. Remember, as I told you earlier, Gunsmoke goes on TV tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time over the CBS television network. So be sure and see Gunsmoke's TV premiere tonight. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Helen Cleave, Eleanor Tannen, Sam Edwards, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester. is best for you. They satisfy. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Best for you. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week, transcribed for L&M Filters. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Bad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. I've been on longer rides, Mr. Dillon, but I can't remember any no dryer. Yeah, there's probably water in those cottonwoods over there, Chester. They better be. Of course, um, I haven't been by here in maybe a year. Oh, my, now don't say that, Mr. <laughs> Dillon. Uh, hey, look. Uh, oh, there's water, all right. 
Yeah, horses. Two of them. Oh, sure. They wouldn't be in there otherwise, would they? No, not likely. Yeah, those aren't range horses either. No, sir, they sure ain't. Oh, them's the most beautiful animals I ever saw. Hey, there's a man with him. Yeah. He's going to saddle up. Say, he's awful well decked out for a cowboy, ain't he? Well, he sure looks better than we do. Come on. I ain't shaved in a week. I'll be in Dodge tomorrow, Chester. Hello! You don't act very cordial. Yeah. All right, let's get on, Chester. We're looking for water. Over there. Now, uh, turn them loose, Chester. They'll find it. Yes, sir. Come on, get That's a mighty fine pair of horses you got there, mister. They're all right. All right? Oh, them horses got blood in them if I ever seen it. So have I. And I'll fight anybody for these horses. Anybody at all. Oh, now look, mister. We aren't after your horses. We're only admiring them. Hey, tell me something. Yeah. You ever shoot a man in the back? What? I said, did you ever shoot a man in the back? Well, I don't know who you think I am, mister, but I never shot anybody in the back. I believe you. Hey, wait a minute. I said I believe you, didn't I? Why, he's chancing we're going to shoot him, Mr. Dillon. Look at him go. Come on, we better hurry. No, Chester. Yeah, but he'll get away. We can't stop him, not on those tired animals of ours. And him with a pair of thoroughbreds. Well, we can track him. He's a sure enough horse thief. He's headed straight for Dodge, Chester. We'll find him there. Uh, right now, let's get us a little of that water. Stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. L and M's got everything. It's the best. No other cigarette gives you L and M's assurance. Assurance that it is best. L and M's got everything. Superior filter, superior taste, superior filtration because of L and M's superior filter. White, all white, pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of l and superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. Buy l and today, America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it, l and filters. l and has got everything. It's the best. I found him, Mr. Dillon. Oh, where, Chester? Moss Grimmick's stable. He rode in yesterday. He ain't even trying to hide him. Ah, uh-huh. You, uh, sure it's the same, too? Oh, I'd know him anywhere. Besides, that wine glass brand stands out like a pulled gat at a picnic. <laughs> okay, Chester. Um, you keep an eye on the street here. I'll start with a long branch. See you later, Ah, 
Hi, Kenny. How long you been back? Oh, just long enough to get cleaned up a little bit. Huh? How have you been? No, you didn't come here to ask me that, did you? <laughs> well, not entirely, no. <laughs> Something going on, Matt? Uh, Kitty, I'm looking for a man who came to Dodge yesterday with a pair of thoroughbreds. He's tall and, uh, well, he wears about the finest clothes that have been seen around here since Bill Hickok was last in town. Uh-huh. His name's Portis, Matt. Jack Portis. Ah, uh, I thought you might know him. <laughs> the only man I ever came to Dodge that I didn't meet never quite got here. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost your trail there, Kitty. Oh, I'm thinking of that cowboy who got shot just outside of town last year. Oh. oh. You remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I, uh, I'm more interested in Jack Porter, so... Oh. Well, I, I don't know much about him, except that he's a real free spender, and he's already made himself a lot of friends. Uh-huh. Nobody can pay for a drink when he's around. He got money, too, huh? Well, besides those horses you mean. I hear they're pretty fancy animals, Matt. Yeah, real fancy, Kitty. Well, nothing's too good for Portis. Oh, Matt? Yeah, I see you. How are you, Kitty? Portis? Hello. I see nobody shot you in the back yet, Portis. No. Anybody got a reason to? You know my name, but I don't know yours, mister. Dylan. Marshal Dillon. Hmm. I'll be darned. Why didn't you say so out there? Yeah, you were in too big a hurry for much visiting. The way you two men looked, I wasn't taking chances. How'd I know you weren't going to shoot me for them horses? Uh-huh. Did, uh, you shoot somebody for him? So that's what you're thinking. Where'd you get him, Portis? I raised him. Where? I own a spread on the Washita River, Marshal. Oklahoma Territory? That's right. That's a long way from here. Oh, I ride off every once in a while, spend some money, have a little fun. No harm in that. Sure. Now, you're saying that the wine glass is your brand, huh? Of course it is. Look here. Got a burn right on my hat band. Uh, see? Uh huh. You believe me now? It could be true. You're about the most suspicious man I ever met. Well, I'm paid to be. Sure. I understand. Uh, buy a drink now? Some other time, huh? It'll be my pleasure. So long, Marshal. I'll see you later, Kitty. Sure. Don't you believe him, Matt? Yeah, I guess I do, Kitty. Oh, but you're not real sure, huh? It could be that he's just a whole lot smarter than I am. Doc? Hey, Doc! Oh, hello, Chester. And Matt. Come on, sit down, Doc. Yeah, how are sit you? Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> now, we just finished, but you can have our table. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, what'd you eat? We had the chicken, but stay away from it, Doc. Oh, is that so, Chester? It's no good. Huh? Yeah, oh, it tasted like it'd been boiled with the feathers on. Oh, well, I, I never heard of cooking chicken that way. See, that might be worth trying. All right, you don't mean me. Go right ahead. <laughs> no, 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 Chester. When it comes to food, you can be trusted completely. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, who's having the party over there? That's Jack Portis, as usual. Portis? Oh, that fella. Even at noon, huh? He's been here a whole week, and he hasn't lacked for company one second of it. Oh, a man who spends money the way he does picks up friends like a dog does fleas. <laughs> well, he's bound to run out of money one of these days. Yes, I hear he hasn't gone into a saloon yet without buying drinks for the house. You know, a man like that could maybe be president someday. Oh, now, Chester, you don't seem to hold the highest office in the land in much esteem, Chester. 
Well, now, I like Portis, Doc. He's a fine fellow. But I was talking about how you think a man becomes president. Well, getting folks to like him is one way, ain't it? Yeah, well, I won't argue with that. No, no. Well, I can't sit here all day and listen to you two. Yeah, it's not likely you'd learn anything worthwhile if you did. Uh, I'd better go to a guest. <laughs> Thanks for your advice about the chicken, Chester. Oh, that's okay, Doctor. So long. So long, Doc. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. If you haven't got nothing for me to do, I... Might go on down to the depot later on. Oh, uh-huh. well, you can go now if you like. Oh, it, it's too early. Santa Fe ain't due in till mid afternoon. Oh, I see. Well, we'll go then. I, I wouldn't want a train to arrive without you being there to greet it, Jim. Well, now it ain't a pure waste. You never know who might get off one these days. <laughs> Pretty girl, maybe, huh? Now, now, I'm serious, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, now, but what I mean is... Hey, look, there's them thoroughbreds across the street there. Oh, yeah. Who's the boy leading them? Uh, Myron Marweedle. He's a kid Portis hired to give him a run once in a mm-hmm. while. Well, you can't say he doesn't take good care of him. No, sir. There's Portis coming now. He's going to show him off to his friends. Yeah, he's got a right to be proud of him. My, I wish I was rich like him. I hear he's got two rooms at the Dodge house, just in case he runs into somebody who needs a bed. <laughs> now, now, there's a real friend for you. Hey, look at him rare. Yeah, that's all horse. I seen him, I tell you. Don't yell about it. I believe Well, I want you to know it's... Well, you sure take up a lot of room. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't start trouble, Burke. I'm starting no trouble. He was standing in the way. The man stands in the way. You got a right to move him, ain't you? Is that fella drunk or just ornery? I don't know. Have you seen him around here before, Chester? Mm-mm. They're strangers to me. And from the looks of them, I'd just soon keep it that way. Yeah, well, you've got your choice. What? They're getting mounted. Looks like they're moving on. Mm. Hey, those are pretty fair horses they got, too. Hey, Chester. Yes, sir? Did you see those brands? Why, them's wine glass horses, too. Yeah. Hey! Men! Hold it! Uh, they don't hear you. All right, let's go get our horses. We'll follow them. Well, now, what about Portis? We ought to tell him. They didn't tell him. Come on. That's a camp they got there, Mr. Dillon. They ain't trying to run. No. Yeah, doggone if I can figure it. Now, they've seen us. Okay, we'll ride right up to them, Chester. Yes, sir. Hey, Burke. Them fellas we seen in town. Yeah. You looking for something, mister? What's your friend's name, Burke? My name's Keller. Not that I take to strangers asking. Well, there's no need for us to be strangers. There's just a proud foot. I'm Matt Dillon. Dillon? With a marshal? Yeah, that's right. What are you doing down here, marshal? What'd you follow us for? I got interested in your horses. Why? Now, there's a man in Dodge with two wine glass horses. Yeah, we know that. Well, all right. Keep talking, Burke. Go ahead. Tell him. All right. That's Jack Portis. And he stole them horses, Marshal. Stole some money, too. Uh-huh. Where? An outfit down on the Red River. Oklahoma Territory? Sure. Whose outfit? My uncle's. He killed him, Marshal. 
Yeah. He killed Burke's uncle, and he run off with what money he could find in them two thoroughbreds. And we followed him here. Long trail, but we found him. I see. Now, what do you aim to do now? We aim to take him. What else? Now, what are you waiting for? We're figuring a way to do it. Yeah. The smart one, that Porter's. Why didn't you come to me about this? Well, ordinarily, we would have, Marshal. What do you mean? Well, you think we'd ride all this way after nothing but a horse thief had stolen a little money? Now, Keller told you. He killed my uncle, Marshal. That makes it different. Not to me, it doesn't. Well, it ain't your kin he killed. You stay here, Burke. Both of you stay here. You can ride back and see Portis in a half an hour. He'll be at the jail. Other cigarette gives you L and M's assurance, assurance that it is best. L and M gives you superior filtration because of its superior filter, superior taste because of L and M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L and M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L and M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white, all white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to l superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. No other cigarette gives you l ms assurance, assurance that it is best. l and has got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try l and today. Dodge House, he ain't at the Lady Gage, and he ain't at the Texas Trail. Yeah, we'll go down to the Long Branch next, Tester. Sure going to be a surprise when he finds out his game is up, ain't it? Hey, what's that crowd doing down there? I don't know. Uh-oh. They're spreading out. Must be a fight, Mr. Jones. Yeah. Come on. Hey, it's that fellow Burke. See him? I should have left you to watch him. There's Keller, too. And Portis. Oh, looks like they killed him. Yeah. All right, stay back, Chester. Marshal. You kill him, Burke. It was my job, Marshal. I told you that. And you ain't going to arrest me for it. No. For it is Drew first, Marshal. It was self-defense. I didn't see it. Asked anybody who did see it. All right. No. Wait. They may be friends of his. They're alive. They weren't friends of his a minute ago. They didn't back him up, did they? Well, it's different now. They'll back him up now. You're in bad trouble, Clark. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? What are you doing here, Kitty? Hello, Matt. She's seen the whole thing. She was standing right over there, Mr. Dillon, and she says... All right, all right, Chester. Let's hear it from her. Yes, sir. Oh, wait a minute. How do we know she ain't a, a friend of his, too? She'd tell the truth even if she was. All right, go ahead, Kitty. What happened? Well, I didn't hear what was said, Matt. But I saw what happened, plain enough. And? It looked like he was calling Portis out. And then Portis went for his gun. Burke shot him. Yeah. And it was self-defense. 
I told you that, Marshal. I wasn't lying. There wouldn't have been a killing if he had stayed in camp like I told you. Well, the murderer died sooner or later. Burke. Yeah? You go on back to Oklahoma. And you stay there. I'm taking them horses with me. Take them. Take them and get out. Come on, Burke. Let's go. Portis was a bad one after all, huh? Yeah, I guess so, Kitty. If he hadn't been guilty, there'd have been no reason for him to draw first. He didn't seem bad. Well, you never know, Kitty. You just never know. I had Chester go through Porter's pockets, and he found he hardly had enough money left to pay for a coffin. So his big party had been about over anyway. But at least he'd had a fine time while it lasted. And everybody who'd enjoyed it with him felt even though he was a killer, it was better he got shot than hung. And that was the end of it. Except for one thing. And we didn't find out about that until a week later. Merciful goodness, it is just plain miserable out there, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what is it, Justin? The sun, the dust, and the heat. Well, why don't you stay inside? I'm going to now. Now, where you been? After the mail. Here. Ah. Uh. Yeah, there's not much here. Now, wait a minute. What's this? Oh, uh, well, that's for Jack Portis. There ain't no address on it where they could send it back to, so I said maybe I'd ought to bring it to you. Well, I don't know what to do with it. <clears throat> well, uh, it might say inside where you could send it back to. I don't like opening mail, Chester, especially that of a dead man. Well, what are we going to do with it, then? Now, wait a minute. Whoever wrote this doesn't know he's dead. And I guess it's up to me to tell him. I'll open it. What's the matter, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, you read it. All right. Dear boss, I hope you've run out of money by now and are on your way back to the wine glass. Things is fine here, except the Washita's near dry, and a couple of horses got stole. But they was not thoroughbreds. I'm keeping two pots of coffee on the stove in case you show up unexpected. Dugan. Oh, my goodness. Well, I made a bad mistake, Chester. Yes, sir. But Portis made one, too. How? Drawing first made him look guilty to us. But what happened was that he counted on his friends to back him up against those two. Mm, that Burke and Keller. They're mighty bold the way the road in here and got by with that. Yeah, we'll get a circular out on him right away. Yes, sir. And I'll write his man, Dugan. What are you telling, Mr. Dillon? And I'll tell him two more wine glass horses got stolen. Thoroughbreds this time. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know what I like about L&M's is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. 
Darn good smoke. See for yourself. Alan M. stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Lawrence Dobkin, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. What are you doing to help your children's education? Do not wait for the other fellow. Get in there and join your local organizations fighting for better schools. Maybe a year from now, you'll have done something to help. Ask your friends and neighbors to join in the fight for the future. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Smoother, cooler, milder, Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you. They satisfy. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Watch an entirely different Gunsmoke show tonight on your local CBS television station. Remember, Gunsmoke on TV tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And be sure and listen to Gunsmoke again on radio next week, transcribed for L&M Filters. Smoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. You got the time, Chester? Why, Mr. Dillon? Why? Well, I'd just like to know what time it is, that's all. Well, yes, sir, I figured that. But I wondered how important it is. Well, it isn't this important, Chester, believe me. Well, see, if it was, I could run over to Mr. Hightower's and find Mr. out. Mr. Hightower? Yes, sir. His watch broke down and he sent it to St. Louis to get fixed, so I'd give him the loan of mine. But I can still go in and look at it whenever I need to. Oh, well, that's a very good arrangement, Chester. Yes, sir. 
I figured time's a whole lot more important to a man like him than it is to me. It ain't but seldom it matters none one way or the other where I'm concerned. You understand? Oh, I surely do. Yes, I do. I understand, Chester. Yeah. Why did you want to know, Mr. Dillon? I mean, about what time... You're making me sorry I asked, Chester, but I'm supposed to meet a man at the Dodge House at 2 o'clock. Oh, well, it ain't nowhere near 2 o'clock yet. Well, how do you know? The sun. It lacks 15 minutes of being 2 o'clock. Chester. Yes, sir? Why don't you sell that watch to Mr. Hightower? Oh, I wouldn't want to sell that watch. My Uncle Arthur gave me that watch, Mr. Dillon. He got it from a fellow on the Now, get out and stay out. Don't you come back in this store ever again. Mr. Jonas. Well, lay off. Lay off. Don't talk back to me now. Now, just get. What's that Indian kid up to now? I told you he's not an Indian. Hey, boys. Hey, boy. Oh, look at him go. He ain't waiting for nobody. Look, Chester, there'll be a man called Davis waiting for me at the Dodge House. Will you go tell him I'll be along directly? Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Marshal. For a minute there, I thought it was that Indian kid back. He ran on down the street, Mr. Jonas. You ought to do something about him, Marshal. Oh, why? Well, you heard about them Cheyenne busting out of Fort Dodge yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, I heard. Well, wait till they massacre some people around here. Then what'll folks think of that boy running loose? Why should they think anything? He's an Indian, ain't he? He's a Cheyenne. No. His name's Cullen and he's white. The Army found him with them engines, didn't they? The Indians stole him from Miss Cullen eight years ago down on the Medicine River. You know that. I don't know it. Now, I hear it ain't her kid at all. He sure don't look like her. Why did you throw him out of here, Mr. Jonas? He was trying to buy ammunition for a sharp's rifle. What? Said Miss Cullen. Well, now, you know that's a lie. I'm telling you, Marshal, what with them Cheyenne loose, it ain't safe having a boy like that around. You ought to lock him up. He's not supplying the Cheyenne, Jonas, and don't worry about them. Colonel Honeyman's got two troops out after him. Hmm. You'll never catch him again. And I mean it about that boy, Marshal. You better lock him up before somebody knocks his brains out. There's a lot of talk about him. Well, I don't want to hear any more of it. That boy's got a hard enough time ahead of him as it is. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? That Indian kid, he's starting a fight with some man. What? Yes, sir. Right in front of the Dodge house. And, Mr. Dillon, that little boy's got a knife as long as his arm. <laughs> I never seen him before, but I hear he's been plaguing that boy lately. So the boy came looking for him with a knife. Huh? Hey, that man's got a knife out now. All right, hold it, Mister. Let him alone, Marshal. Move aside there. All right, drop the knife, Mister. Not hardly. Drop it. No. His kid's been asking for it. He started this. What's the matter with you fighting a boy? Dirty little savage. Grab the boy, Chester. All right, drop the knife, mister. He cut me. You saw him. I'll open him up like a melon. No, you won't. What's the matter with you, Marshal? I'll keep this knife. And if you're hurt so bad, go see Doc. You're going to wish you hadn't mixed in this. Am I? All right, I'll take the boy's knife, Chester. Here he is. All right, son. You come with me. I'm going to take you home before you kill somebody. out from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. 
No other cigarette gives you L&M's assurance. Assurance that it is best. L&M's got everything. Superior filter. Superior taste. Superior filtration. Because of L&M's superior filter. White. All white. Pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste. Because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Tasty. Full of flavor. And light and mild. Buy L and M today, America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it, L and M filters. L and M's got everything. It's the best. Want to talk about it, son? Name Viho Khan. Viho Khan, huh? Uh, does that mean something, the Cheyenne? It mean white boy. Oh, I see. Well, uh, Viho Khan, you want to tell me why you fought that man? Man talk bad to me. Hit me in mouth, kick me. Different man give me big knife. Then I fight. You stop or I'll kill him. Make big coup. You're not a brave, Vio Khan. You're not an Indian. You're white. You gotta remember that. Viho Khan have many Indian brothers. Ah, yeah, but you're home now. You're living among white men. You have a white mother. And you gotta stop thinking like an Indian or you're gonna get into real trouble. Mrs. Cullen talk hard at Viho Khan for fight. You no understand. Ah, oh, she'll understand, all right. That's why I came home with you. Now, let's go in and I'll tell her that it wasn't your fault. That you, Denny? Where have you been? Oh, Marshal Dillon. Come in. Hello, Miss Cullen. She came home with Dennis? Name Viho Khan. No, Dennis. Please, Dennis. Let's don't argue that now. And look at you. Where are your shoes? Nowhere shoes. Your shirt. I've made you such nice shirts. You can't run around in nothing but a pair of pants. Oh, you'll be the death of me yet, Marshal. No do harm to you. Oh, I know that, Dennis. You just don't understand yet, do you? You go to your room now and put on those shoes the soldiers give you. And a shirt, too. A nice blue shirt, hmm? I go. And take that arrow point out of your hair. Sit down, Marshal. Oh, thank you, ma'am. It's not easy. A woman of 40, a widow, raising a boy like that. No, ma'am, I know. But I want to. And I've got to. What? What do you mean, Miss Cullen? He's a white boy. Anybody can see that. But he isn't mine, Marshal. What? I knew he wasn't the first day I went to Fort Dodge to see him. He's not my son. But he's the same age, and I've given him the same name, and I treat him just like he was. No, he won't suffer for lack of a mother's love. I promise that. I'm sure he won't, ma'am. Why did you bring him home, Marshal? Uh, you heard about the Cheyennes, the band he was taken with. They'd broken out of Fort Dodge. Well, the boys heard it too, Miss Cullen. Why do you say that? <laughs> Man, you own a sharps rifle. Well, yes. It was Mr. Cullen's. The very one he died fighting with on the Medicine River. But why? Well, Dennis tried to buy ammunition for it today. What? Mr. Jonas thinks he's planning to help those Indians. But how? What could he do? I don't know. But until they're rounded up again, a lot of people in Dodge are going to be pretty jumpy. Some of them have already caused trouble for the boy. They have. He got into a fight with a grown man today. And he 
cut him up some. No. It wasn't his fault, Miss Cullen, but well, that's the sort of thing that can happen more and more. If you're saying I should give him up, I won't. Why, no, ma'am. I... He needs his own people. He needs a mother, just like my own boy needs one. If he's still alive somewhere. All I'm saying, ma'am, is that you got to keep him here at the house till that scare about the Cheyenne is over. If you let him run around town, I'm, I'm going to have to lock him up for his own protection. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Huh? Oh, that's Chester. Come in, Chester. Thank you. Why, Colonel Honeyman. I'm sorry to intrude, ma'am. Hello, Marshal. Colonel. I, uh, I'd like to talk to the boy, Mrs. Cullen. Talk to him? Oh, is there something wrong, Colonel? <clears throat> you know who Little Wolf is? Uh, he's chief of the Cheyenne on the Darlington Reservation, isn't he? They were, Darlington. I just had word they've broken out and are headed this way. Three hundred of them. Oh, I see. Obviously, they're coming to meet the Indians who escaped Fort Dodge yesterday. What does this have to do with your wanting to talk to Dennis, Colonel? I want him to tell me where their point of rendezvous is. How would Dennis know? Well, Indians scatter when they're being pursued, Mrs. Cullen. They secretly regroup at a given point later, and every man, woman, and child of them knows well in advance where that point is. But Dennis isn't... I'll call him. Dennis. Dennis? You call Vio Khan? Please, son. It's Dennis now. Come in here. Colonel Hunneman wants to talk to you. Uh, hello. Hello, boy. Soldier? Want to talk with me? Uh, uh yes. Uh, tell me, uh, do you know Little Wolf? Little Wolf Chief. Good Chief. Well, uh, he, he was, maybe, but he, he's done a bad thing now. No. He left reservation. He's going to join Long Knife. Long Knife, my chief. Dennis, don't say that. Let him talk, Miss Cullen. Long Knife escape. Yes. He and the others you were with burned their barracks at Fort Dodge and killed three soldiers. Fijo can know. Well, I'm sure you do. And you also know where Long Knife is meeting Little Wolf and his people. If, if 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 you tell me, you'll save lives, Viho Khan. Not only of those soldiers, but of of those of your people too. Colonel, please, Miss Cullen. Tell me, Viho Khan. Dennis, not no meeting place. Well, you can't beat it out of him, Colonel. No. Well, oh, I'm sorry to have bothered you, Mrs. Cullen. Goodbye. I'll go with you, Colonel. Uh, Miss Cullen, uh, will you remember what I said? I'll keep an eye on him, Marshal. Fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Miss Cullen. Chester. That was a waste of time. Well, what are your plans now, Colonel? Plans? Marshal, I was down to half strength when Long Knife broke out. And now, with two troops after him, I haven't enough men left for the post-fatigue detachments, let alone to scout the country. Now, uh, you, uh, want civilian help? No, no. It'd only end in a massacre of some kind. So I'll have to do the best I can. Well... Good luck. Yeah. Oh, that boy could have helped. Hey, you better keep a close watch on him, Marshal. All right, let's get back to the fort, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? I've been thinking... If the army had left them Indians alone in the first place, they wouldn't be in all this trouble. Yeah. But that's not for us to decide. All right, let's go. Now, 
Kitty. Mm. How about you? More coffee? Uh, no, thanks, Doc. Uh, you, Matt? Yeah, I think I'll have some, Doc. Just a little. Good, good. Uh... You know, that coffee's three parts chicory and one part lye. Oh, that's why it needs a little cream, Kitty. It softens it a bit. <laughs> Kind of hard on the cream. <laughs> yeah, we should have gone up to my office. I'd have made us some real coffee. Oh, why didn't you ask us up to supper, Doc? Oh, so I said coffee, not a whole meal. <laughs> oh, I'd have cooked it, Doc. Oh, you on that stove of mine, you would have. Asked. Yeah. Do you know I learned to cook on an open fire? You did. Not out in the prairie, in a fireplace. We couldn't afford a stove. In fact, we couldn't afford much of anything. We couldn't pick up off the ground. <laughs> Well, you're rich now. Oh, sure. Oh, Marshal. Miss Collins. What's the trouble? He's gone, Marshal. What? Dennis. Dennis, he's gone. Well, gone where? I don't know. Well, where did you see him last? After supper. We ate early, and then I had a talk with him. I told him how much I love him and, and how I need him. And then I told him about how people in Dodge feel right now. And until things changed. He'd have to stay at home. Well, he didn't say much, but he went to his room, and I sat out on the porch for a while. Then I heard a noise out back. And when I looked, he was gone. Well, maybe he's just wandering around somewhere. No. He's gone. Well, how do you know? That arrow point he always wants to tie in his hair. He took that, Marshal. So? That is all. He took his horse, too. He's gone to join the Cheyenne, Marshal. And you've got to go after him. Right now. No other cigarette gives you L&M's assurance. Assurance that it is best. L&M gives you superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white. All white. Truly the miracle tip because when it's added to l and superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. No other cigarette gives you l and assurance, assurance that it is best. l and has got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try l and today. There was no way to pick up the boy's trail that night. But next morning, Chester and I rode out after him. We tracked him all that day, all the next. Southeast, into the Gypsum Hills country. The land was different down there. Dotted with buttes and cut by narrow, winding canyons. This was ambush country. And ideal for what Colonel Honeyman called a rendezvous point. We travel slowly, eyes open, ready for trouble. And then finally the trail led down into a rocky canyon. And at the bottom we found the boy, crouched over a small fire. He acts like he's waiting for us, Mr. Dillon. I wish he'd waited somewhere more open. I don't like being boxed up down here. I got kind of a spooky feeling, too. Yeah. All right, let's leave him here, Chester. All right, sir. Marshal, make long ride. Catch me, Hawkon. How are you... Travel fast, son. White lady send marshal. 
Miss Collins mighty worried about you. Soldier. He worried too? Now, Colonel Honeyman didn't send me. He follow? No. He didn't follow. Siloho! Niyava! What's he yelling about? Look over there, Chester. Over what? Oh, my goodness. Indians. Why, there must be 20 of them. Don't move. Oh, I ain't about to. Yeah, they're warriors. Every one of them. My name, Little Wolf. That's the chief Colonel Honeyman said was meeting him in Cheyenne that busted out of Fort Dodge. Yeah, and the boy knew where they were meeting all the time. You tell Vihokan soldiers not follow. The soldiers are hunting for you, Little Wolf, but they're not with us. Daishlai, Naya. Vihokan say... Little Wolf can believe, Marshal. You can believe me. We came alone. We came to take the boy back home. We who can no like life with white men. Well, he'll get used to it. He belongs with his own people, Little Wolf. Little Wolf say all men free. We who can must make own choice. He's too young. He doesn't know what's best for him. If he make mistake... His mistake. Boy never become man. Other people make choice for him. Little Wolf, this boy's not an Indian. He's white. And if he stays with you and Long Knife, you know what'll happen to him. He live like Indian. He'll die like an Indian, too. The soldiers are after you, and sooner or later they'll find you. And when they do, there'll be a big battle, and many of your people will die. Perhaps a boy will die with them. Viho Khan not afraid. You're white, Viho Khan. You're not an Indian. This is not your fight. White people treat Viho Khan bad. Kick, beat, call names. Mrs. Khan no understand Viho Khan. Nobody understand. Well, it takes time, Viho Khan. Boy, decide. You want to come with Cheyenne, you no stop. We'd have a hard time, two against twenty. If you fight, we kill you. Look, son. Before you decide. You remember, these Indians are poorly armed. Probably a lot of them are sick. When winter comes, many will die. And the soldiers will get to rest. Soldier not like Indian. Soldier get tired. Go back. Indian go north. Powder River home. Hunt. Fish again. White people not my people. Fiho Khan stay with Indian. Fiho Khan decide. Leave now. Maybe someday come back. Great chief. Not with the army chasing you. Medicine River, Fiho Khan. The other. Move out. Did you hear what he said? Yeah. Medicine River V. Khan. Medicine River White Boy. Ain't that where Ms. Cullen lost her son? Yeah. Then he is her boy after all. And she didn't recognize him. He must have changed a lot. You gonna tell her? No, Chester. No. I'm not gonna tell her. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know what I like about L&Ms is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&Ms pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Darn good smoke. See for yourself. 
Ellen M. stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Sammy Ogg, Virginia Gregg, Joseph Kearns, Harry Bartell, John Daner, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Remember, listen to Gunsmoke again on radio next week for another transcribed story of the western frontier when Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke, brought to you by L&M Filters. L&M Filters. Make today your big red letter day. Your L&M red letter day. Change to L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job. And it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> A lonesome town, Dodge City. A handful of sunburned buildings half lost in the empty prairie. With a few scrawny cottonwood trees along the plaza. And the river and the red clay bluffs to the south. A frontier town like all the others. Except for one difference. We're on the railroad. So about once a day, when the train starts whistling off in the east, the folks in Dodge listen and remember that they're part of a bigger world outside. A different world beyond the plains. Well, just looky there, Mr. Dillon. A brand new record this time, pulling four coaches in a baggage car. Yeah, they keep getting longer all the time, brother. 
Why, in eight or ten years, I bet you'll see six and seven coach trains rolling into Dodge. It'd be more surprising if they'd ever get them in on time. Yeah, come on. Let's uh, pick up that strong box and take it over to the bank, huh? Look at there. Dudes with a dozen. Oohing and awing around. <laughs> Just look at them. Dressed fit to kill. Now, they'll get over it. Some of them, at least. The rest of them will go back east. Well, there's one I sure hope don't. No. Huh? What? If you want to meet her, why don't you drop into Long Branch Saloon? She's going to work there? Do you know her, Mr. Dillon? No, but she's got that look. Hey, Ed. Matt Dillon, open up. You know, this is what I ought to have been, Mr. Dillon. A baggage clerk. Oh? Just one run a week to Kansas City and back and collect your pay. Yeah, that sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Hey, Ed! He's probably asleep. Nothing else to do the whole trip. Yeah, I suppose so. Let me get up there, Chester. Maybe I can see through the window. See anything? No, not much. This glass is so dirty that... Chester! What's the matter? Go find Doc. I gotta break the latch on this door in a hurry! Careful now, Chester. Bear down just a little harder. It's starting to give. Watch your hand, Chester. All right. That's it. Let's get her open. It's good. Oh. That's good. There he is. Laying over there in the corner. Yeah. Ed. I guess he won't be answering, Matt. Two bullets right over the heart. Either one of them would have done the job. Yeah, but the baggage car was locked. Whoever done it couldn't have got out. Probably stepped out on the ledge there, slid the door shut behind him. The latch catches by itself. Oh, Matt. Yeah, what is it, Doc? There's another one down at the end of the car. What? Huh? What? It's just a kid. He's not over ten years old. And he's been shot. Same as the baggage clerk. Why, that's Ed's own boy, Billy Barton. Ed must have took him along on this one. Is he hurt bad, Doc? No, just grazed his head the way it looks. He'll pull through all right. Good. Look, I want to talk to the conductor and the train crew. You stay here and give Doc a hand, will you, Chester? Yes, sir, I will. Oh, Chester, by the way, that soft job is open now if you want it. What happened, Matt? Somebody said the train was held up. Yeah, somebody got into the baggage car and killed Ed Barton. Oh. Shot his son. Took the strong box around twenty thousand dollars, I guess. And the, they got away? Yeah, it looks that way. Train crew figures it must have happened near the Walnut Creek crossing. Whoever did it dropped off when the train slowed down for the trestle there. Well, what about the boy, Billy? Oh, he'll live. Doc's patching him up now. Poor little kid. Ed was all he had, and now he's left with nobody. Yeah, it's too bad. It's going to be rough on Laura, too. She and Ed were planning to be married. That's what I heard. So I figured I'd better stop by and tell her. Well, maybe she can go back to Taggart. He's still around. She left him when she and Ed started going together. But she's not one to be without a man. Marshal. Make it gentle, Matt. There's nothing gentle about death, Kitty. Marshal. Nobody will tell me anything. What's happened? Ed's been hurt, hasn't he? Yes, I'm afraid he has, Laura. I knew that's what it was. Is it bad? Couldn't be any worse. <gasps> no. No. I'm sorry, Laura. He's dead. No, Marshal. No. Oh. Kitty, will you take care of her? i got to go see if the boy's able to talk oh, yet. Don't worry about her, Matt. She'll be all right. Just 
Forget whoever did it, that's all. Don't let him get away with it. Well, I'm hoping the boy can help me in some way. As it is, I got nothing to go on. Nothing at all. Now, son, I I got you all fixed up. Now, you're going to be all right. There's nothing to worry about. Well, I bet you've been hurt worse just from bumping your head. Oh, it ain't the hurting, Doc. I know, son. Make it sure as you can, man. He's pretty broke up about it. Yeah, all right, Doc. I'm all right. What happened, Billy? Well, we was maybe three or four miles the other side of Walnut Creek, and somebody knocked on the door of the car. The one that goes back toward the coaches. When Dad opened it, this man came in with a gun. Anybody you know? You ever seen him before? No. He, he had a handkerchief over his face. Uh, well, was there anything special about him? His shape, size, or clothes, maybe? Uh, no, sir. Nothing I can remember. I don't know who he was, Marshal, but I know I hate him. That, that's enough. Billy, what happened then when he came in with the gun? Well, he pointed at my dad and said he'd shoot him if he made a move. Dad grabbed for the shotgun on the wall. The man fired two times and Dad fell. I started toward him and the man fired again. That's all I remember. Ah, I see. You don't figure that you'd know this man if you saw him again, huh? No, I, I don't guess so. Not unless he talked. What? I'd know his voice all right, even if he's trying to fool me. Well, well why? Well, what was special about it? Well, I don't know exactly. It was, was kind of weak-like or something. It's hard to explain, but I'll know it. Any time I hear it. Well, we'll try to make sure you do hear it, Billy. Now, you take it easy now. You get that head all healed up, huh? I will. Okay. Chester. Mister? Uh, fix up one of the cells over at the jail, huh? I want to get the kid moved over there right away. Oh, why so, Mr. Gilman? But now the whole town knows Billy's alive. He's the only witness who can identify the killer. And the killer knows it. Today, your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day, superior taste and filter. It's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. Tobaccos that are richer, tastier. Light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white. Pure white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters. America's best filter tip cigarette. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. Billy Barton moved into a cell in the Dodge City Jail. And Chester stayed with him most of the time to keep him company and to keep him alive. Meanwhile, I combed the town from one end to the other. 
Brought in every gunslinger, saddle bum, and drifter I thought might fit the bill. Get your hands up. Stand still. Don't make a move. Well, what do you think, Billy? Does that sound anything like him? No, sir. I mean, maybe it's kind of like him. But he's not the one, Marshal. Yeah. Now, all right, Chester, take him out. Come on, Oh, and uh, bring in Hawkley, will you? All right, Mr. Dillon. See, Billy, it takes time, but uh, we'll get him sooner or later. This is a preposterous outrage, Marshal. This is an unmitigated insult. Men of my character and integrity to be dragged in here... You're a sniveling card sharp, and you've been dragged into half the jails west of the Mississippi. Marshal, I beg your pardon. Just keep talking, Pegasus. Well, well, it's true. Of course, one or two occasions in the past I was accused falsely, basely, unjustly, with deliberate malice. Uh, Accused of certain more or less uh, criminal activities... <clears throat> Which it goes without saying, I was entirely innocent and blameless. It ain't him, Marshal. Regardless. His voice ain't nothing is, like it. Now, that's too bad. I've been trying to nail him on something for the last year. All right, Pegasus. You can shut up now. Well, I've only begun. I to said that's enough. That. Throw him out, Chester, then bring in the next one. long am I going to have to stay here, Chester? Well, that's kindly hard to say, Billy. Oh, it must have been over a week already. Oh, yeah, something like that, I guess. Uh, how about a nice game of checkers? Oh, I'm tired of checkers. Well, casino, then. That's a good, interesting game. I don't want I want to get out of here. Well, now, we got to give that head of yours time to heal up proper. Oh, that ain't the reason. I know why you and the marshal are keeping me here. Well, it's just because we're... Yeah, you, know, you think that man on the train's going to try and kill me. That's how come you're doing it. Now, whatever could give you an idea like that? You ain't going to find him. He wouldn't stay around here. He's halfway to St. Louis by now. Well, now, Billy, you just can never tell why that fellow might be... Sit tight, Billy. Yes, sir. Who is it? Who's there? Is that you, Chester? Oh... Miss Laura, hey, just a minute. Sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Laura. Well, that's all right. Well, how are you, Billy? All right, I guess. Well, do you suppose I could interest a couple of hungry men in some home-cooked food? Oh, yes, ma'am, you sure could. Here, let me take that basket. Oh, look at that. Why, that's better than last year's church social. How's your head, Billy? All right, I guess. Well, I've got something here that's going to make it better in a hurry. Oh, what's that? Slice of rum cake. One of the girls I work with had it sent all the way from New York, and I talked her out of a piece of it, just for you. Well, now, what do you say for that, Billy? Thank you. Ah, you're welcome, Billy. You'd better sit right down here and help us eat up some of this good food, Miss Laura. (laughs) Well, I'd like to, Chester, but... I got a change to get on over to the Long Branch. My work day's just starting, you know. <laughs> well, we, we sure do appreciate this. Well, I'll see you later. Uh, Billy, I, I know it's sort of understood that you're going to go live with Miss Austy over at the boarding house when you leave here, but, well, I've, I've always wanted a little boy. One all my own, and I'd... Well, I'd kind of like for it to be you. Well? Well, you don't have to answer now, but think it over, Billy. Yes, ma'am. Well, good night, you two. Good night, Miss Laura. Well, now, what do you think about that? It's all right, I guess. All right? Well, I think it's just fine. Uh, Billy, let me get a knife from under my mattress, and we'll try out these vittles of yours. Now, 
Have a drink with me, Matt? No, not right now. Thanks, Kitty. Hmm. It's Ed Barton's murder. Still bothering you, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Well, you can't win every hand. No, but this one's different, Kitty. Ed was killed in cold blood. And Billy, a kid of that age, shot down and left to die. Somebody's going to pay for it, Kitty. Well, you could be following a cold trail, Matt. Might have been a drifter, someone who never even came near Dodge City. No, I don't think so. For one reason. Only three people were ever told when those money shipments were being made. Me and Ed and Mr. Botkin over at the bank. And that killer knew. Knew exactly which trip to hit. Now, it was somebody from this town. Had to be. Well, it sounds that way, all right. The killer's here in Dodge and the money's here. And sooner or later, I'm going to find them both. Well, I hope it's sooner, Matt. You're beginning to look like a scarecrow. I'll make out. How's uh, Laura getting along? Oh, not too bad, I guess. She's kept it to herself mostly. Hasn't talked about it. Might be better if she would. I suppose. I've heard that she started hanging around with Taggart again, though. Taggart? Uh huh. I thought he went to Kansas City. Well, he did a couple of weeks ago. I guess he's back again. Anyway, one of the bartenders claims he saw him night before last over on the south side, and, of course, that's where Laura lives. Taggart, huh? She's even started talking like him again the last few days. She's a regular parrot. You know that voice of his? Soft and sort of husky-like. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Kitty. For what? I'll see you later. Chester, come on, open up. All right, I'm, I'm coming, Mr. Dillon. Well, it sure is good to see a face from the outside world, Mr. Dillon. Is Billy all right? Well, sure he is. Why wouldn't it be all... What's happened? I think I know who did it. Well, how are you making out, Billy? How much longer have I got to stay here, Marshal? Well, I think it's just about over now. Uh, say, where'd all this come from? Uh, Miss Laura fetched it. Oh, we had ourselves a real feed. At least I did. Billy wasn't very hungry. He didn't even eat the special slice of rum cake she brought for him. Special, huh? Mm-hmm. What'd you do with it, Billy? Oh, I'm sorry, Marshal, but I didn't want it. I give it to that old hound dog that's been hanging around. Oh, I see. Uh, Chester, I wonder if you'd step out back here for a second. All right, Mr. Young. We'll be right back, Billy. Yes, sir. Chester, go find Clint Murphy and have him come back here and keep an eye on Billy for the next hour. Well, ain't no need for Clint. I'll be here, Mr. No, you Dillon. won't. We're going to pick up a killer. I can't take any more chances. What do you mean? The dog. The one Billy gave his special kick to. Flying out there by the edge of the street. It's been poisoned. <laughs> Today, your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day, superior taste and filter. It's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. Tobaccos that are richer, tastier. Light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white. Pure white. Truly the miracle tip. Because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters. America's best filter tip cigarette. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. No 
matter how many times you've done it before, the same thing always happens. Every time you start out to bring in a killer, you know what's waiting for you. And the muscles under your belt knot up, and your heart starts to pound. But after a few minutes, you go cold and loosen up. Then it's all right. You stop thinking then. Stop feeling anything. You just go out and do the job. Nice night. Kindly peaceful life. Yeah. I swear I don't know, Mr. Dillon. It just makes you wonder. What is it gets into people? I got no answer for you, Chester. That's her place there, the second one down. Yeah, I know. Do you think he'll be there? I think he'll be there. All right, stay clear, Chester. Watch yourself. Yes, sir, I will. She was just using Ed Barton so she could find out the date of the shipment. That's right. I can't understand it. Get out, Chester. There by the porch, Mr. Dillon. Come on. Over here by the back of the tree. He ain't got much cover there. We must have caught him unexpected. He won't stay there. He'll make a run for it. We'll wait him out. I don't know, Mr. Dillon. It don't look like he's... There he goes. Drop the gun, Taggart. You're under arrest. Your last chance, Taggart! All right, come on, Chester. I guess that's the end of it. No. Not yet. What? You wait here. Yes, sir. You killed him, didn't you, Marshal? Put that gun down, Laura. The only man in this world I ever cared about. And you killed him. You'd never stop me with one shot and you know it. I'd still have time to draw and kill you. You're not the man to draw a gun on a woman. I never have before. But a little while ago, I saw a dog lying dead in the street. And if you'd have had your way, it'd have been a kid instead. So you better put that gun down and take your chances with a jury. Because you got no chance with me. <laughs> You're under arrest. That kid. That's what beat us. The minute I heard he was alive, I knew it was starting to go wrong. It started long before that, Laura. Laura. What do you mean? When? The day you were born. Now our star, William Conrad. I'm telling you, the day you change to L&M, well, that's the day. Your big red letter day. No filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip. And I know you'll go for L&M's taste, superior taste you get from L&M's superior tobaccos, richer, tastier tobaccos. 
Next time, look for those big red letters on the L&M pack. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Richard Beals, and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Tomorrow's better cigarette today. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Watch an entirely different Gunsmoke show tonight on your local CBS television station. Remember, Gunsmoke on TV tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And be sure and listen to Gunsmoke again on radio next week, transcribed for L&M Filters. Gunsmoke, brought to you by L&M Filters. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M. Superior taste, superior filter. America's best filter tip cigarette. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Don't you open the door? Maybe you'll find out, Chester. I never heard of nobody knocking on this door before. It's Major Harris, Mr. Dillon, from Fort Dodge. Uh, come in, Major. Marshal Dillon. Sit down, sit down. I'll stand, thanks. Marshal, last Saturday, two United States Army soldiers were murdered while driving a supply wagon from here to Fort Dodge. The government payroll was stolen. And you seem to have taken no interest whatsoever in the matter. 
Well, now, Major, protecting the Army isn't exactly my job. The Army can protect itself, Marshal. Then how come there were only two soldiers carrying your payroll? Where was the rest of your Army? On maneuvers. On maneuvers? In my command, troops remain in garrison as little as possible. And you were asking for trouble, Major, knowing there was a payroll coming in. Marshal, the arrival of the payroll was secret. Even the two men carrying it didn't know what it was. Somebody knew. Yes, they did. Marshal, I regard this crime as a demonstration of your inability to control these Dodge City ruffians. What? I mean it. And if no arrests are made in the matter, I'll give these bad men of yours a taste of martial law. We'll see how they like that. Now, wait a minute, this Major. This town will be patrolled 24 hours a day. Look, Major, you don't know these men. You run the army in here and they'll fight. There'll be trouble. Bad trouble. They brought it on themselves. No. You made a mistake and you got to find somebody to blame it on. I want whoever committed those murders. And I want that money, Marshal, within a week. And if any more crimes are committed against the Army meantime, we'll take this town over at once. Good day, gentlemen. Evening, Kitty. This is Marshal Dillon, Jenny. Matt, this is Jenny Lane. Ah, how do you do, Jenny? Pleased to meet you, Marshal. Sit down, Matt. Ah. You're new in Dodge, aren't you, Jenny? Oh, I've been here most a month now. Oh, she's only been working at the Long Branch about a week, Matt. Ah, how do you like it? Fine, but I'm kind of worried now. Oh? It's this army business everybody's talking about. Will it be bad, Marshal? Yeah, it could be. You think it'll happen? Might, especially if there's any more trouble. Say, Jenny, has your corporal been in? He was, earlier. Well, how do the soldiers feel about all this? Huh, well, he says they sure aren't anxious to mix it with all these gunmen and buffalo hunters and the like. Huh. But he's not my corporal, Kitty. He's just a lonely kid. Huh, he's not so lonely. He spends more time here than he does at the fort. How does he manage it, anyway? Oh, well, they made him a clerk, a sort of a bookkeeper. His time's pretty much his own. Well, he's lucky. Good, safe job, too. Yeah, I suppose it is. Well, I, I better get busy. I'm glad to have met you, Marshal. Glad to have met you, Jenny. I'll see you again. Sure. Nice girl. Mm-hmm. Where's she from, Kitty? Uh, Hay City, last. Huh. What, uh, what's the name of this corporal who's been sniffing around? Stark. Corporal Stark's all I ever heard. Now, what else do you know about Jenny, huh? She doesn't talk much about herself, Matt. Well, uh, maybe you can get her to, huh? All right. I'll try. Meantime, I'm going to wire the sheriff in Hayes City. He might know something. You must have some reason for all this interest, Matt. No, I haven't, Kitty. But I might find a reason for him through. <laughs> Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. Tobaccos that are richer, tastier. Light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white. Pure white. Truly the miracle tip. Because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters. America's best filter tip cigarette. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. I got it, Mr. Dillon. Just come in. Oh, what? 
the answer to that telegraph you sent to Hayes City last night. Oh. Uh-huh. Here. Oh, uh-huh. thanks. I don't know what it says or anything. Yeah. Jenny Lane left Hayes about a month ago with a stranger called Nate Brand. Nothing against girl, but believe Brand a wild one. Regards, Clint Adams. Never heard of no Nate Brand. No, neither have I. What's she doing, hiding him somewhere? Oh, uh, Matt. Yeah, what is it, Doc? Trouble. Oh, what kind of trouble? A shooting. Out behind the Texas Trail. What? It's bad, man. It's real bad. Well, the shooting's always bad, Doc. Yes, but this one's going to lead to a lot more shooting. Somebody just killed a soldier. Come, there's no crowd around here. There isn't a man in sight. No. Uh, Who told you about this, Doc? The bartender. He said he heard a shot and went out back and found him. He sure looks dead, all right. He's dead. Is that all the bartender had to say? That's about all. Except that when he went back into the saloon and told everybody there about it, they, they didn't move a hair. Well, I guess maybe they was thinking about the army taking over Dodge. Yes, Why didn't the bartender come to me first? Well, I don't know, Matt, but I've got the feeling that maybe nobody knows whether you're going to be on their side or, or the army's. Yeah, they never do trust me, do they? Chester. Chester. Give Doc a hand here. I'm right not to Fort Dodge. <laughs> Hello, Major. That brings you to Fort Dodge, Marshal. Murder. What? Murder. A soldier? Uh Uh-huh. Who? I don't know. Some private. Dodge City, of course. That's right. Have you arrested the murderer? Nobody saw it happen, Major. I see. Well, Marshal, you leave me no choice. Wait a minute, Major. I didn't ride out here just to bring you the news. I want something from you. From me? I want you to keep all the soldiers out of Dodge for the next 48 hours. Put it off limits. That's not exactly what I had in mind. Listen, Major. Major, Dodge City's an armed camp. It's full of men who fought Indians, who fought the war between the states, who fought each other ever since they could spit. They'll fight you next. They'll make you hate it. They can't fight the army. They can and they will. And a lot of men will die on both sides. But I'll make you a deal, Major. A deal? You give me 48 hours and I'll find your killers. You better take it. Because it'll get you out of a lot of trouble. All right. But I want the criminals delivered here. To me. Sure. But I might have to kill them to get them here. Ah, uh, hello, Doc. I've been waiting for you to get back. Oh, anything more happened? Not yet, but I found a letter on that soldier. His name was Ravage. Oh, uh, anything else? Yes. I dug the bullet out of him, Matt. And you know something? I haven't seen lead like that since I mustered out in 65. Now, what do you mean, Doc? That soldier was shot with a cavalry pistol. He was? I'd swear to it. Thanks, Doc. I'll see you later. Well, well, now, where are you going? Into the Long Branch. I want to talk to a friend of mine. I've been expecting you, Matt. Oh, have you, Kitty? Chester was in a while ago. He told me about that telegram from Hayes City. Look, Kitty, i got to work fast. There's going to be a war around here soon. I found out a couple of interesting things, Matt. One is Jenny's been seen riding horseback at night towards the Arkansas down by Brandy Bend. Oh? It might have something to do with that man she left Hay City with, Nate Brand. Yeah. I think he's hiding out down near Brandy Bend. Any idea why? Corporal Stark and Jenny went for a ride one night. When was that? The night before that army payroll was robbed. Uh-huh. 
Where's Jenny now, Kitty? Over at Delmonico's having supper. Kitty. What? I'm the only one who can ever thank you for it, but, uh... <laughs> I think you just saved an off. Ford. Now, when did you see him last? Oh, about noon, I guess. Uh-huh. Anybody with him? Private Ravage. Uh, Corporal Stark didn't shoot him, Marshal. They were good friends. They worked together in the bookkeeping office. I see. That's a pretty good job, isn't it? Handling expenses, figuring out the payroll, things like that. Oh, I, I don't know. He never talked about it much. Also, he'd be in a good spot to know when to expect payroll money in, wouldn't he? Even when it was kept secret? You'd have to ask him, Marshal. But, uh... <laughs> This isn't why you found me here, is it? No, of course not, Jenny. I'm sorry. You, you look uh, real pretty tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Marshal. You really mean that? Sure. Right? Sure, I mean it. Uh, Marshal, I have to work late tonight, but uh, I can get off tomorrow. I know it's bold of me, but couldn't we uh, maybe take a ride together? There'll be a moon. Oh, uh, where would we ride to, Jenny? Oh, I don't know. Anywhere. Maybe down along the Arkansas. I know. Let's ride down toward Brandy Bend. All right, Jenny. We'll ride down toward Brandy Bend. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M. Superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. Tobaccos that are richer, tastier. Light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white. Pure white. Truly the miracle tip. Because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters. America's best filter tip cigarette. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. The idea of a moonlight ride by the river with as pretty a girl as Jenny Lane was fine. Except that it was going to end with a man dead. Either me or her friend, Nate Brand. She was obviously leading me into an ambush. And there wasn't a thing I could do but go cheerfully along. I met her the next night. We started out. But a mile or so before we got to Brandy Bend, I pulled up and suggested we dismount and let the horses blow a little. They won't run away, will they? The horses? No. I don't worry. Ah, here's a good place to sit. What's the matter? Are you nervous, Jenny? No. No, of course not. Ah, sit down. Take it easy, then. All right. This better? Sure. Yeah, it's a nice night, isn't it? Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> You're not even looking at it. Something on your mind, Jenny? No. Why should there be? Why, you tell me. That's nothing, Marshal. Really. Let me ask you something, Jenny. Did you ever see a man killed? What? Why'd you say that? What, did you? Yeah, once in the saloon. But tell me, did he uh, have a fair chance? Of course, he even drew first. Then you never saw a man shot in the back or uh, ambushed, huh? What are you driving at, Marshal? Oh, I'm just thinking about people, Jenny. Like, sometimes a person isn't really bad. 
He just falls into bad company. What's that got to do with me? And I think it sort of goes against your grain, the idea of a man being killed without a fair chance. Why'd you come with me, Marshal? Uh, somebody had to. I suppose you know about everything. I think Private Ravage got killed by Corporal Stark because he found out about the payroll deal between you and Stark and Nate Brand. Sure. Well, what are you going to do now? I'm going to ride to Brandy Bend with you. But why? Because I'm gambling that you're still decent enough inside to let me have that fair chance I was talking about. That's quite a gamble, Marshal. Yeah. But we'll ride slow. And you'll have a little time to think about it. make a nice camp down here. Plenty of wood. Get your water right out of the river there. It's real nice, don't you think, Jenny? Man could hide out real easy down here. Marshal. I could be safe here, even while the army was trying to move into Dodge and a lot of men were being killed over it. Yeah, it's real peaceful down here. Marshal, I can't do it. All right, tell me, Jenny. That big cottonwood up ahead. On the left. Okay. Now, keep moving. When we get close, I'm going to ride ahead fast. You stay back out of gunfire. All right. Yeah, it sure is pretty down here, Jenny. Maybe someday we can come down and go fishing, huh? Now, this river's full of catfish. You ever eat a real catfish dinner? That can be mighty good if we're small enough. All right, stay back, Jenny. be all right, Marshal. Sure. He killed your horse. I'll show you where he hid his and the payroll money. Okay, Jenny. Then you can take me back to jail. Yeah. But there's one thing, Jenny. What you did tonight's going to get you out of jail real soon. Because I'm going to see you get your chance, too. And now our star, William Conrad. I'm telling you, the day you change to L&M... Well, that's the day. Your big red letter day. No filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip. And I know you'll go for L&M's taste, superior taste you get from L&M's superior tobaccos. Richer, tastier tobaccos. Next time, look for those big red letters on the L&M pack. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Starts 
Smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Smoother, cooler, milder Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you. They satisfy. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Recently, many of your cards and letters have requested an evening time for Gunsmoke Radio. In response to these requests... The makers of Chesterfield and L&M Filters will now also bring you Gunsmoke every Sunday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So now you can take your choice and hear Gunsmoke transcribed at the time that is most convenient, either on Sunday evenings or Saturday at this time. And remember, the makers of Chesterfield and L&M Filters also present Gunsmoke for your enjoyment on television. Tonight, watch an entirely different Gunsmoke show on the CBS Television Network. Check your local TV listings for time and channel. to you by Chesterfield, made the modern way with Accuray, smoother, cooler, best for you. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Most people think of Dodge City here in the 1870s as a wild, lawless town, swamped with exciting women and strong, daring men. The men they picture as fighters, the kind who stand up for almost no reason at all and gun each other down with as little regard for their own lives as they have for their opponents. Men whose courage is as raw and harsh as the prairies it's bred on. Well, this is the picture... But it isn't quite complete. We got our share of cowards, too. Like the one whose work I ran into the night I found a note on my door. Said, come up to Doc Adams' office as fast as I could. Doc's in the back room, Mr. Dillon. What's the trouble, Chester? He's got Jack Massey in there. Jack Massey? Yeah, that cowboy who looks up whenever he comes to town, you remember him. He always comes into the office and sits around and talks. Oh, the red-headed fellow, you mean, huh? It's been six months since we've seen him. Oh, what's he doing up here? What's wrong? Well, Doc, you better ask him. Hello, Matt. Doc? Well, he's dead. Oh, that poor fellow. As soon as I saw him, I knew he couldn't make it. Not with a hole like that in him. Doc, would you mind telling me what happened? Somebody shot him, Matt. Well, who shot him? We don't know. 
I was coming down the street, Mr. Dillon, and I heard a shot, and I run in and found him laying there on the floor, right where he fell out of the chair. Out of what chair, Chester? Why, yours. Mine? Yes, sir, down in the office. He was waiting for you, I guess, and somebody sneaked in the back way and shot him. Well, why? He was shot in the back. So? Well, he was sitting in your chair, and we noticed he was wearing a hat just like the one you wear. And also, he's about the same size as you. Somebody's out to kill you, Matt. To kill you the easy way. is best for you, they satisfy you. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today, smoother, cooler, Best for you. Tonight. Oh, just looking around, Kitty. Well, there are a lot of men at the bar over there. You think you can pick him up? What? The man who thought he shot you tonight. Hughes travels fast, doesn't it? I heard somebody was after you two days ago. You did? I figured it for talk. Didn't anybody tell you about it? Well, I haven't been around much the last couple of days, Kitty, but even so, I guess it isn't the kind of talk people feel easy about passing on. That's for me, anyway. I guess not. You know who started it? Well, he did. Who? Coming this way. What? Well, that's Ed Evie. What's he doing in Dodge? You ought to drop around more often, Matt. He's been banking Pharaoh here three or four days now. Has Sam hire him? Yeah. He's been doing fine, too. Evie always was a smart gambler. Hello, Marshal. Miss Kitty. Ed? Hello, Evie. You mind if I sit down? No, go ahead. I uh, been meaning to come see you, Marshal. Oh, is that so? I heard about the shooting tonight. Seems most everybody has. I know something about it, Marshal. Would you like to hear? Tell me. Well, a couple of nights ago, I went out back to breathe a little fresh air. <laughs> And I was standing out there in the dark around the corner in the alley. And I heard a couple of men come out. They couldn't see me and I couldn't see them, but I heard one of them tell the other he was going to shoot Marshal Dillon. Shoot him any way he could. Uh Uh-huh. You're a little late telling me, aren't you, Evie? I don't exactly owe you no favors, Marshal. And why did you bother to tell me at all? Because I don't like killing. That's why I hate killing. I've told you everything I know, Marshal. I'll be going now. What's that all about, Matt? What's between you and Evie? Yeah, I knew him out in Santa Fe one time, Kitty. He was bullying a man, and I showed him up to be a coward. A lot of people witnessed it, and Evie never forgave me. Well, then maybe his story's a lie. Maybe he's the one who did the shooting. Tonight. I don't think Ed Evie has the guts to shoot a man, even in the back. Who is it, then? Haven't you any idea? No. But there are a lot of men who'd like to see me dead. 
I know. I'd be willing to take my chances with anybody who'd face me. It's the man who shoots out of the dark I'm afraid of. Nobody wants to die. But it's even worse without a chance to fight back. That's what always made me feel especially bad about a man who broke his neck falling off a saddle or who maybe disappeared in front of a stampede of buffalo or who, like Jack Massey, sitting at my desk, had to take a bullet in the back. That's not dying. That's being slaughtered like a hog in a pen. Robs a man of everything he's lived for. And it made me mad. Made me so mad I lost my sense of caution. Like the night Chester and I were walking up Front Street after supper. If I was in your boots, Mr. Dillon, I'd hie me out on the prairie for a spell. Oh, you wouldn't? You bet I would. Out there you can see a man coming a mile off. I don't think he'd like that, Chester. Yeah, I guess you're right. He'd never fall out into the open. Not him. Or them. You think they might need more than the one? Might be. Doggone it, Mr. Dillon. Why don't you hire some men to hang around as a sort of bodyguard... Then nobody dare try ambushing you. The sooner they try, the better, Chester. Get it over with one way or the other. I wish I was as cool about it as you. I'm not cool, Chester. I'm mad. You sure got a funny way of showing it. Now, if I was mad, I'd be hopping around like a bronco with a burr under its tail. I'd be a slouching and slouching with foam on my mouth. Get on, Chester. He's up there in the alley. Yeah, I'm going after him. Oh, I'm going with you. You stay here. No, oh, by golly, not this time. No, sir. Start shooting, mister. Start shooting while you got a chance. I sure will. He's by that barrel, Mr. Dillon. He's leaning on it. Yeah, I see him. I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you good. Drop that gun. <laughs> Right up to him, Mr. Dillon. And he had a gun right in his hand. He's drunk, Chester. Did you knock him out? Well, I hit him hard enough. Let's get him up to Dark's. So we'll sober him up and find out what this is all about. Don't put that cup down yet, fella. Not before you drink every drop of coffee in it. Ah. Uh... I'm drowning in coffee, Doc. I said drink it. Yeah, there. No more, Doc. I'm sober now. Yes, well. Matt. Yeah, Doc. He can talk straight now. It's about time. What's your name, mister? Nat Swan. But I didn't mean nothing, Marshal. I didn't know what I was doing. Honest, I didn't. And I'll tell you, you were trying to kill me. No. No, don't. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Uh, You're a real coward, aren't you, Swan? Even to shoot me in the back, you had to take on a load of whiskey. I got nothing against you, Marshal. I come to town and heard all that talk and thought I could make a name for myself if I'd done the shooting. (laughs) Ain't no more to it than that. Oh, listen, no more to it than that. Well, nothing personal is what I mean. I should have put strychnine in that coffee. What are you saying, Doc? Never mind, Doc. I believe you, Swan. Oh, you do? Well, it's true. Honest it is. Yeah, it's true, all right. And there are a lot of other drunken, brainless bums going to try it for the same reason. They've heard somebody's out to murder me, and they get to thinking, why shouldn't they do it and get the credit for themselves? Well, well no, man, no, it's not that bad. It's already started, Doc. And there will be others. Lots of them. As long as I last. Listen. Listen to an electronic miracle. This electronic miracle, Accuray, means that everything from auto tires to apple pie, 
Battleship steel to baby food. Butter to cigarettes can be made better and safer for you. Now meet Mr. Bert Choke, brilliant young president of industrial nucleonics. Well, Bert, exactly what is Accuray? Well, George, it is a device by which a stream of electrons passes through and analyzes the product while it is actually being made. They transmit what they see to this electronic brain, which adjusts the production machinery for errors down to millionths of an inch. One more question, one that so many people ask me. How does Accuray make Chesterfield a better cigarette than was ever possible before? Every cigarette made with Accuray control contains a more precise measure of perfectly packed tobaccos. So Chesterfield smokes smoother, without hot spots or a hard draw. And that's why Chesterfield tastes so much better. And I guess that's why you smoke them yourself, Bert. You see, I know what Accuray can do. Well, there's your answer. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today... Next time, stop. Remember. Only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Best for you. Chester and I rode Nat Swan down to the Arkansas. Told him to get his horse across and to keep going. I guess he thought I was about to shoot him the way he rode off, all hunkered up in the saddle, trying to look small. And I was pretty sure he'd never show up in Dodge again. Now yeah, that'd be one less glory hunter to deal with. But the thought of how many were left waiting in the alleys, hiding in the shadows, how it made me jumpy. But I didn't realize how bad off I was until we got back into town, rode into the stable. We put our horses into their stalls, and we're walking toward the door. This barn's plumb deserted tonight, Mr. Dunn. It's late, Chester. Everybody's either drunk or in bed by now. Well, there's somebody who ain't. Hey, what's he doing with that rifle? Here, duck into the stall, Chester. He seems. All right, drop that rifle, mister. Not likely. Drop it, I say. No. He's going to shoot. You got him. Hey, you stay back, Chester. Don't shoot. Don't shoot again. Pick up his rifle, Chester. I got it. Last you, mister. He put a bullet in my lung. Who are you? I've never seen him before. Why do you care who I am? You've got to kill me. That's what you did. Why were you after me? Somebody hire you? Tell me. <laughs> you shoot a man down, and then you try to blame it on him. Maybe he wasn't after you. I ain't after nobody. I come for my horse, that's all. I think he's telling the truth, Mr. Dillon. Dillon? You... You're the marshal. Well, who did you think I was? I heard talk somebody was out to shoot you. It wasn't me. I was just trying to get home to Texas. I ain't gonna make it now. Well, I... I heard you lever your rifle, mister. You, you're about to shoot. I thought I was being held up. The way you hollered at me... Oh, my goodness, Mr. Dillon. He ain't got nothing to do with this. Oh, of course I ain't. If I was you, Marshal, if there's talk about somebody after me, I'd find out who's making the talk. I wouldn't go around shooting innocent people. This, somebody's got you outsmarted. We'll get you up to docks, mister. He'll take good care of you. Mm. Don't, don't bury me in a blanket, Marshal. Fix me a box, will you? Promise me you'll fix me a box. Yeah. Yeah, I promise. I can't swallow no more. I'm going to drown. Drown. <laughs> I killed an 
innocent man, Chester. Well, he'd have shot you if you hadn't, Mr. Dillon. They don't even know his name. But we'll fix him a box. We'll fix him a good one. Yes, sir. Then I'm going to do something else, he said. What's that? I've been outsmarted. He was right. But I know what I'm doing now. Somebody. You bet I am. Trouble? No, the trouble's over. Or it soon will be. If there's going to be a fight, they don't need me in this saloon. I'd be mighty surprised if there is a fight, Kitty. Huh? Cowards don't carry guns. Ed Evie. I'll see you later. Here comes the split, gentlemen. You care to string along? Well, Marshal Dillon, you going to try your luck? My luck ran out about an hour ago, Evie. What? I shot and killed an innocent man. What are you talking about, Marshal? You were too cheap to hire somebody to get me, Evie, and too much of a coward to try it yourself. I don't like that. Your story about overhearing that talk out back. You spread it around, hoping it'd give some brainless fool the idea to try it himself. Now, that's a lie. Two men tried it. And they made me so jumpy, I just killed a man I thought was going to try it again. Well, I feel pretty bad about that, Evie. I got nothing to do with it. You told me the story thinking it'd make you look innocent. Now, you outsmarted me, Evie. For a while. You can't prove any of this. I don't have to. Now, come on. You can't arrest me? No. Then I'm going to lock you up, and tomorrow I'm going to run you out of town. No. Two innocent men have died because of your cowardice, Evie. I wish I could hang you for it. Don't you call me a coward. You're the worst coward I ever saw. Shut up. You stop saying it. You're doing just what you did out in Santa Fe. Come on, Evie. I'll show you I'm not a coward. You won't call me that anymore. Take your hand out of your pocket, Evie. I got a gun in here. I'll kill you myself. No, you won't. You're not going to draw that gun. Yes, I am. Not you, Evie. I'll do it. Not you, Evie. I'll kill you. Just keep talking, Evie. Keep talking. Why didn't you shoot him, Matt? You had a right to. I think he wanted me to, Kitty. What? I think he'd rather be dead than face everybody knowing what a coward he is. Well, he's got his punishment coming. For the rest of his life. is best for you, they satisfy. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, John Daner, and Jack Edwards. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty.
Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M, superior taste and filter. L and M, America's best filter tip cigarette. Be sure and listen to Gunsmoke again on radio next week at the same time. Transcribed for Chesterfield. Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield, made the modern way with Accuray, smoother, cooler, best for you. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Time for a drink? Oh, I'll go with you, Doc. Good, good. And yeah, the long branch is closest. Let's go in there. Okay. <laughs> Some people say it doesn't look good for a doctor to be seen in a saloon. Especially in the daytime. Yeah. Oh, then you believe it, too? Oh, no, no, not me. I, I look on doctors as almost human. Almost? Oh, oh almost human. Well, well, that's mighty charitable of you. I'll think of that the next time you come crawling around with your throat cut or, or with a bullet in you. You'll feel better when you get your drink, Doc. Yeah, I'll feel better when I talk to Kitty. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Matt. Hello, Kitty. It's a pleasure to see you, Kitty. It's a real pleasure. Well, thanks, Doc. <laughs> Sam, a bottle and two glasses. Okay, Doc. <laughs> I'm buying the lady a drink. You sure you haven't had enough already, Doc? Oh, now, just because you're not used to men who act like gentlemen. <laughs> I think he's talking about me, Kitty. Yeah, I figured that. What have you two been arguing about this time? Oh, we've only been working up to an argument, Kitty. Well, there's somebody else here who seems to be doing that. Oh? Hmm? That cowboy at the end of the bar. Oh, what about it? I heard him telling Sam he's got a pack horse outside, loaded with ammunition. Well, there's no harm in that, is there? 
He said it's to kill Kansans with, Doc. Well, what did he mean, Kitty? I don't know, Matt. But he's awful mad about something. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, no, no. Be careful. Careful enough. Hello. My name is Dylan. I'm the marshal here. My name is Jim Hoyt, and I wish I'd never heard of Kansas. Oh, where are you from, Hoyt? Dina River. Texas, huh? Texas. You staying here long? Long enough to finish this drink. And since you're so nosy, I'll tell you. I'm with nine other Texans. We got 2,000 head of cattle six days' drive from here. They're branded Cross R and Jack Raven's Trail Boss. Anything else you want to know? Yeah, there's something else. Have all of the men in that outfit got their backs up like you have? Don't you worry none about us, Marshal. We'll handle things. With all that ammunition they sent you for? What's going on down there, anyway? Nothing a few Texans can't take care of. Why don't you want to tell me about it, Hoyt? Because I don't trust you no more than I trust any Kansan. Then why don't you finish your drink? Because I'm going to ride back with you. <laughs> Tomorrow's better cigarette today. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Jim Hoyt didn't like it much, but I got Chester and we saddled up and rode south with him. Nobody said a word the whole day. And that night, Chester and I spelled each other, keeping awake so his Hoyt wouldn't slip out on us. He knew what we were doing, and of course he just stretched out on the ground and enjoyed a good night's rest. It was late the next afternoon, soon after we crossed the Cimarron, that we ran into the cross our herd bedding down for the night. We rode around it, up to the chuck wagon fire, and dismounted. Jack Raven's a trail boss, Marshal, and that's him leaning against that wagon studying. Yeah, let's go talk to him, Chester. And you tell him how you got here so he'll know who to get mad at. I'll do that, Hoyt. Well, them's the first word Hoyt said in the last ten miles. I guess he's been saving his strength. What for? I don't know. Maybe the boss here will tell us. Yeah, if he don't shoot us first, he looks down on it unfriendly to me. Jack Raven? That's me. My name's Matt Dillon. This Chester Proudfoot. I do. Howdy. I'm a U.S. Marshal, Raven. Dodge? Uh huh. This your first time up the trail? First time for any of it. Now, Jim Hoyt didn't tell me much. He didn't want me down here at all. And why'd you come? I got curious about that ammunition you sent him to Dodge for. Some law against it? Yeah, that depends on what you aim to use it for. We aim to kill Kansans with it, Marshal. Uh-huh. You got any particular Kansans in mind? I ain't particular. You told me that's your first trip up here, the first trip for any of you, huh? What's that got to do with it? You lost many cattle? I've lost all I'm going to. How many? Some 20, 30 head. Stampede? Two of them. How'd they get started? Men. Men out there waving blankets they set fire to in the night. And they wasn't engines, neither. We seen them, but we couldn't chase them or go shooting at them, or we'd have lost the whole herd. Now, why did you send Hoyt for ammunition? You gonna start shooting next time? 
We're short ammunition, Marshal. Next time it happens, we thought maybe we'd some of us take off a few days and do a little hunting. I see. I want to get this herd to Dodge. I want to get it sold. Then we're riding back this way. And shoot anybody you come across, is that it? Like I said, I ain't particular, Marshal. Not about Kansans, I ain't. Tell me something, Raven. You ever hear of Jayhawkers? No. They're outlaws, Raven. They're murderers, criminals. They're men who started riding on the Missouri border during the war, and they got the taste of blood in their mouths. Now it's like they got no place to go. So they're out after anything in sight. And they cause a lot of trouble. And why don't you stop them? We try. Don't forget, the ordinary Kansan hates jayhawkers as much as you do. But what do they want? What good's it do them to stampede my herd? You'll find out what they want. They'll let you know. I want to stay here to help you when they do. I don't know whether I trust you or not. I guess you'll have to find that one out, too, Raven. Yeah, I'll find it out. I got work to do now. I don't know if the cook will feed any Kansas men, but you can go ask him. Chester. It's almost daylight. Oh, yeah. Uh, then I guess we better get up. I declare I didn't hear a thing all night. I slipped right through. Well, if it'd been a stampede, you'd have heard it, Chester. Maybe them Jayhawkers uh, just quit. Maybe. Mr. Dillon. Yeah, what? Look yonder, riding that horse. That's Jim Hoyt. Well, where's his clothes? Look, he's all bloodied up. They're having to help him get down off his horse. There's Jack Raven. Yeah. What in the world do you suppose happened? He didn't get those marks on his back from a fall. Take a look at Jim Hoyt, Marshal. Take a good look. Where'd they catch you, Hoyt? How come you know anybody caught me, Marshal? That's a good question. How do you know? This has happened before. It's one of their methods. Filthy cans of... Jayhawkers. Mighty Raven. fancy name for a bunch of murdering devils. You were on guard and they sneaked up on you. Is that the way it happened? They stripped me and flogged me. Then they give them a message for me. They want money, huh? I got 2,000 head of cattle, Marshal. If I pay them Jayhawkers $2 a head, they say there won't be no more trouble. By sundown. They want that money by sundown. You're going to pay it, Raven? I'd rather lose a whole herd. We'll ride guard in pairs tonight. There won't be any more beatings. And I hope there's no shooting. Them cattle are ready to run most anything by now. We'd like to ride with you, Raven. I might trust you, Marshal. I don't know. But the men wouldn't. They'd never stand for it. All right. So we're going to be around. We're not leaving here. And you better keep pretty close to camp. You might get yourself killed if you stray very far. Electronic Miracle Accuray means that everything from auto tires to apple pie, battleship steel to baby food, butter to cigarettes, can be made better and safer for you. Now meet Mr. Bert Choke, brilliant young president of industrial nucleonics. A word exactly what is Accuray? Well, George, it is a device by which a stream of electrons passes through and analyzes the product while it is actually being made. They transmit what they see to this electronic brain which adjusts the production machinery for errors down to millionths of an inch. One more question, one that so many people ask me. How does Accuray make Chesterfield a better cigarette than was ever possible before? 
Every cigarette made with Accurate Control contains a more precise measure of perfectly packed tobaccos. So Chesterfield smokes smoother, without hot spots or a hard draw. And that's why Chesterfield tastes so much better. And I guess that's why you smoke them yourself, Bert. You see, I know what Accurate can do. Well, there's your answer. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time, stop. Remember. Only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Best for you. I took Raven's advice, and Chester and I stayed with a chuck wagon all that day. But when the herd was bedded down about dusk, we saddled up and rode out of camp. Raven had his men standing guard by twos, all right. And he had the herd lying on a plane that apparently nobody could approach without being seen a mile or so off. We scouted the land a little dark. And just as the moon was coming up, we found what I'd been hoping for. A deep gully about a half a mile from the herd. The contour of the land made it difficult to see unless you were almost on top of it. And I picked it as the most likely approach the Jayhawkers had used. We hit our horses at the bottom and then climbed back out. That's an awful long gully, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Them Jayhawkers could ride out of it most anywhere for a mile or so. Yeah, they could, Chester, but... Right in here is where it's closest to the herd. Oh, we better lie down. You know, I've been thinking, Mr. Dillon, there's only two of us. Might go hard if we have to shoot it out with maybe a dozen men. Well, I'm hoping there won't be any shooting at all. You know, most half a mile from that herd, it hadn't ought to bother him very much. It'd bother him. Like Raven said, those cattle are ready to run at anything. Well, if we can't shoot, how are we going to stop them, Jayhawkers? Well, most of the kind are cowards, Chester. If we surprise them, maybe we can scare them into dropping their guns. You believe that? Well, I'm gambling on it anyway. If we start a stampede by getting into a gun battle over here, those Texans aren't going to treat us any better than they would the Jayhawkers. They sure are a hard-headed lot, ain't they? Yeah, they got some cause to be, Chester. Well, they got no cause to be. Shh. Listen. Somebody in the gulch. They're right down there, Mr. Dillon. I'll come climb it out in a minute. Not if we're on top of them. Come on. Don't do any shooting unless I do, huh? No, I won't. Quiet now. What's going on? No, no. Too much moon to ride over there. We'll stampede them from here. All we got to do is spread out along this gulch and start shooting. Uh-huh. It don't matter whether you hit cows or Texans. <laughs> now, let's spread out a little, Joseph. We'll crawl right up on top of them. All right, you. Come on. No, no. Is off. We've set up enough rifle fire, them cattle stampede shore. They'll have their hands so full of chasing them, they won't have time to worry us. Yeah, well, I think you men are covered. Get your hands up. You better do what he says. We're all around you. That's right, man. They'll kill us anyway. No. All right, Chester, give it to him. One of them's getting away, Mr. Dillon. Will we chase him? No, let him go, Chester. We got the other three. He sure did put up a fight, didn't he? Yeah. I kind of misjudged her being cowards and quitting. Listen, listen. Listen. Yeah, it's the cattle. We started another stampede after all. Come on, we better go help him. No, they're running the other way. We'd never get anywhere near them. Oh, but the Texans is going to be mighty mad. Yeah. And mostly at us. We left the Jayhawkers right where they died. Rode slowly back to camp. Nobody was there but the cook. So we sat down and waited. We waited three or four hours. 
before any riders showed up. And when they did, they weren't exactly friendly. They stood around at a distance and watched us as though they were guarding a couple of prisoners. Finally, Jim Hoyt walked over to us. It was you done all that shooting, Marshal. Some of it, yeah. I was shooting, too. Well, the men wants to hang you. Oh, is that so? We seen you riding around, didn't know what you was up to, but we sure found out, didn't we, man? All right, now you just look at here. Take There's it easy, four Carson. of us here now. You gonna put up a fight? I don't blame you for being mad, Hoyt. How the rest of you? But that's no excuse to be talking about lynching anybody. We ain't talking, Marshal. We're going to do it. Wouldn't you like to know why we were doing the shooting? We know all we need to know. Unbuckle them guns, both Use of Use your head, Hoyt. It's Jack Raven. Raven ain't going to stop us. What's going on here? We're about to hang us a couple of Kansans, Raven. Yeah, that's what I figured. Don't aim to have no interference. All right. I don't give you any. Good. I want to tell you something first, though. Say it out. I was kind of curious about it, so I rode over to where those two did all that shooting. You know what I found? A bunch of empty cartridges. I found three dead men, Hoyt, laying in a gully. What? Now, I don't know what these here jayhawkers are supposed to look like, but them three men I found... That's how they ought to look. This for true, Reeve? It's true. Well, I guess I've been a little hot-headed. I didn't trust the marshal either. Not at first. Well, then, you've done our work for us, Marshal. It was you, too. Found them devils and faced them. Ah, forget it, Lloyd. It's over. I don't think he'll be bothered anymore. Say, Marshal, me and Hoyt and the men, uh, well, we've had a bad trip. When we get to Dodge, we'll maybe want to kick up our heels a little. (laughs) Well, short of gunplay, Raven, this is one outfit that can rot Dodge all at once. Now, what do you get there? The first bottle's on me. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Barney Phillips, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. The makers of Chesterfield and Ellen M. Filters... Salute the National Safety Council on their 43rd National Safety Congress, which is being held in Chicago October 17th through October 21st. Make today your big red letter day, your L&M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day, change to L&M today. L&M's got everything. Superior taste. And superior filter. Get L&M today. This is it. L&M, superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. 
tobaccos that are richer, tastier, light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white, pure white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters, America's best filter tip cigarette. Be sure and listen to Gunsmoke again on radio next week at the same time. Transcribed for Chesterfield. to you by Chesterfield, made the modern way with Accuray, smoother, cooler, best for you. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Dodge had been real quiet all that week. No new herds had come up the trail, no buffalo hunters had drifted in off the prairie, no ox trains had arrived back from Santa Fe. The town just sat there like a plain girl at a party waiting to dance. But there was no dancing for Dodge. Not until Friday night there wasn't. I'd gone out to see a rancher friend that afternoon, and it was near midnight when I got back and rode up Front Street... Toward a small crowd gathered opposite the Long Branch. I dismounted and walked over. At the center of the crowd, I found Doc and Chester crouched over a man sprawled in the dust. A man somebody had put a bullet in. It's Ben Williams, Mr. Dillon. Who did it, Chester? Well, nobody don't know. He rode off too fast. Anybody see it? Miss Kitty did. She's standing over there by the Long Branch now. He's dead, Matt. There wasn't much I could do for him. Nice fellow like Ben Williams. Never hurt nobody. He bled to death. Somewhere's inside. Was he conscious at all, Doc? He was till a few minutes ago. He say anything about uh, who shot him or why? You know somebody called El Cater? El Cater. All right. That's a town, Doc, not a person. Well, they kept trying to say something about it. All I could make out was the name. I didn't want him talking anyway. As I recall, Williams came from up around Elkater, didn't he, Chester? Well, he had a little ranch up there one time. Yeah. Ben Williams was a good man, man. Yeah, Doc. Chester. Yes, sir. 
I'm going over and talk to Kitty for a minute. Find me a fresh horse and saddle one of your own, huh? We're going to be riding out of here in a few minutes. Yes, sir. I'll hurry, Mr. Dillon. I hope you get him, Matt. Whoever he is. Ben didn't deserve that, not being killed that way. He didn't deserve being killed at all, Kitty. Well, of course he didn't. How did it happen? Well, Ben and I were having a drink inside, and we heard a couple of shots in the street here, and then somebody yelled for Ben to come out. Now, the man who killed him? It must have been. Ben didn't want to go, but I guess he figured he had to. I got by the window, and I could see Shippen out there on his horse. Shippen? Lou Shippen. That's what Ben said when he heard him yell. Yeah. All right, then what happened? Well, Ben walked out into the street, right up to him. He didn't even draw his gun, but Chippen must have been holding his in his lap. He suddenly shot Ben twice and then rode off as fast as he could. He murdered him, Matt. Can you tell me what this Chippen looked like, Kitty? Oh, it's too dark. I don't even know what color his horse was. Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to make him very easy to find. But you find him, Matt. You find him. <laughs> a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A. Always milder. B. Better tasting. C. Cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. That's because Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making. Gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly. Smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. That's because an Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily. Let's you enjoy all the wonderful flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking pleasure. No hot spots. No hard draw. So the next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is A, always milder. B, better tasting. C, cooler smoking. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you. They satisfy. All I had to go on was a name and a place. The place was El Cater. A little sunburnt town a hundred miles to the north. There was a saloon and a restaurant and a hotel and a stable and, miraculously, a telegraph office. But even so, El Cater didn't add up to much. It was still the crossroads of nothing. It was noon of the second day when we rode up the almost deserted main street. Hot, saddle-weary, hungry. <laughs> Where are we going to go first, Mr. Dillon? Uh, we'll put our horses in the stable chest and then we'll take a look around. Huh? I've already seen all I want to of this place. Except maybe the inside of that restaurant. You know, I've been thinking, Chester. Maybe we'll stop there first? Huh? Oh, no, no. About Lou Shippen. Oh. I finally remembered. Uh, I've seen his name. You have? Where? He's wanted over in Wichita. And I can't remember his description. Well, that's easy. All you got to do now is telegraph for it. Yeah. Ain't there nobody at this stable? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Well, here comes somebody. Hello. You got room for a couple of horses, mister? I reckon. They've had a hard ride. You got any grain? I might scare some up. Oh, good. Wait a minute. Yeah, what? Where'd you make this hard ride? Where are you from? Dodge. You're the marshal. Yeah, that's right. I thought marshals traveled alone. Well, sometimes they do. Well, I tell you, marshal, I got a little mixed up. I had been asleep. You woke me, I plumb forgot. Forgot you. what? I can't keep your horses here. There ain't no room. Well, now, here, you just said you could. Stable's all full. And I got no corral. I can see some empty stalls through the door there. 
Them spoke for her. What is it, mister? Everything was fine until I told you I'm a marshal. I can't help it if the stable's full. These horses are going in there, mister, and you're going to feed them. Now, look, Now, mister. we're going to be back directly to see that they're all right, and believe me, that better be. All right, let's take them in, Chester. Look like much of a hotel. Yeah, we don't have much choice. My gracious, I ain't in trouble where I'd rather sleep outdoors. Good morning, gentlemen. Hello. We're looking for a room. You mean two rooms? All right, two rooms. Of course, one room would be cheaper. And noisier. My friend here snores. Oh, now you always say that, but I never heard me snore. If I ever thought you were lying awake snoring, I'd ram a gun barrel down your throat. Uh, Now, gentlemen, please. (laughs) He don't mean it. (laughs) Do you, Mr. Dillon? Dillon? Marshal Dillon? Yeah, is there something wrong? No, no. You've been expecting me, is that right? I never heard of you before. Oh, that's one line. Now, tell me another one. Have you ever heard of Lou Shippen? Shipping? No, not around here. Never heard of him. Uh Uh-huh. All right, let's see those rooms. Uh, I'm sorry, Marshal. I I made a mistake. I forgot there are a lot of people coming in tonight. Our rooms are all taken. A lot of people coming in from war. No, it's true. I forgot all about it. Well, you just go on forgetting about it. Now throw me a couple of those keys before I lose my temper. We're here and we're going to (laughs) stay. feel like a frothy dog, Mr. Dillon. Like a what? You know, one of them slavering dogs that runs around drooling and biting people and making them sick. Oh. I never been treated so bad before in all my life. That's Lou Shippen, Chester. He's here somewhere. My guess is he's told everybody in town they got to get us to move on. Well, why would they care? He's a killer, Chester, and they know it. And they're afraid of him. You want something? Yeah, I want to send a telegram. You do? Where? Wichita. Here, I wrote it out at the hotel. Sheriff Wichita need full description of Lou Shippen. All right, what's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Send to me an al Qaeda at once, Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Look, mister, if It's you'd... Hinkle, Marshal, Mr. Hinkle. All right, Mr. Hinkle, are you going to send that, or am I going to have trouble with you, too? Trouble? I know Lou Shippen's got this town scared to death of him, but maybe it's about time I made some of you people scared of me. I might as well start with you. Now, Marshal, I, I don't want any trouble. I'll send your telegram as soon as the line's free. Good. Come on, Chester. Shouldn't we already have waited to make sure he's really going to send it, Mr. Dillon? He isn't going to send it, Chester, and there's no way I can make it. Why ain't he? I don't know Morse code. He could send anything he wanted. Hmm. Oh, God, Mr. Dillon, this town scares me. Any man here might be loose shipping, just waiting for an easy chance to shoot you in the back. Yeah, and I got an idea how I can smoke him out, Chester. I'm going to have to tell a few lies to do it. Yeah, right now, let's get something to eat, huh? Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A. Always milder. B. Better tasting. C. Cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. That's because Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making. Gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly. 
smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. That's because an accurate Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the wonderful flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking pleasure. No hot spots, no hard draw. So the next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you. They satisfy. Now I know what's wrong this time, Mr. Dillon. Now what? The way they eat. My, that restaurant puts out the mustiest smelling beef stew I ever smelled. That was goat stew, Chester. Goat? I need a drink. Uh, here's the place to get it. If they'll serve us. They'll serve us, all right. Goat. Bartender. Hello, Marshal Dillon. Now, word gets around fast, doesn't it? El Cater's a small town. Uh huh. Small and scared. I don't know what you mean. You don't know Lou Shippen either, do you? Lou Shippen? No, no, I, I don't know him. Well, he might be one of the men sitting at that table behind me there. You better do your drinking someplace else. There isn't any other place. Now fetch us a bottle of rye or I'll come back there and do it myself. I aim to have a drink. Well. All right. Yeah. One of those men gave him a go-ahead sign, Chester. Did you see who it was? No, I didn't. I was watching the bartender. Uh, one of them's loose shipping. Yes, sir, but there's six of them to choose from. There comes a telegraph operator. Ah, uh, Mr. Hanko. Come over here. What do you want me for? I want to buy you a drink. Uh, bring a glass to Mr. Hanko, bartender. Here you are. I don't want a drink, Marshal. That's what you came in here for, wasn't it? I... I don't need a drink. Shepin, there's going to be a fight. You stay here, Mr. Hinkle. <laughs> all right, tell him it's all right to drink with me, Shepin. There are six of you men sitting there, and one of you is Lou Shepin. And by 10 o'clock tonight, I'm going to know which one. Isn't that right, Mr. Hinkle? I didn't send that telegram. That's the truth. I didn't send it. You sent it. I stood there and watched you. But I didn't. You sent my telegram, and we'll have an answer by 10 o'clock tonight. Now, you're lying. That isn't true. I'd be wasting my time here if it wasn't. Now, you drink up. Drink up, Mr. Hinkle. Okay, I'll be over about 10, Mr. Hinkle. I'm coming with you. Are you afraid of shipping? All right, come on. But I'm not going to wait around your office with you. You've got to help me, Marshal. He'll kill me now. All those lies you told. Which one is he, Mr. Hinkle? I can't tell you. Why not? He's a devil with a gun. He could kill you and then where'd I be? All right, it doesn't matter. I'll find him later. But I didn't send any telegram. There ain't going to be an answer. Doesn't matter, Mr. Hinkle. What are you going to do? Now, for one thing, I'm going to see you're in your office tonight and that you stay there. That's all you have to worry about. I'll handle the rest. Mr. 
Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? It must be close to half past nine, ain't it? Yeah, just about. Can you see Mr. Hinkle? Yeah, he's in there. He's pretty fidgety, too. Well, I don't blame him. He knows Lou Shippen are going to come after him, and he don't know we're laying out here waiting. No, he doesn't. Maybe Shippen will figure you was lying and stay away? He can't take that chance, Chester. He's got to come. Yeah. We're sure stuck if he don't. We won't never find him. Shh. Quiet, Chester. Look coming. He's heading right for the telegraph office. Yeah. You stay here. Hold it, Shippen. Reckon you killed him? I don't know. Watch him. Shippen, huh? You sure outsmarted me, Marshal. You was lying about Hinkle sending that telegram. Yeah. I had no way of knowing for sure. Shippen, why did you kill Ben Williams? I never liked him. You killed him because you didn't like him? Good reason is any for killing a man. Oh, my goodness. Why did you stay here in El Cater? Why didn't you ride on? She was my home. Nobody's going to push me out of it. <laughs> Except you, Marshal. You pushed me all the way out. Marshal. Nothing like it, Mr. Dillon. He must have been plumb crazy. Yeah, he's probably killed a lot of people we don't even know about, Chester. And for no better reason. Yeah. And it's a good thing he's dead. Yeah, I guess so. I guess it is. moment, our star, William Conrad. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. You know, some of the roughest citizens on the frontier were bred in Oklahoma territory. And uh, when two of them arrived in Dodge at the same time, well, that meant trouble. And that's our story for next week. So until then, good night. <laughs> Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Monday, October 24th is U.N. Day, the 10th anniversary of the founding of the United Nations. The strength of the U.N. as a force for peace depends on your support. Remember, the U.N. works for you.
Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M. Superior taste and filter. Superior taste from richer tobaccos. Tastier, light and mild. Superior filter. It's white, pure white. Added to L&M tobaccos, this miracle tip actually improves your enjoyment. Look for the big red letters. Smoke L&M, America's best. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. Be sure and listen to Gunsmoke again next week at this time. Transcribed for Chesterfield. to you by Chesterfield, made the modern way with Accuray, smoother, cooler, best for you. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. You were going straight to the bar without even saying hello. Well, I figured you was kindly busy. (laughs) I'm busy telling Andy here about Dodge. Andy, this is Chester Proudfoot. He's one of the people you ought to know. This is Andy Hill, Chester. Pleased to meet you, Chester. Well, sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Chester works for Marshal Dillon, Andy. Well, that ought to be a good job. Oh, it's a fine job. If you like long hours and poor pay. <laughs> <laughs> he spends quite a few of those long hours sitting around the depot waiting for the Santa Fe to come in, Andy. <laughs> well, I just so Mr. Dillon will know where I'm at if he wants me for anything. Uh, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> your name, Kitty? I'm busy, mister. They told me your name. Now I'm going to buy you a drink. Come on over to the bar. Back to your hogs, mister. You're spoiling the air. I'll have no talk from a woman of your kind. All right, you get out of here, mister. Get out. You putting me out? You ain't even armed. Well, I'll find me a gun quick enough. Hey, mister. How about me? I'm armed. You're too young to be wearing a gun. Take it off. 
You do it. You take it off. I sure will. From there. You want to die, don't you? No. I don't want anybody to die. Now, you get out of here. I'm going to put a bullet in you. You can't do it, mister. Don't try it. I'll show you. I told him he couldn't do it. Wait. You killed him, Andy. He was looking for a fight. I don't even know who he is. I've never seen him before. Well, that's Matt. Who? Marshal Dillon, man. Oh. Did you kill this man? I did it. It was self-defense, Matt. Andy had to shoot him. That's the truth, Mr. Dillon. That man was treating Miss Kitty awful bad, and I didn't have no gun, and Andy stood up to him. Get some help and carry him out of here, Chester. Yes, sir. Uh, a couple of you may give me a hand here. Kitty, let's step over here. Yeah. You and Andy, is it? Andy Hill, Marshal. You should have seen it, Matt. That man had his gun almost out before Andy even started to draw. So you're pretty fast, huh, Andy? I'm alive. Where are you from? I told you my name. It don't matter where I'm from. What are you doing in Dodge? Marshal, I come here looking for a job, an honest job. He told me the same thing, Matt. I believe him. Why would I be lying? Well, the way Kitty described it, you're mighty handy with a gun for a man who's looking for an honest job. All right, I'll move on. I wouldn't have a chance here with you against me. Matt. Don't worry about it, Miss Kitty. I'll make out someplace else. Wait a minute, Andy. Yeah? Go over to the stage office. That's for Jim Buck. What for? He's a driver. He's looking for a man to ride shotgun. Tell him I sent you. Thanks, Marshal. I'll go over right away. So long. You see, Matt? He did mean it. Yeah, he wants a job, all right. But he's hiding something, Kitty. When a man hides something, it's usually bad. But I got a feeling about him, Matt. I think he's all right. Well, I hope so, Kitty. Won't be so good if I recommended an outlaw to protect the stage. Put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. That's because Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making, gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. That's because an Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily. Let's you enjoy all the wonderful flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking pleasure. No hot spots. No hard draw. So the next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is A, always milder. B, better tasting. C, cooler smoking. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield best for you. They satisfy. I didn't see Andy again that night, but I ran into Jim Buck, and he told me that he'd hired him and that they were leaving for Hayes City the next morning. It was two days before they were due back, before I'd find out if I'd made a mistake or not. And I waited. In the evening they were due, I was over at the stage office. Of course, the stage was late, over an hour late. But it finally came. And Andy was up on the box next to Jim. They pulled up and Jim jumped down and ran over to me. Marshal, Marshal, you arrest him. Arrest who? Andy Hill, that's who. If I hadn't heard how good he is with a gun, I'd have taken him myself. I'd have shot him dead. Now, wait a minute, Jim. What's the trouble? He's mad at me, Marshal. Mad at you? You ought to be tarred and feathered. Why don't one of you tell me what this is all about? We was held up, Marshal. Held up by heaven, and this so-called shotgun man sat there like an owl on a rafter. Sat there and did nothing. 
Is that true, Andy? Why well, kill a man for nothing, Marshal? For nothing? The treasure box was empty and we carried no passengers this trip. He didn't get a thing. You didn't know that box was empty till I told you afterwards. I knew it before we left Hayes City, Jim. I figured I ought to know what I was guarding, so I found out. Sure. And for all I know, you was in cahoots with that bandit. Maybe you and him were partners. There's no proof of that, Jim. Well, I ain't hiring a man who won't fight. You're fired, Andy. I never want to see you again. I'm sorry, Marshal. I guess I've disappointed you. Because you didn't want to kill a man for nothing. That's right. There, uh, wasn't any other reason, was there, Andy? You think I was in on it, too? I didn't say that. Good night, Marshal. Andy. Andy. Yeah, maybe I did make a mistake. <laughs> I wasn't sure about Andy that night, but the next few days changed my mind again. He went all over town looking for a job. He tried everybody and everything, but nothing came of it. And finally, I heard that he would got discouraged and quit trying. I had a long talk with Jim Buck, and at the end, he said he was sorry he'd lost his temper. But he still wouldn't rehire Andy. And that was that. Until one night about a week later, Doc and I were having a beer over at the Texas Trail. From what I've seen of him, Mac, Andy's got a lot of pride. Maybe too much pride, Doc. No, he's young. He's feeling his blood. <laughs> oh, my, we were all like that once. Now, yeah, there's more to it than that. Well, what? I don't know, Doc. Andy doesn't talk much. Especially to me. Well, maybe he doesn't trust the law. Well, most people around here don't. Yep. Get away from Andy. Oh. Now what? Yeah, it's Andy. He's drunk. Who's that following him? Who is that, man? I'm trying to think, Doc. I've seen his face. Maybe it was his picture. I said I don't want to drink with you. No drink. Oh, there's going to be a fight now. Yeah, stick around, Doc. We may need you. man won't drink with you. Take it any way you like. Andy, I could kill you. You know, you're drunk. Right. Hold it, Andy. Stay out of this, Marshal. He's right. You're too drunk to fight. Am I? Watch me. No. Hey. What'd you do that for, Marshal? They keep you from killing him, Carrick. Know my name? I heard Andy say it, but I don't want to hear it again. And I don't want to see you again. You find your horse and you ride him out of town, Carrick, and you keep on riding him. Now you get moving while you got a chance. Hmm. Now, Chester. Uh, you should have arrested him, Mr. Dillon. He started the whole trouble. Yeah, maybe. But right now, get Andy's gun and take him to jail. He can sleep it off there. That's where I will. Well, you didn't need me after all, man. Doc, that's the first time I ever turned an outlaw loose. What's that? Carrick. I saw his picture the other day on some new circulars. The law in Oklahoma Territory would like to have him back. Well, then why didn't you arrest him? Andy's wanted with him. There's no picture, but I remember the description now. Carrick for murder, Andy for robbery. They were partners. You let a murderer go? No, not exactly, Doc. Carrick needs Andy for a partner. That's why he came here. And that's why he'll come back. If he comes back, you're going to have two outlaws to deal with. Yeah, maybe. But it's Andy who's going to have to decide that. He's still got a choice to make, Doc. All I'm doing is giving him the chance to make it. Why should you risk facing a pack of trouble to help a man you hardly know, man? A man who hardly knew me went out of his way once, Doc. Maybe I'm kind of paying him back. Oh. Well, I still say you... You must have a lot of faith in him. No, not a lot, Doc. Just enough to take a gamble. (laughs) 
The next morning, it looked like a bad gamble. Andy came out of his cell sullen and angry. And when I gave him his gun back, he took it and left without a word. Later, Chester reported that he'd ridden out of town. And it was several days before I heard of him again. Mr. Gillum? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Andy Hill's back in town. Oh? Jim Buck told me. Well, how does Jim Buck know? He's standing out there on the boardwalk talking to him. I went up and said hello to him, and you know what Jim told me? He's gone and hired Andy to ride shotgun for him again. He has? Yes, he has. He was kindly laughing about it. He said Andy spent most of the morning arguing him into it. Said anybody who could talk that good and that long deserved a job. <laughs> I guess he ain't mad at Andy no more, huh? Chester, Jim's bringing a shipment of gold back from Hayes City next trip. Hmm. You're thinking maybe Andy knows about it. Him and Carrick both. Yeah, maybe. What's that? It's a circular from Oklahoma with Carrick's picture on it and Andy's description. Oh, what are you going to do with it? I'll be back directly. Hello, Andy. What do you want, Marshal? Where's Jim Buck? He went over to the stage office. I hear you're riding shotgun for him again. Any objections, Marshal? Andy, if I had everything on my mind the way you have, I don't think I'd be friendly with the law either. What do you mean by that? Here, take a look at this. Hmm? Now, wait a minute, Andy. I didn't come to arrest you, so don't make me kill you. What? I wanted you to see that circular. I didn't think you and Carrick knew it was out. I don't understand you, Marshal. It was Carrick who held up the stage last time when you were riding shotgun. Wasn't it? It had nothing to do with me. I didn't know he was in the country. But you didn't shoot because you didn't want to kill a man for nothing, especially a former partner, huh? Okay, Marshal. I think your partner's again, Andy. I think you got this one planned. You won't take me alive, Marshal. I told you I didn't come here to arrest you. Why not? Because I think a man who wants it deserves a chance, Andy. You haven't had yours. Not yet. Well, maybe I'm wrong giving it to you, but I'm going to do it. What do you mean? The stage goes to Hayes tomorrow. It'll be back Thursday. I'm going to be waiting for it, Andy. Waiting real hard. Chesterfield, put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you, they satisfy. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfield's made with Accuray are A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. That's because Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making. Gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. That's because an Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the wonderful flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking pleasure. No hot spots, no hard draw. So the next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is A. Always milder. B, better tasting. C, cooler smoking. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you. They satisfy. It's 
Hey, it should have been here an hour ago, Mr. Dillon. It's already dark. That's often late, Chester. Why does it have to be late this time? Are you worried? Yes, sir. And so are you. Well, it's like putting your whole stake on one turn of the card. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. It made it. The stage made it. Yeah, the stage did, Chester. But there's no shotgun messenger. Oh, my golly, you're right. Where's Andy? Where's Andy, Jim? I don't know where he is. I ain't seen him since we got to Hayes. You mean he quit, Jim? I'd call it that. Well, did he tell you he was quitting? He told me nothing. He just disappeared. Serves me right for hiring him again. I got work to do. Yeah, I guess he figured he'd get as far as Hayes without you after him, and then him and Carrick could run from there. If... What are you looking at? That rider coming up the street, Chester. Leading that pack horse? Not a pack horse. There's a body tied across the saddle, and that's Andy leading it. I know you're right. Now what's he gone and done? I will ask him. Hello, Marshal. Hello, Andy. That's Carrick I got there, Marshal. You kill him? I killed him. No witnesses. No way to prove who drew first. Jim Buck told me you ran off up in Hayes City. Jim might have got shot if I hadn't. Oh? Carrick was going to hold up the stage again, Marshal, and I decided not to let him do it. But I figured if I tried to fight him while I was sitting up there next to Jim, it'd go bad. So you rode back to meet Carrick alone, huh? Yeah. I left the night we got to Hayes. I found him and told him I was through for good. He got scared and went for his gun. But, like I say, I can't prove it was self-defense. Maybe I shouldn't have come back. Nobody's going to believe an outlaw. Chester. Yes, sir? Give Andy a hand with Carrick's body. I got some work to do. Where are you going? I'm going to write to the law in Oklahoma Territory. I'm going to let them know they can withdraw that wanted circular on Carrick. But what about Andy and that robbery charge? After I tell him how he brought in Carrick and how hard he's trying to go straight, I think they won't be too hard on him. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. You know, on the frontier, there were all kinds Buffalo hunters, trail drivers, spoilers, saddle bums. And there were lawmen, good and bad. Well, our story next week concerns a lawman's death. Until then, good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Harry Bartell, Barney Phillips, and Lawrence Tobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty.
Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M. Superior taste and filter. Superior taste from richer tobaccos. Tastier, light and mild. Superior filter. It's white, pure white. Added to L&M tobaccos, this miracle tip actually improves your enjoyment. Look for the big red letters. Smoke L&M, America's best. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. Be sure and listen to another transcribed story of the Old West on Gunsmoke next week at this same time. Smoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made the modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Fine day, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Well, ain't it? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, sure, Chester. Well, doggone it, the wind ain't blowing, it ain't raining, nor hailing, nor snowing, nor freezing, nor nothing, and if that don't make for a fine day up here, then I'm going back to Texas where it does. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chester. I, I, uh, I was thinking about Andy Hill. Mm, Andy. Uh, we'll find out about him in a couple minutes. Uh... Look, uh, Chester, why don't you go over and see if the telegram's come yet, huh? I'll be waiting over there for you. Over where? Oh. <laughs> Miss Kitty. I'll be back directly. <laughs> Hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Fine day, isn't it? Yeah. You got something on your mind? Chester's gone over to see if that sheriff down in Oklahoma Territory sent me an answer yet. Oh, b- about Andy Hill? Yeah. Well, he's only wanted for robbery, Matt. I should think after you're telling him how he brought in a man wanted for murder, they'd be willing to go easy on him. Well, I hope so, Kitty. And 
Especially since he's settled down here and making a good name for himself. If they'll take my word for it. And the sheriff will have to take your word for it. <laughs> he's probably never even heard of me. Hello, Miss Kitty. Marshal. Hello, Andy. Andy. Heard anything from Oklahoma, Marshal? Uh, Chester's over at the telegraph office right now. Oh. Well, uh, I hope it's good news. Why don't you wait and find out, Andy? I'll find out soon enough, Miss Kitty. Right now, I got to shoe a couple of horses for Jim Buck. I promised I'd have it done by noon. Jim was telling me yesterday you're the best man he ever had. Oh, anybody can ride shotgun, Miss Kitty. All you do is sit there and keep your eyes open. No, it's more than that. He trusts you. It makes me feel good to hear that, Miss Kitty. Goodbye. Bye. You know where to find me, Marshal. Yeah, sure, Andy. If there were more men like him around Dodge, it might not be such a bad place to live. <laughs> then I'd be out of a job, Kitty. You could find something else to do. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Morning, Miss Kitty. Well, hello, Chester. Uh, here's the telegraph, Mr. Dillon. What's it say, Chester? Well, it's not... You better read it. Uh-huh. I'm sending Deputy Jack Harder it. Turn Andy Hill for trial. Signed, Bob Catlin, sheriff. Well, he puts it real short, doesn't he? Yeah. He must have some reason for not giving Andy no chance. I will find out when this jack hog gets here, Chester. You gonna put Andy in jail, Matt? No. I'm not even gonna tell him about this until I've talked to Hall. Andy's nice and gentle now, but he'll fight like a tiger anybody tries to arrest him. And he's some handy with a gun, too. Maybe he won't have to fight, Chester. Maybe I'll just send Jack Haw back home empty-handed. What if he's got a legal warrant for Andy? Well, there's going to be trouble, Kitty. One way or the other. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chester Fee. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making, gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily. Let's you enjoy all the flavor. And the Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking. Just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. Chester, will you please stop dusting my desk? Well, but look at the... Marshal Dillon? Yeah, come in. My name's Hall, Marshal, Jack Hall. Ah, uh, how are you? Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot, Hall. Huh? How do you do? We've been expecting you. Sheriff Catlin said he was going to send a telegram. Yeah, he did. You got Andy Hill locked up here? No, I haven't. No? I haven't seen a warrant for his arrest yet. Oh, I forgot. Here it is, Marshal. Signed by Sheriff Catlin himself. Uh huh. That's a mighty fancy signature he's got. Well, it looks legal. But, hey, wait a minute. What is it, Marshal? This is a warrant for the arrest of Andy Hill for murder. Didn't Sheriff Catlin explain? No, he didn't. And I guess he figured it'd be better if I did. Well, go ahead. Well, 
The sheriff got your letter about Andy, how he brought in that murderer and how he's become a good citizen up here. And I think he was willing to forget that little robbery charge against him. Why didn't he? A man was killed just before Andy left Oklahoma Territory, Marshal. There was three witnesses to it, but we didn't know that until they decided to talk just the other day. And they say it was Andy who did the killing? That's right. Tried to hold up a saloon and killed the bartender. How come these witnesses waited so long? He was afraid. They thought Andy'd kill them for talking before we could catch him. Well, I guess they got to feeling guilty about it. I see. Marshal, I, I think I know how you feel. You've come to like Andy. Most everybody does until they really get to know him. The boy's a liar to begin with, a real clever one. He can usually talk his way out of anything, just like his brother. His brother? His brother murdered a man, too, Marshal, about a year ago. Oh, I see. They're both liars and they're both killers, Marshal. Don't feel bad about being taken in by Andy. They tell me just about everybody has been one time or another. They tell you? I don't know him myself. I only been deputy down there for the last couple of months. But I know a lot about Andy. Uh-huh. When do you want to start back, Hawk? Huh? I was thinking of taking the stage tomorrow morning. You stand at the Dodge House? Yes, I am. All right, come by in the morning. I'll have Andy here. Your town, Marshal. I'll do whatever you say. He'll be here in the morning. Unless he tries to shoot me. It's kind of hard to believe, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. I ain't got no reason to be lying, I guess. No. And after all you've done for Andy, and he's nothing but a common killer. There he is, working over there at the handle. Uh, Chester, hmm? you wait outside here, huh? I may have trouble with him. All right, sir. What are you doing here, Marshal? Sheriff Catlin sent a deputy to take you back to Oklahoma Territory, Andy. What? They want you for the murder of that bartender. Bartender? What are you talking about? You might as well admit it, Andy. The three witnesses have already talked. Uh, I don't know what this is all about, Marshal, but I didn't kill nobody. They got me mixed up with my brother. I heard about him. This deputy tell you? Yeah. What's his name? Jack Hall. I never heard of him. He's got a warrant for your arrest, and he's signed and legal. There's something wrong about this. I don't like it. And there's no reason why you should. Marshal, uh, my brother killed a man down there, name of Bob Butler. I never knew him. I never even seen him. But this butler had a cousin, and I heard he swore he'd kill one of us hills for it, and he wasn't particular which one. That's got nothing to do with this, Andy. How do I know this Jack Hall ain't really Bob Butler's cousin? He could shoot me easy before we ever got back there. It's no use, Andy. I had a wire from the sheriff, and Hall's got a warrant signed by him now. You give me your gun. I thought she was my friend. I'm a lawman, Andy. Now, don't make me kill you. You would, wouldn't you? I don't want to. All right. Take my gun. But you're the same as killing me, Marshal. Good morning, Chester. Andy. Good morning, Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon, Andy just won't say nothing. Not a word. Well, maybe that shotgun you're holding on him's got something to do with it. 
Well, I didn't want him to get away just because I let him out of his cell. He won't get away. Morning, Marshal. Chester. Ah, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Hall. Well, this the prisoner? Mm-hmm, that's him. Andy Hill. Heard a lot about you, Andy. Feel like I know you real well. He's not talking much, Hall. Huh? No? Well, he'll talk at his trial. If there is a trial. What do you mean? Of course there'll be a trial. Will there? Andy thinks maybe you're going to shoot him on the way back, huh? Why would I want to shoot him? He thinks your name might be Butler. Butler? Well, that's the man Andy's brother killed. He says Butler had a cousin. Uh, this cousin swore he'd get one of the Hill boys for it. Either one. It's true, Marshal. I've heard it myself, but... Well, there's something Andy doesn't know. Butler's cousin was killed in a saloon brawl about a month ago. I was with Sheriff Catlin when he arrested the man who killed him. Well, there you are, Andy. You see, you've got nothing to worry about. You'll get a trial. You'll get a fair trial. Right now, we better get going. Stage leaves in half an hour. You gonna handcuff me? No. Not here, not in Dodge. I don't want to cause you no embarrassment, Andy. I'm going to take you back, but I'm going to make it as easy on you as I can. There. You see, Andy? Oh, ain't he a nice fellow? Let's go. Goodbye, Marshal. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Goodbye, Chester. Goodbye, Mr. Haw. Uh, goodbye, Andy. Marshal? Yeah, Andy. I made a mistake. Oh? I should have fought it out with you when I had a chance. Smile with Chesterfield. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. B, better tasting. C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making. Gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An accurate Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without accurate. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots, no hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. Chester. Uh, morning, Mr. Dillon. You at your breakfast yet? Oh, that's where I'm headed right now. Uh, well, if you'll stop in at the Dodge house with me for a minute, I'll go with you. Okay, fine. What, uh, what's going on at the Dodge house? Well, a fellow who room there borrowed some money off me last night. He said he'd pay it back this morning. Ah, oh, I see. It oughtn't to take but a minute, Mr. Dillon. He said he'd have it waiting for me. He's going to leave it with the clerk here. Go ahead. Oh, morning, Marshal. Chester. Good morning, Avery. Avery. Ah, what can I do for you, huh? Uh, did Sam Adams leave some money here for me? Money? Oh, no. No? Well, where's he at? Well, he paid his bill and left about an hour ago, Chester. He left? Where'd he go to? I don't know. He got on his horse and rode out of town. Yeah, but now he, he couldn't. He owed me some money. I don't even know where he's from. Sorry, I can't help you, Chester. Now, well, wait a minute, now, Chester. Right? Don't get excited. Let's take a look at the register here. It ought to say where he's from. Well, they don't always put that down, Marshal. Most of them just sign their names. Well, you know? we'll take a look anyway. Yeah, you're right. Most of them do just sign their names. Yeah, sure. Uh, 
Lieutenant Jack Hall. Jack Hall. What's the matter, Mr. Dillon? Hall's signature, Chester. Well, certainly Mr. Hall stayed here, but uh, he's gone now, Marshal. No, he hasn't. That stage is just pulling out now. Uh, Where are you going, Mr. Dillon? Talk to one of your passengers, Jim. Sure, I'll wait. Well, what is it, Marshal? What'd you stop us for? I got something to tell you, Hawk. Get down. Yeah. Okay. You too, Andy. Come on down here. Sure. What do you want him for, Marshal? What's this all about? Here, stay in here, Jim. You can get moving now. No, you wait. Get moving, I said, Jim. <laughs> Now, what do you think you're doing, Marshal? Now, why'd you do that? I said I had something to tell you, huh? You didn't have to send the stage off. You're not going anywhere. What are you talking about? I just saw your signature on the register over at the Dodge House. My signature? It's a mighty fancy one, huh? Just like Sheriff Catlin's on that warrant you showed me. What are you driving at, Marshal? Sheriff Catlin didn't sign that warrant. You did. You're smart, Marshal. Let's see if you're as fast with your gun as you are with your head. Stop, Andy! You hit, Andy? I'm all right, Marshal. You missed me. Well, he's dead, Andy. He'd have killed me if you hadn't shot him, Marshal. Yeah, he was a real feuding man. Your brother killed his cousin, and he was willing to die right here if he could only take you with him. Yeah. And he is probably a deputy, though. That's how he got hold of my letter to Sheriff Catlin. Sure. Catlin probably never saw your letter. Yeah. Well, Andy... Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to write him again. <laughs> and this time, I don't think you're going to have any trouble. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. Smoke much milder. Burn evenly. B, better tasting. Draw more easily. You enjoy more flavor. C, cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is always milder, better tasting, Cooler smoking. You know, a man could lose his life on the frontier and not create much stir. But if he made a new one for himself, well, he had the respect of everyone. So, uh, be with us next week. Until then, good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Vic Perrin, and Joseph Kearns. Harley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join the Arthritis and Rheumatism Foundation in its efforts to solve the mysteries of these painful and crippling diseases. Send your contribution to Arthritis in care of your local postmaster.
Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M. Superior taste and filter. Superior taste from richer tobaccos. Tastier, light and mild. Superior filter. It's white, pure white. Added to L&M tobaccos, this miracle tip actually improves your enjoyment. Look for the big red letters. Smoke L&M, America's best. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. Be sure and listen to another transcribed story of the Old West on Gunsmoke. Next week, at this same time. Smoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made the modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Is there something wrong, Chester? Oh, there's going to be a fight up there by the stage office. You better come, Mr. Dillon. All right, what's the trouble? They're around back of the stage. You can't see them from here. Oh, who is it? There's a couple passengers. One's a great big man with red hair, about the biggest man i ever seen. Who's the other one? Well, I don't know, but he's kind of old and real thin and poor looking, like he'd been rode half to death. Oh, that red-headed fellow will ruin him, Mr. Dillon. The size of a man doesn't matter much to a six-gun, Chester. But they ain't armed. Neither one of them's carrying no gun. Ah, then they won't get into much trouble. Oh, wait till you see him. That big one. He's got hands like shovels, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I can see him now. Oh, look how he's slapping that poor little fellow. If he really hit him, he'd kill him. Oh, stand there. Get your hands up. How can I beat a man who won't fight him? All right, move back, everybody. Let me prove you. All right, hold it, mister. That's enough. What are you saying that's enough? He ain't by far enough. This man isn't even fighting you. 
I'm trying to make him fight, ain't I? Why should he fight? Because we come in on that stagecoach together. And he sat there the whole eight hours and stared at the floor. And never said a word. Like it drove me crazy. I think it did drive you crazy. He isn't going to hurt you anymore, mister. But you better get out of here. I don't care what he does. You fight him, mister. You'll break him up a little. I'll watch. Nobody's going to touch him. Are you scared of this old crow? I said leave him alone. You said? You're talking to Sam Keeler, mister. I'm a bear cat. People do what I say. You're talking to a United States marshal. A marshal? Well, now. How come you're not wearing a gun, Keeler? Man's got to wear a gun. Most men do. My hands do my fighting. And you're big enough to whip most any man alive, aren't you? I sure am. But you go unarmed so nobody can use his gun against you. He'd be held up for murder if he did, wouldn't he? Well, you figured yourself a nice big advantage, Keeler. But you're a coward. What? You're a coward! And I'd still be a fool to go up against you barehanded. You don't dare use that gun. You said so yourself. There are lots of ways to use a gun, Keeler. Marshal, I'm going to knock your head into a peak. And then I'm going to knock the peak off. Right now. No! Oh. <laughs> He dropped like a pole axe, dear. You killed a man because of me. I haven't killed him. But he's going to be kind of touchy when he comes to, and you better get out of sight. Men are always fighting, hating each other. Who are you, mister? My name is Seth Tandy, Marshal. Oh, well, Tandy, if you don't like men fighting, Dodge is no town for you. Chester. Yes, sir. Throw some water on Keeler, and if he wants more fight, tell him I'll be in my office. Okay, Mr. Dillon. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chester Field. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making, gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking. Just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. Keeler come too, all right, Mr. Dillon. You didn't hurt him so very bad. And I haven't been worrying about it, Chester. No, sir. But it's been two hours. It's after dark. He couldn't have been unconscious all this time. No, sir, he wasn't. Uh, see, I stopped off to the town of Soil. I got me my winter haircut. No. Oh, you should have seen Keeler when he come to. My goodness, he is mad. It wasn't getting buffaloed so much as everybody laughing at him. Seemed like he just can't stand that. He looked like he was about to go wild. Well, there'll be more trouble from him. Yes, sir. It's like this friend of his that showed up after the fight, a fellow called Humbert. He just couldn't believe it when he seen Keeler laying there. This Humbert, he said somebody would get killed for it, sure. Uh Uh-huh. 
Uh, Chester, I'm going to go down to the Long Branch and have a drink. Oh, I'll wow. walk part way with you. Okay. What happened to that Seth Tandy? I don't know. He left. But there's something wrong with him, Mr. Dillon. Did you notice the funny look on him? Well, he's got eyes like a blind horse. What kind of man is he? All I know is he's the kind that lets himself get knocked around and doesn't seem to care one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, you want a drink? Uh, no, sir, I thank you. I got business. Uh, but you tell Miss Kitty hello, huh? Yeah, sure. Evening, Matt. Uh, Kitty. Uh, is this glass yours? One of the girls brought it over, but she's busy now. That beer pitcher's hers, too. Yeah. Well, I'll leave some money with you and you can give it to her. All right. They say the Santa Fe's going to start laying track of west of here soon. Yeah. More railroad, more people, more trouble. Uh, I'm sorry, Kitty. I'm in a poor mood. Uh huh. Hang up your gun, Matt. Yeah? And do what? I'm too lazy to work for a living. Uh, I suppose keeping the peace around here isn't work. And then there's getting shot. Uh, it's been a long time since anybody put a bullet in me, Kitty. Just because you're learning to duck. <laughs> you know, up in Canada, they got a bird called a loon. And they claim that these loons really can duck a bullet. <laughs> Why don't you go up there and study them a while? See how they do it. Yeah. Might be a good idea. Yeah. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. What's the trouble, Chester? Uh, that fellow Tandy, Seth Tandy. What about him? Well, some fellas seen him stumble out of the alley just now. They took him up to docks. What? He was all beat up. Oh, somebody had really worked on him. Who? Well, I don't know. Nobody's seen it happen. All right, let's get up to docks, Chester. We'll see you later, Kitty. Sure, man. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, Matt. Chester. Well, how's Tandy, Doc? Well, there's nothing broken that I can find, but he's sure colored up. He's sitting in the back room there if you want to see him. Mm-hmm. How'd he say who did it? Oh, he hasn't said a word about anything so far. Maybe you can get him to talk. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's stand back, Chester. Well, okay, Doc. How do you feel, Tandy? Uh, Tandy, I want to know who did this. I'm sure it was Sam Keeler, but I want to hear it from you. No, Marshal. There's been enough violence. The next time he might kill you, Tandy. It doesn't matter. What? It's not important. Not no more. What's your trouble, Tandy? Maybe I can help you. Nobody can help me, Marshal. When a man loses faith in his God, he loses everything. I've lost my faith. I no longer believe. I, uh... You're a preacher? I was a preacher. Thirty years. Now, what'd you come to Dodge for? Oh, no reason except get away from people that knew me before. I didn't want them to see me. Maybe start them doubting, too. I've got nothing left, Marshal. It doesn't matter what happens to me now. Uh, Now, Doc. I heard him. Well, tell him something. I don't know what to tell him. He's a preacher who doesn't believe in God anymore. Oh, Matt, I'm an ignorant frontier doctor. Sure, I can dig bullets out of people. I can sew them up, too. I can shove their bones back into place. But nobody ever taught me how to patch up a preacher who's lost his religion. Don't trouble yourselves about me, gentlemen. I'll be moving on. No. Not tonight, you won't. Now, you can do what you want tomorrow, but tonight either you or Sam Keeler's going to sleep in jail. Jail. I'm not going to let Keeler catch you again tonight. And if you won't say it was him, I can't arrest him. 
Oh. Well, did he do it? Marshal, I'll sleep in your jail. Maybe Seth Tandy didn't care what happened to himself. But he sure went out of his way to keep other people from having any trouble. If I'd have put Sam Keeler in jail that night, that'd have been quite a battle. And Tandy knew it. So we took him downstairs. And after we found him something to eat, we gave him a blanket and locked him in a cell where he'd be safe. Chester slept in the office with a shotgun by his bed. And after looking the town over for a couple of hours, I went to my room. It was just after daylight when I was awakened. Dylan! What? Wake up, Mr. Dillon! What? Mr. Dillon! Mr. Oh, Dillon! Chester, stop the racket and come on in. The door's unlocked. Oh. What time is it, Chester? What are you doing here? It's Seth Tandy. He's gone, Mr. Dillon. What? Yes, sir, I went out to get us some breakfast, and he didn't feel like going, so I unlocked his cell and left him sitting there in the office, and when I got back, he was gone. Here, I found this note stuck on the door. Marshal, if you want to see Seth Tandy alive, come to Turkey Bend at noon, alone and unarmed. It ain't signed. No, it doesn't have to be. Sam Keeler, huh? Yeah. What are you going to do? Do what it says, I guess. But you can't go up there alone, not wearing no gun, Mr. Dillon. He'll kill you. That Sam Keeler could kill anybody. And if I doubt what'll happen to Tandy? He don't care what happens to him. He said so himself. You'd be risking your life for a man who don't even care about living. Chester, go to the stable and get my horse while I'm dressing, will you? Then you're going to do it? And take the rifle boot off my saddle. I won't be needing it this time. Smile with Chesterfield. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. B, better tasting. C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making. Gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An accurate Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without accurate. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots, no hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. Maybe Chester was right. Maybe it didn't make sense. But still, I had to do it. It was about 20 miles upriver to Turkey Bend, and I got there about noon. I waited around for a while, and then Keeler's friend Humbert rode up. He was unarmed, too. He didn't say anything. He just looked me over carefully before he motioned me to ride upstream ahead of him. About a half hour later, we reached their camp. Keeler was there and Seth Tandy, sitting on a small pile of cottonwood logs, staring blankly at the fire. We got on and went up to him. He was there at noon, Keeler, real prompt. Marshal does things right, don't you, Marshal? Yeah, sometimes. Well, you done this right, you come alone and you ain't armed. You done your part... And I done mine, there's your friend Tandy. And he's still alive. What do you want, Keeler? I'll tell you, Marshal. You 
You had everybody laughing at me back in Dodge. I don't like that. I can't stand people laughing at me. What's that got to do with Seth Tandy? Started over him, and it's going to finish over him. What do you mean? I'm going to beat him to death, Marshal. And you're going to stand there and watch me do it. Now, wait a minute. And, and when there's nothing left of him, I'm going to go to work on you. No. You shut up, Tandy. I don't care what happens to me, but the marshal came risking his life. He did for sure, Tandy. Wait a minute, Keeler. Now, what do you want, Humber? You told me you were going to have a little fun. You didn't say nothing about killing people. Why? Well, I don't like this. I, I don't want no part of it. What's the matter with you, Humbert? I, I don't hold with killing people. I, I don't want to end up on a rope. You don't like it, huh? Now, don't you start nothing with me. Now, you leave me alone. I'll learn you to go against me. No! no. no. You are the Lord. We're friends! You're I didn't mean nothing. Get out of my way, Tanny. I want one of those vlogs. No. Put your head on me. Killer. I'll run. Killer. Killer. You framed him, Marshal. You just saved my life on that log. Yeah. Your life and Tandy's and probably mine. I got a gun over here in my blanket, Marshal. I'd give it to you before it comes to. Okay. Marshal. Yeah, what, Tandy? You came here knowing you might be killed. Well, there's always a chance of that. But you came, willing to sacrifice your life to save mine. And knowing mine's worthless. You listen to me. No man's life is worthless, Tandy. Whether he thinks so or not. I can see that now. Well, you riding on from here? Oh, no. No, Marshal. I'm going back. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I praise the Lord. with our star, William Conrad. Put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. Smoke much milder. Burn evenly. B, better tasting. Draw more easily. You enjoy more flavor. C, cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfields. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. You know, on the frontier, a man was hanged if he stole a horse. But our story next week's about a man who stole thousands, and he went free. Well, until then, good night. <laughs> Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Joe Cranston, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty.
Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M. Superior taste and filter. Superior taste from richer tobaccos. Tastier, light and mild. Superior filter. It's white, pure white. Added to L&M tobaccos, this miracle tip actually improves your enjoyment. Look for the big red letters. Smoke L&M, America's best. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. Smoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made the modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Good boy. Now hold it. No need drawing down on me, boy. I'm just a harmless traveler like yourself. How in blazes did you sneak up on me so quiet? Now, that ain't a friendly way to greet a guest. I'll be friendly to anybody who comes into my camp with fair warning and guns holstered. The bacon's burning. Well, you keep your hands where I can see them. Are you going to turn away a hungry traveler? If you're traveling, where's your outfit? Where's your horse? Over in the next gully there. You alone? You don't see nobody else. You ain't the type to ride the plains alone. You calling me a liar, son? Your bacon is getting cold. All right. Here. Bread's right there. Use your own knife. Thank you kindly. Oh, if I ain't the type to ride alone... What type am I? You look like a storekeeper or 
gambler, maybe, traveling by request. <laughs> you don't fear to say what you think, eh, boy? Ah, say now, this looks right good. Mm -hmm. Dip in the pan grease if you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait. Wait. Some bay horse you got hobbled out there. You wouldn't consider selling. No. Mm -hmm. Didn't think so. Only, looks like he might be coming down with some kind of hoof trouble. Huh? Mm. The way he holds his off rear. What do you mean? Yeah. Why, you're crazy. I don't see nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Let that be a lesson, boy. Don't never trust a stranger. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chester B. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making, gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily. Let's you enjoy all the flavor. And the Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. Send word up to your office. Oh, what about? Dutch George isn't Tom. That's of course right there at the bay. Left it with me. Wants new shoes all around. Where is he now, Moss? Up to the Long Branch, most likely. Thought you ought to know. Is he still wanted? No, that jury in Ellsworth acquitted him. He's free. Blamed if I can understand him. Everybody in the state knows he's the biggest horse thief west of the Mississippi. Well, with operations as big as Dutch's, it's hard to prove. That's a good-looking horse he's got there. It sure is. Wonder who it really belongs to. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Oh, thanks, Moss. <laughs> Man, I'm glad you're here. Look at him. All clustered around like he was a governor or something. Yeah. Some poor man steals one horse, they string him to a tree. He steals a thousand to make him a hero. Well, he'll get caught too sooner or later, Kitty. I'll be back in a minute. Hello, Dutch. Hello, Matt. Have a drink? Just for old time's sake? Now, right, I'll drink to that. Pour it, Sandy. Right, I should. To old times. Ah. Yeah, old times were all right, weren't they, man? Now yeah, what I can remember of them. Yeah, yeah. It was a long time ago. You were just a kid. <laughs> Some kid. Always pestering me with questions. Bound to learn every trick I knew. Be just like me. Yeah. Yeah, well, let that be a lesson to you. It was, Dutch. Well, then I did you a favor. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. But you know, my job kind of puts us on opposite sides of the street now, Dutch. Oh, I don't see why. I've got no trouble with the law. I'm a legitimate businessman. I hope so, Dutch, because if your business gets illegitimate around here, I'll come after you. In spite of old times? 
Yeah, I expect you would, and you would be a rough enemy, too. Have another drink? No, no, thanks. Matt, I didn't know you knew Dutch George. Well, it was a long time ago, Kitty. I only knew him for a few months until the sheriff caught up with him. Hmm. That must have been a shock for you. Well, like he said, it was a good lesson. You know, the funny part of it is, Kitty, he's not really a bad man at all. Huh? He learned to be a horse thief back in the days when it was a game every frontiersman played with the Indians. Yeah, he just never gave it up. Well, I just hope when he does get caught, it doesn't have to be you, does it? Yeah. I hope not, too, Kitty. <laughs> Come in. Howdy, Marshal. Uh, what can I do for you, son? My name's Jimmy McQueen. I got robbed. Oh, where was this? East of Dodge, maybe 20 miles, night before last. I was just cooking my grub when this stranger comes up real quiet. It seemed harmless, but he slugged me when I wasn't looking. What did he look like? Tall, maybe six feet, strong looking, with a gray mustache and a arrow scar by the temple. Uh-huh. What'd you lose, son? Thirty dollars, but that's not important. My horse is. He was a good one, Marshal, and I aim to find him and get him back. A bay with a white blaze on his forehead? That's right. You seen him? Let's go down to Moss Grimmick's stable. Your horse may still be there. <laughs> He come and took the horse right after I finished shooting him. I heard he left town afore dark last night. And we'll go after him. Now, now look, Marshal, you don't need to bother. You just loan me a horse and I'll find him. You know the man you're after, Jimmy? No matter none to me. It's Dutch George. Well, I still got to get my horse back. You leave that to me. I'll take you along to identify the horse, but that's all, you understand? I don't know why you're so particular, Marshal. The man's only a horse thief. But a very particular horse thief. And for the first time, we might have some real evidence against him. I don't want you ruining it. All right, Marshal, whatever you say. Uh, Moss, give me Chester's horse, too. We'll pick him up on the way. Now, let's pull up here a second. Yeah, here's where he met his men with the herd. You see the ground's all trampled? My, there must be a couple hundred here. Yeah, maybe more. I guess I don't rightly understand this Dutch George's way of horse thieving. He steals by the herd, Jimmy, from ranches or Indians. Well, where does he take them to? West, over into the line into Colorado. There he meets another bunch of his men driving a herd stolen from Colorado territory. And they exchange the horses, sell Colorado horses in Kansas, Kansas horses in Colorado. This fellow may be smarter than I thought. And tougher, too. Well, I think maybe we better camp here tonight. They're at least two hours ahead of us. That would put them over on Crooked Creek, probably at the Forks. Why don't we go on? Come up on them in the dark. Now, we can do the same thing by starting early, a couple of hours before dawn. And our horses need the rest. Not to mention me. I'm sure we'll be happy to get down. You notice all the Cheyenne trail sign, Marshal? Well, Some? Some. I've been seeing it all day. This territory's thick with Cheyenne. They must be camped close, too. How do you know so much about Cheyenne, son? Well, I was raised with him, Marshal. My pa worked at the Cheyenne Agency at Darlington. Maybe I underestimated you, Jimmy. Maybe you're not as green as you look. I told you I could handle this myself, Marshal, but you wouldn't listen. That's just as well. If you'll take care of the horses, Chester and I'll rustle up some wood for a fire. Sure, Marshal. There's a likely snag Mr. Dillon right over there. Okay, Chester, let's go see if we can carry it. Good what? and dry, it'll be... Mr. Dillon! What? Why, that little whippersnap. He, he's riding on. Yeah, I sure did underestimate him. What do you expect he's up to? He's probably headed for Crooked Creek, wants to face Dutch George alone. Then he's going to get hurt. Well, come on, we'll try to catch him before it's too late. <laughs> Well, 
watch their camp, Chester. On the edge of the bluff there. Yeah, but where's the horses? Yeah, down on the creek bottom, out of sight, probably. I count four men, three asleep and one on guard. Reckon that's all? Well, except for those riding night guard on the herd, yeah. I don't see the kid no horse. No. Maybe he's around somewhere in the dark. What are we going to do? Um, uh, you stay here. Now, when I get up by that big tree there, you make some noise, but just enough to draw the guard out, okay? All right, sir. All right. a man with my gun on his back, and I'm coming in. Now you throw all your guns on the ground beside the fire, do you hear me? I hear you, Matt. All right, Chester, let's go. You too, Hack. All right, everybody, rest easy. Well, Matt, you got more nerve than I thought. Where's the kid, Dutch? What kid? The boy you stole the bay horse from. Well, I left him for all I know. You haven't seen him tonight? Around here? Is he on the trail, too? He's probably out there in the dark right now, drawing a bead on you. You sure you didn't plan it this way, Matt? It could save you a lot of trouble. You'll stand trial, Dutch, if I have my way. Matt, I don't want to see you get hurt. But I don't want to go to jail, either. Well, you'll have to decide that, Dutch. What about old times' sake? I decided about old times before I became a lawman. I see. Mr. Dillon, there's something going on down there in the creek bottom. That's a stampede. Somebody's stampeding the horses. Matt, is this some of your doing? Use your head. Why would I want to stampede them? I need them for evidence. We've got to do something. Stay still. You got on that bluff and you'll be trampled to death. Up here, maybe we're safe. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making, gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. to death just like the other one. Well, Dutch, your night herders are dead, your horses are gone. Looks like the Indians have put you out of business this trip. Yeah. <laughs> but you haven't got any evidence against me now. Even if you do find them horses, it'll be the Indians. Not Dutch George has them. Maybe you can arrest them. You know something, Dutch? 
In a way, I'm glad. I'd rather it was somebody else finally put you behind bars. Nobody's going to do that. Yes, they will, Dutch, sooner or later. Unless I can talk you out of this business. Now, Matt, what else would I ever do? Well, I don't know. Well, you got a long walk ahead of you. Oh, don't worry about us. We'll, we'll find some horses somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you will. Well, come on, we'll bury these men. And then Chester and I'll head back to Dodge. Mr. Dillon, Dodge looks just the same. You didn't expect it to change much in three days, did you, Chester? Oh, no. What I mean is it looks good. Chester, hmm? look up ahead there, in front of the office. Well, where... that's Jimmy McQueen's bay horse. Yeah. Howdy, Marshal. Hello, Jimmy. I just brought your horse back, Marshal. There at the hitch rail. Much obliged. You're welcome. Well, is that all you've got to say, Jimmy? Where in the world did you go to? Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. But I kind of had an idea I didn't think you'd cotton to, so I just left. Well, I guess your idea paid off. You got your horse back. Yeah. Funny thing, I found him running loose out on the prairie. Very lucky, I guess. Ah, uh, Jimmy. What, Marshal? I know you and your Cheyenne friends ran off those horses. And two men died. man gets trampled in a stampede, that's an accident, ain't it, Marshal? Especially if he stole the horses to start with. Yeah, I guess it is an accident, Jimmy. So long, Marshal. Mr. Dillon, that boy is sure tricky. I know, Chester. Yeah, let it be a lesson to us. How? Never trust a stranger. With our star, William Conrad. Put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. Smoke much milder. Burn evenly. B, better tasting. Draw more easily. You enjoy more flavor. C, cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfields. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. You know, a frontier peace officer was always ready to face someone who wanted to kill him. But on our next gun smoke, a marshal faces someone who wants to be killed. Well, until then, good night. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Vic Perrin, and Jim Nusser. Farley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty.
Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M. Superior taste and filter. Superior taste from richer tobaccos. Tastier, light, and mild. Superior filter. It's white, pure white. Added to L&M tobaccos, this miracle tip actually improves your enjoyment. Look for the big red letters. Smoke L&M, America's best. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. now, Mr. Dillon. What are you doing anyway? I'm nailing up a picture. Here, I'll show it to you. Ain't that a beautiful thing, Mr. Dillon? Uh, uh, it's got an awful lot of color, yeah, but what is it? Why, that's William Henry Harrison whipping them Indians at tip of canoe. Oh. Well, this is the first time I knew he ever did it by himself. Well, now, what do you know? <laughs> I never noticed that. <laughs> but it sure is pretty, though, ain't it? Marshal Dillon? I right, come in, ma'am. So you're Matt Dillon. Uh, yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? You can call me Amy, for one thing. My name's Amy Slater. All right, Amy. I'm 50 years old and I look 60. The prairie done that. 
prairie and some other things, Marshal. Well, where are you from, Amy? I've been living in Wichita the last year. And I heard you were here, so I took the Santa Fe Railroad and I come to Dodge. Oh? Well, why'd you want to see me? I've been waiting a long time to see you. I've been living for it. But I'm about through living. What? I come here to die, Marshal. Oh, well, if you're sick, maybe Doc Adams can help you. I ain't sick. Well, then why are you talking about dying? I've only got enough money to last me about two days, Marshal. Well, if it's money you need, maybe I can help. Oh, you're going to help me. But not that way. Well, how? You're going to kill me, Marshal. What? I said you're going to kill me. Now, Amy, wait. I've been waiting, Marshal. A long time. Smile with Chesterfield. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. B, better tasting. C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making. Gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the flavor. And the Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots, no hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. The prairie does different things to different people. Some it gives knowledge to and strength. Others it breaks and leaves lost and twisted and wandering. Amy Slater was one of the lost. I let her go without trying to reason with her. I thought in a day or so I'd find her and buy her a ticket back to Wichita and that'd be the end of it. But it didn't work out that way. She found me first. It was the next morning, just before noon. Chester and I were crossing the plaza when I saw her standing about 30 yards away, holding a rifle. What's she up to, Mr. Dillon? She's aiming that rifle at me, Chester. You better get out of the way. She's crazy. Shoot her, Mr. Dillon. She'll kill you. I can't shoot a woman, Chester. Come back, Mr. Dillon. Next chapter will go through your heart, Marshal. I won't do you any good, Amy. I mean it. I'm not going to draw, Amy. You afraid to fight? Give me that rifle. All right. Take it. I will. You're afraid. You're a coward. Why did you try to make me shoot you, Amy? What's this all about? You wouldn't fight. You weren't trying to kill me. How do you know I wasn't? You were shooting close. You were trying to make me draw. I'll destroy you yet, Marshal. By making me shoot a woman, is that it? Yeah, that'd be the end of me as a lawman, wouldn't it? It'd be the end of you as any kind of man. You must hate me an awful lot if you're willing to die for it. Why, Amy? What have I done to you? Amy? 
Ain't you going to arrest her, Mr. Dillon? You're just going to let her walk off like that? Arrest her, I wouldn't do any good, Chester. After what she done? It didn't work, Chester. She's licked now. And I feel kind of sorry for her. This is really going to drive her crazy. <laughs> Look at the men lined up at that bar, Mr. Dillon. My, I wish I owned this saloon. Ah, cheap whiskey at fancy prices is always a good business, Chester. Well, I ain't getting none of my money. Oh, what did you come in here for? To play a little pharaoh. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yes, sir. I ain't squandering a nickel at that bar. Not me. <laughs> well, good luck, Chester. Thank you. Evening, Ma. How are you, Kitty? Sit down. Thank you. That looks like a busy night. <laughs> It'll get worse. Wait till some of those boys really get a skin for. Well, I hope they play gentle. I've been shot at once today. I heard about that. Some old woman with a rifle. Yeah. Amy Slater. What's she after you for? I man? have many idea, Kitty. She feels pretty strong about it. I guess she does. Anyway, her plan didn't work, so maybe that's the last I'll hear of her. <laughs> you don't give women enough credit, Matt. She'll think of something else. Well, I hope not. Why don't you throw her in jail? Oh, I'd look fine throwing an old woman in jail, wouldn't I? Especially one that's after me. You got a right to. Besides, when a woman gets to hating somebody, it's usually worse than when a man does. Women don't do things by halves. With them, it's all or nothing. Well, all I know about women is that uh, some of them are pretty and some aren't. You're lying. But I won't argue with you. <laughs> Good. Marshal Dillon. I'm at... Yeah, it's Amy. And she's got a six gun. Stand up, Marshal. You better get out of the way, Kitty. Yeah, you better. Step out here, Marshal. What are you up to now, Amy? I want to show you how I can handle a six-gun. I want to show you what I can do with it. Throw the gun down, Amy. Not till I'm through with it. You can't fool me this time, Marshal. Throw it down, Amy. No. You shot me. You shot me. <laughs> Is she, Doc? Oh, she's about the same. She's asleep now. No. You scared her half to death, man. Well, I had to shoot that gun out of her hand, Doc, another second, and she'd have killed me. Yeah, I guess she really was after you this time, wasn't she? What I don't understand is a woman brave enough to go gunning for a man fainting like well, that. Well, she's got a fever, Matt. She's not well. Oh? But what she's really suffering from is hysteria. There just isn't much I can do for that. Well, she can't go on like this. No, I suppose not. She'd probably be all right if she got over this business with you. Well, she won't even say why she's after me, Doc. No, she won't. What are you going to do with her? You can't keep her here. Well, I can't throw her out in the street. And you told me she doesn't have any money. Yeah. Uh, Doc, I got an idea. Yeah? Well, what's that? You know Ma Smiley? Oh, of course I know Ma. She's been doing my laundry for years. Oh, she lives alone. Maybe, maybe she'd like company. Amy could help her with the work, huh? Amy shouldn't do any work at all for a couple of weeks, Matt. Then I'll pay for her room and board. You'll pay for her room? So you're being awful good to a woman who just tried to kill you. Oh, I feel sorry for her, Doc. Oh. Maybe Amy won't like the idea of you helping her. Now, don't you tell her. You Tell her you're doing it, huh? Mm. All right. Look, why don't you go see Ma right now, and I'll, I'll stay out of it. All right, I'll go then. Oh, 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 but there's one thing that you ought to keep in mind, Matt. Oh, what? Just because she didn't make it tonight doesn't mean Amy won't try to kill you again. Friends, 
this year, this easy way. Give Chesterfields this year, so bright and gay. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfields, they satisfy. This Christmas, give everyone Chesterfields. Chesterfields are easy to give because they come ready to give in a bright red special holiday carton that's wrapped in its own colorful Christmas ribbon. Everyone enjoys Chesterfield's smoother, cooler smoking pleasure. So, to all your friends this year, say, Merry Christmas with cartons of Chesterfields. No wrapping, no tying. They're easy to give because they come ready to give. Chesterfields, in the bright red special holiday carton. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfields, they satisfy. Doc talked to Ma Smiley that night, and the next day Amy moved in with her. I didn't have to worry about any trouble for a while. Doc ordered her to bed, and he saw to it that she stayed there. That she never talked. She never told anybody why she was after me. A couple of weeks passed before Doc reported she was up and about again, and that she'd soon be able to go to work. At least I hoped it was work she'd be doing, not gunning for me. A few days later, I found out... Chester and I were sitting in the office after dinner. Uh, Mr. Dillon, you remember that fellow Jeremy Cracker who used to live around here? Yeah, it'd be hard to forget him, Chester. I was thinking about the time he run a rusty nail into his foot. <laughs> remember how he went over to the Texas Trail and bought himself two pints of raw whiskey and, and he went outside and filled his shoe with one pint and himself with the other and slopped around town that way for days till he got cured? <laughs> Why, my gracious, he like... He... Uh, hello, Amy. Hello, Marshal. Chester. Well, hello. It's all right, Marshal. I ain't got a gun. Uh, sit down, Amy. Uh, here, here. Here's your chair. Thank you. How are you feeling? Pretty good, Marshal. But I'm going to feel a lot better when I tell you what I come for. Oh? I'll say it's simple, Marshal. I've been wrong. Hating you the way I have done me more harm than you. I wanted to ruin you, but it's near ruined me instead. You understand? Well, what's changed your mind, Amy? Doc. Doc? He took it on himself to tell me. Figured I ought to know. Told me how you've been paying for my keep with Ma Smiley, and after all I tried to do to you... Well, you needed help, Amy. I, I don't bear grudges. I do. At least I have, till now. I want to pay you back, Marshal. Now, Amy, there's no need to repay me anything. I've got to, for my own sake, I've got to. But I don't mean money. I've got no money. Well, what do you mean? Jim Band had a partner, Marshal. Jim Band? Dakota Territory, you remember. Oh, yeah, a long time ago. Jim Band tried to shoot me. He hit me, but I killed him. That's right. Amy, what's your name? I'm his sister, Marshal. Ah, uh, I see. Jim's partner's name was Emmett Gold. Yeah, I remember him. I never saw him after the shooting. Until today. Till today? About a half hour ago. He was walking into the Texas Trail. He's come to Dodge after you, Marshal. I know he has. He must have heard you was here somehow, and he's come to kill you. After all these years, huh? I didn't forget, did I? No. It's not easy to warn you about him, Marshal. But like I say, I'm doing it for my own sake. I won't be troubled no more now. I've done what's right. Yeah. We're even now, ain't we? You and me. Yeah, we're even, Amy. And I'm mighty happy about it. You 
just going to walk in on this fellow, Mr. Dillon? Might as well get it over with, Chester. You stay out of the way, now. Yes, sir. Well, there he is. <laughs> Emmett Gold? Hello, Dillon. Hey, you remember me? Sure I do. You're a marshal now. Yeah, that's right. Been a long time. Mm-hmm. We was never friendly, Marshal. No. And what do you want? What are you doing in Dodge, Gold? I'm riding through. Headed for Colorado. As soon as I finish his drink. Is that all? That's all. What do you think I'm doing here? Looking for me. Looking for you? What for? I shot Jim Ban, didn't I? It was a fair fight. Yeah, of course it was. You got shot too, didn't you? I didn't get killed. Wait a minute, Marshal. You think I'm after you for killing Jim Ban, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, if that don't beat all. What? You remember where that fight happened? I was on a prairie somewhere. And Jim's bullet knocked you out. When you come to again, we was gone, wasn't we? Well, you packed him off and buried him. No, I didn't. I didn't bury him. He wasn't dead. You didn't kill him. He changed his name, went out to Virginia City. That's where he got killed in a brawl with the law about two years ago. <laughs> so long, Marshal. Well, I never heard anything like that in my whole life, Mr. Dillon. No. You think it's true? Ah, he'd have no reason to lie, Chester. Well, what's Amy going to think? She isn't going to know, Chester. What? Why not? Amy did a big thing for herself, telling me about gold being here. But it was all useless. No. Not unless we tell her it was. And I wouldn't spoil what Amy's done for anything. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. Smoke much milder. Burn evenly. B, better tasting. Draw more easily. You enjoy more flavor. C, cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. You know, on the frontier... Feed for stock was scarce during the long winter months. And on our next gun smoke, a man dies because of a load of hay. So, until then, good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg and Harry Bartell. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Christmas seals give your cards and packages that holiday look. Help fight tuberculosis. Buy and use Christmas seals. Make Christmas their red letter day, their L&M red letter day. Give them the Christmas cars and full of America's best. Yes, give L&M's on Christmas Day to friends who smoke the builder way. L&M's got everything, the gift for Christmas Day. This is it. For Christmas L&M filters and the handsome Christmas carton. 
No fuss with ribbons or paper. It's all wrapped and ready to give. This Christmas, give L and M Christmas cartons. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Smoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made the modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. It was the worst winter we'd ever had in Dodge. The worst one I'd ever seen anywhere on the plains. It had been a short summer with the rain starting a month early and turning to snow and sleet before the end of September. And from then on, it was one blizzard right after another, roaring down off the flat basin, freezing the creeks and the ponds and piling up snow in the gullies. Stock suffered and men suffered. And it got so nobody in town would do anything or go anywhere unless there was some reason they just had to. It was a winter that started out cold, and it kept getting colder. One of the few places in town where a man could go to get warm was a long branch. They had a big pot-bellied stove there that would take four-foot chunk of cottonwood. Most nights they kept it red hot. Matt, you want to know a secret? Yeah, sure, Kitty. What is it? I'm in love with a man who invented woolen underwear. You? <laughs> Under that? You're darn right. Don't let the dress fool you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can't do much good. About as big as a saddle blanket for a cotton tail. In this weather, anything helps. How about a drink, Matt? Well, I was kind of waiting around for Doc, Kitty, but I guess that baby of Miss Tucker's turning out to be pretty stubborn. The Tucker's? Another one? Uh-huh. Oh. If you a man, you'd wear a gun. Well, it started out to be a quiet evening. Oh, it's Ned Crater and old man Sideroy. I think it's just a talking fight. No, Kitty, this one's due. It's been building for a week now. Oh? I'll see you later. Uh-huh. You ain't scared. Why don't you borrow a gun? Anybody in here alone, you one, they'll be glad to see you called for once. 
You're yellow, Josh. You're mean, dirty, and you're yellow. All right, Crater, you've had your say now. Well, how do you feel, Marshal? How would you feel about it if you was in my place? Probably the same way you do, but this kind of talk's not going to help you any. Now, why don't you take a walk? Go have a drink somewhere else. Oh, huh? sure. While that old skin print stands... Crater, I said and... take a walk. I'll get it. All right, Marshal. That was well handled, Marshal. You join me for a drink? No, thank you. Side room. What makes you like you are? I don't believe I understand you. Joshua Side Row, the meanest man in town. Do you like being thought of that way? I'm not much concerned, Marshal, one way or another. A prudent and successful man's always envied, maligned by fools like Ned Crater. That hay barn of yours is full to the roof. You got five times what you need to hold your stock through the winter. Crater's on a ragged edge. He's desperate. A couple of loads that probably carry him. You wouldn't even miss it. Well, the hay's for sale. Oh, yeah, sure. And twice what it's worth. A thing is worth whatever you can sell it for, Marshal. He's no better than the other nesters. They're buying from me. Them has got cash. It's his first year on the land. He's got no cash and no credit. You know that. Then he should have been more industrious. Shown some foresight. He was caught short by the early rains, the same as the rest of it. Now, what's the use? You know, Joshua, someday you're going to end up being the richest man on Boot Hill. Well, Ned Crater don't ever put me there. He might. He's worked up enough. Yeah, he's like all failures. Talks big and does small. He's a fool. And I'll be here long after he's starved to death. I swear to goodness, Mr. Dillon, the more wood you chunk into this cussed stove, the less heat it seems to give off. That's a cold morning, Chester. Throw some buffalo chips in. Yes, and burn out the grates again. If this jailhouse can't afford a halfway decent stove in weather like this. Well, forevermore. Look there. Look who's up bright and early this morning. What? Joshua's side rope. Mm. Leading the pack horse. Maybe he's going to pull out, Mr. Dillon. That's wishful thinking, Justin. I wonder why he's coming here. Marshal! Marshal Dillon! Well, I guess there's only one way to get it over with. Marshal. Yeah, Joshua. I brought in the body of my son, Jabel. He was murdered during the night. Chesterfields, they satisfy. This Christmas, give everyone Chesterfields. Chesterfields are easy to give because they come ready to give in a bright red special holiday carton that's wrapped in its own colorful Christmas ribbon. Everyone enjoys Chesterfields smoother, cooler smoking pleasure. So to all your friends this year, say Merry Christmas with cartons of Chesterfields. No wrapping, no tying. They're easy to give because they come ready to give. Chesterfields, in the bright red special holiday carton. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfields, they satisfy. He took young Jabel's body up to Doc's office and he went to work on it. See what he could find out for me. Chester and I waited in the ante room. And old Joshua told us what had happened. I had Jabel staying up every night this week, keeping watch on the barn, same as last night. That hay's valuable, and I didn't aim to lose it. 
Uh, you didn't wake up during the night? You didn't hear anything? Huh? A clear conscience makes a sound sleeper, Marshal. When Jabel wasn't around this morning, I thought he must be out in the barn doing his chores. About 7.30, I went out to the barn looking for him. Lock was broke off the door. Finally, I found him laying there in the barnyard, covered with snow that fell during the night. Any uh, hay missing? No. I figured after they shot Jabel, he got scared and ran off. Matt, it's pretty hard to tell much. It was colder than blue blazes last night. The bodies froze stiff. I got the bullet, though. It was a rifle of some kind. It wasn't any six-gun. Marshal, if you have no more questions, I'll go and make arrangements for a coffin. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Ah, uh, Joshua. Huh? I, uh... I'm sorry about your boy. I don't regard sentimentality as being a function of law. It's not sympathy I want. It's retribution. Good day. Mean? Mean. That is the one meanest man I ever seen. It's too bad it kicked back on Jabel, though. He was a good boy, Matt. He was warm-hearted and generous. He was nothing like that old... Man. Yeah, I know, Doc. How do you figure it, Mr. Dillon? And I'm afraid there's only one way to figure it, Chester. All right, let's saddle up. We'll go out and get Crater. Ain't much sign of life, Mr. Dillon. Now there's smoke coming out of the chimney. Yeah. Well, Marshal Dillon, Chester, come in. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Miss Crater. Huh? I'll pour you some coffee. Uh, we're kind of pushed for time, ma'am. Is uh, is Ned here? No, it's just me and the young one. Ah. Uh, hey, you know where he is? No, I don't, Marshal Dillon. He's been gone since last night. Hitched up the big wagon, took the four mules and the saddle horse and left. Uh, here. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, he, uh, didn't tell you where he was going, huh? No, he just said he wasn't going to sit around while the stock died of starvation and, and me and the young one went hungry, no matter what it costs. He... He said if he wasn't back in five days, I, I was to sell out and go home to my folks. I don't understand what he meant. Well, there's no use reaching for trouble till it gets here, man. Well, somebody told him yesterday about a camp of Kiowa Indians out toward Badger Crossing. I thought maybe he was going to try to find them and borrow some hay from them, maybe, but I, I don't know. And with this blizzard fixing to hit... I'm worried, Marshal. Oh, he'll probably be back by tonight, ma'am. Tomorrow morning, anyway. How's the boy? Oh, well, he's been a little croupy all week, but I, I guess in this kind of weather you have to expect that. Sure, half the kids in Dodge have got a touch of it. Well, we better be riding on, Miss Crater. Well, I'll tell Ned you was here. Yeah, you do that, will you? And thank you very much for the coffee. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Well... What do you think, Mr. Jones? I don't know, Chester. Them Kiowas don't do much loaning. No, but they'll trade. He didn't get any hay at the side, Rose. You figure he went on the Badger Crossing? Well, there's only one way to find out. The storm really hit us a couple of hours out. Blinding snow on a cold, driving wind. The trail was already a foot deep, and it got worse. The horses didn't like the going and kept trying to tail off to the wind. Times had got so bad we had to take shelter in a coulee and wait it out for a while. When it came dark, we hadn't made over eight or ten miles. And after all that trouble, we still come pretty close to missing it. Did you hear something, Mr. Dillon? I'm not sure, Chester, but pull up. Yeah, well, whatever it was, it came from over there toward the creek bank. Sure sounded to me like... Th that's what it is. It's somebody yelling. Yeah, it's down that way. Come on. Over here! Over! Watch out for that bank, Chester. I see it. 
There he is, Mr. Dillon. His wagon is down in the creek. Yeah, it's Ned Crater's rig. He's broke through the ice, bogged down. Give me a hand here. Cut those Hurry. mules loose and get them out of there, Crater, before you lose them along with the wagon. They can pull out all right. But if I leave the box here, loose the lines, they'll founder. Ride into the water, Marshal. Grab the lead mule's halter and get them straight. They'll pull out. All right. That water's freezing, Mr. Dillon. Well, that's not going to get any warmer before April. Come on, Chester. Ah. All right, keep the lines tight, Trader. Yeah, I know. All right, get her out there, mule. Come on. Just get them straight. That's it. Hey, yeah, come on. That's it. Just pull it. Watch that off you, Chester. Yes, get out of there. Ah. 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 I told you they'd pull it. Ah. Oh, now. Ooh. Well, Marshal, what the devil are you doing clear we'll out here? We'll talk about it later. Kick some wood out from under that yeah. snow and let's get a fire going before we freeze to death. I sure wasn't aiming to lose that load of hay, Marshal. Well, you just about did in that creek. Where'd you get it, Crater? A band of Kiowas. Back at Badger Crossing. I traded them my saddle pony. Now, that pent old mare has a lot of horse for a load of hay. So what are you going to do when you ain't got the choice? That argument you got into with old Joshua's side row. What started it, Crater? Well, that boy of his, young Jabel... Stopped by our place a couple of days ago. Told me he'd see to it I got at least one load of hay. And then when I run into old Joshua the Long Branch and told him about it, he just laughed. You mean old devil. He said the kid was out of his mind that he didn't have no more authority around the place than the other cow hand. You got your rifle with you? Uh, yeah, sure. I'd like to take a look at it. All right. I won't guarantee what condition it's in. I've been so plain busy, I ain't had time to do nothing right. Here, here you are. Thanks. Yeah. Where'd you claim this gun last? Well, a couple of weeks back. I told you it was in pretty bad shape. Couldn't be much worse. I wouldn't try to fire it till I got the rust out of that barrel. Marshal, what's all this about? J. Bull's side row was found lying dead in the barn lot this morning. Been shot. So that's what you're doing out this way. Yeah, that's it, Crater. Well, Marshal, if, if you figure I killed Jabo Side Row for this load of hay, you're wrong. I'd do most anything to keep my stock from starving, but not that. Not killing. I know. Then you're not arresting me? No. Well, I figured you thought that. I did I... at first, Crater. That's why we rode out to find you. But I guess you couldn't have shot him. Not with your rifle in that condition. You mean that I can go home? Yeah. And Chester and I will give you a hand with a wagon. Thanks, Marshal. Well, after we get Crater home, what are we going to do, Mr. Dillon? Have a look at a barn full of hay, Chester. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. B, better tasting. C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making. Gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots, no hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. I can 
sure think of a lot of things I'd rather do than go prowling around old Joshua's barnyard in the middle of the night. This won't take long, Chester. No, but it won't take long for a man to freeze out here. man did freeze out here. Right about here, in fact. What are you doing with that gun, Mr. Dillon? I thought we was being quiet. What are you going to shoot at? Well, the moon makes as good a target as anything. So... Racket to raise it then. I hope you're right. Hold it right where you are. I got a rifle on you. All right, calm down, Joshua. It's Matt Dillon. Marshal, what's the meaning of this? What's happened to that clear conscience of yours, Joshua? You're not sleeping as sound as you claim you were night before last. I thought somebody was after me. Uh, who'd you have in mind? I don't know. That's what I come out to see. Shot woke me up. It didn't night before last. The shot or the dogs. None of it woke you up. Well... What happens once don't have to happen the same way again. No. In fact, some things can't happen the same way again. What do you mean, Marshal? When you only got one son, you can only kill him once. Now, what was it, Joshua? An argument? Did he finally stand up on his feet and defy you? No. No, you're wrong, Marshal. You know, you're the only man in Dodge with a lock on his barn. You tell me something. Did Jabel have a key to it? No, he didn't. And what made you think he was out there at his chores yesterday morning when he didn't even have a key to get into the barn? All right. I shot him. He was a thief. He was your own son. I caught him in the middle of the night, breaking into the barn. He was going to take a load of hay to the crater. Give it to him, mind you. He ignored my orders, cursed me, and I shot him. He's the same as any other common thief. Jury will see it that way. I wouldn't count on it, Joshua. All right, now give me the rifle. Give it to me. All right, let's go. Wait a minute. I got a nail up that door. I can't leave it open. I got valuable hay in that barn. Don't worry about it, Joshua. The neighbors will take care of it for you. Now, come on. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. Smoke much milder. Burn evenly. B, better tasting. Draw more easily. You enjoy more flavor. C, cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfields. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. You know, land was cheap on the frontier because there was so much of it. Yet on our next gun smoke, a man is killed over a few acres. But that was the West. Good night. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, John Daner, and Virginia Christine. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Christmas seals give your cards and packages that holiday look. Help fight tuberculosis. Buy and use Christmas seeds. Make Christmas their red letter day, their L&M red letter day. Give them the Christmas cards and full of America's best. Yes, give L&M's on Christmas Day to friends who smoke the filter way. L&M's got everything the gift for Christmas Day. This is it. For Christmas... L and M filters and the handsome Christmas carton. No fuss with ribbons or paper. It's all wrapped and ready to give. This Christmas, give L and M Christmas cartons.
Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Smoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made the modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Me. Oh, you were concentrating mighty hard on something in that window. Well, Mr. Jonas has some new lady shoes on display. You see them? Oh, yeah. Those narrow, square-toed ones, Matt. Which pair do you like best, the lace or the button? Well, tell me. <laughs> well, I don't know, Kitty. They're both fine. Well, you got to decide one or the other. Oh, Matt. no, I don't have to decide either. I'm not in the market for ladies' shoes. Huh. Well, neither am I. What? Look at those prices. $2.65 for a pair of shoes? Did you ever hear such a thing? Kitty, I only stopped to say hello, not to argue about ladies' shoes. Well, I still think somebody ought to complain to Mr. Jonas. Well, it's not my job. i got enough trouble as it is. Well, I'm going in and tell Mr. Jonas what I think of his prices. <laughs> Have a good time, Kitty. You bet I will. Ah, hello, Chester. Uh, Mr. Dillon, uh, this here is Mr. Trumbull. Uh -huh. He come over to the office looking for you. How do you do? Marshal Dillon, you're a stranger here, Mr. Trumbull? First time in Dodge, Marshal. First time. Oh, well, what do you want to see me about? I want a badge, Marshal. I want you to make me a deputy. A deputy? Now, you look here, Mr. Never Dillon. mind, Chester. Good. What do you want to be a deputy for, Mr. Trumbull? Well, I'm leading a party of immigrants up onto the south fork of the Pawnee. Oh, uh -huh. I thought you were new to this part of the country. Well, I've got maps, Marshal. Good maps. Furnished me by the Santa Fe Railroad. You work for the railroad? No, sir. I work for these immigrants. It's like this, Marshal. I got some ten families together, and I arranged to buy five sections of railroad land for them, about 30 miles northeast of here. I made all the legal arrangements, and I'm guiding them in. I see. Uh, what's that got to do with your wanting to be deputized? Though? Well, I thought it might be a good idea just to... 
in case there's any squabbling when we get there. You know, over who gets which land, that sort of thing. Uh-huh. And uh, most parties draw straws before they ever see the land, Mr. Trumbull. Haven't yours? Well, yes. Sure, of course. Well, then why should there be any trouble? Well, well one of the men's having a little wife trouble, Marshal. You know how it is. Well, maybe I better ride out with you. No, no, that won't be necessary. Everything will probably work out fine. Yeah, sure. Uh, where are these pilgrims of yours? Well, we're in camp down by the Arkansas. We're pulling out in the morning. Well, I thank you anyway, Marshal. Goodbye, Chester. Goodbye. Well, that man sure has got a lot of gall. Yeah, he's some confused, Chester. How do you mean? He can't seem to decide if there's going to be any trouble or not. Yeah, maybe we can find out for him. Come on. Chesterfield's this year so bright and gay. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfield's, they satisfy. This Christmas, give everyone Chesterfield's. Chesterfield's are easy to give because they come ready to give in a bright red special holiday carton that's wrapped in its own colorful Christmas ribbon. Everyone enjoys Chesterfield's smoother, cooler smoking pleasure. So, to all your friends this year, say, Merry Christmas with cartons of Chesterfields. No wrapping, no tying. They're easy to give because they come ready to give. Chesterfields, in the bright red special holiday carton. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfields, they satisfy. Chester and I saddled up and rode down to the Arkansas. It was easy to find the immigrant camp. A dozen wagons were scattered through the cottonwoods, and there were campfires everywhere. But the people themselves were all gathered together in a big circle. We rode up to them, but nobody paid any attention to us. Then I saw why. In the middle of the circle stood two men and a woman. The men were bare to the waist and each was pressing his left forearm against the others, while the woman was binding their arms tightly together with a stout piece of cloth. In their right hands, the men held boy knives. What in the world are they up to, Mr. Dillon? Now, that's a way of fighting, Chester. Tied together like that, one of them has to die, and maybe both of them. Mm-hmm. Hey, you stay here with the horses. All right, sir. Will you stand aside, please? Let me show here. Huh? Make that knot tight, Sidney. Do you have to go through with this? No man messes around with my wife. He didn't mean nothing by it. We was talking, that's all. Now get out of the way, Sidney. You ready, Keppert? You're a fool, Calhoun. But I'm ready. All right, hold it, you men. Stay out of this, mister. I'm a lawman, Calhoun. I don't like this kind of fighting. Now drop those knives. Both of you. I mean it. Here's mine, Marshal. All right, now yours, Calhoun. Well, can't fight none of our men. All right, you, Sidney. Take one of those knives and cut them loose. All right. Next time, I'll shoot you on sight, Keppert. I told you you're a fool, Calhoun. For keeping you away from my wife? Why don't you find one of your own? Wait a minute, Calhoun. I don't want any shooting. Now, I'm warning you. 30 miles isn't far from Dodge, and I'll come take you both back to jail if I hear any more about this. Now, you get back to your own wagons. All of you get back to your wagons. The party's right. over. Chester. 
Chester! Yeah, now where did he go to? Chester! Chester, I'm coming, Mr. Dillon. Now, where have you been? No worries. No worries, huh? Well, I was only talking to a fellow over there. Huh? Now, that's Trumbull. Yes, sir. Now, what were you talking to him about? Mm, nothing. I was just finishing a little talk we started the other day. It wasn't nothing important. Uh-huh. Now, uh, you hiding something, Chester? Why, what would I be hiding? <laughs> I don't know. But I guess you'll tell me when you want to. Yes, sir. All right, let's get back to Dodge. <laughs> Chester. Yes, sir. If you have to pace the room like that, will you take your boots off? I'll sit down. You know, two days of this is about all I can stand. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Matt. Chester. Hello, Doc. Ah, uh, Doc, I think I got a patient for you. Oh, well, now, you don't look sick to me. <laughs> no, but I'm going to be if you don't find some way to calm Chester down. He hasn't been able to sit still for two days. Yes, well... Well, now, what's the trouble, Chester? Nothing, Doc. I feel fine. Well, then why can't you sit still? It's sick people who have to sit still, not well ones. Hey, well, that depends on what you're sick with. I <laughs> ain't sick with nothing, I tell you. You know, Doc, I think he's got a wormy brain. Forevermore. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm trying to settle my mind up about something. Now, are you satisfied? Are you? No. I ain't got the money. I don't know where to get it. <laughs> well, well, money for what? For to pay Trumbull with. Now, do you owe Trumbull money, Chester? No, sir. Not yet. No, not yet. Oh. All right, I'll tell you, but you both got to promise not to tell nobody else about it. Trumbull says if anybody heard, I'd probably get beat out. But you'd get beat out of what, Chester? Land. Free if land. If it's free, what do you need money for? For Trumbull to fix it up for me. Look, if, if I give him $50 for his trouble, he's got a way to arrange for the railroad to give me a half section of land. He showed it to me on his map the other day. I showed what to you? Where my half section would be. <laughs> Gracious. I'll show you the thing. Ah, that's good. Now, the south fork of the Pawnee line is like this yeah. on here. Yeah, that's right. Yes, and, and these immigrants is about five sections laying right next to each other. Right about Wait here. a minute, Chester. Did you say right next to each other? Yes, sir, that's what Trumbull said. Now, my half section lays on the end here. Chester, and... come on. Come on? Ain't you interested in this? Yeah, interested enough to ride out there. And don't worry about your $50. You're not going to need it. It was just after sunset when we hit the South Fork of the Pawnee... And a half hour later, we spotted the first immigrant wagon. A man was working nearby, trying to shape the foundation for a cabin from some red cedar he snaked up from the river. We got down and walked over to him. It was Keppert, the man Calhoun was about to fight for chasing his wife. Hello, Marshal. Hello, Keppert. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Glad to know you, Mr. Keppert. Well, what are you doing out here, Marshal? There ain't been no trouble. Yeah, Keppert, I'm afraid there has been. What do you mean? Hey, look yonder. That fellow coming sure is in a hurry, ain't he? That's Calhoun. He's got a rifle. I better get mine. Oh, you stand where you are, Keppert. He might shoot me. You saw what he was like. He'll have to shoot me first. Keppert! Oh, now what's the trouble, Calhoun? I'm looking for my wife, Sidney. If she was here, you'd see her, wouldn't you? Maybe she's down by the river. You can look there, too, if you want. What's the marshal doing here? He was about to tell me. And then he can tell me, too. I came here to tell all of you, but I want to ask you something first. What? Do any of you have bills of sale from the railroad for this land you're on? Uh, no. No, not yet, Marshal. Trumbull just gave us a receipt and said the railroad would send us a bill of sale. Uh-huh. But you've already paid. Sure. Each man gave Trumbull $400 for a half section. And 25 on top of that for his services. That's right. 
What are you asking for, Marshal? I understand these sections lie right next to each other. Huh? They do for a fact. What's wrong with that? Well, I guess you don't know it, but when the government granted land to the railroad, it only granted alternate sections. Every other one. So the railroad couldn't sell the sections lying right next to each other, could it? No. No, it couldn't. Maybe that's why Trumbull hasn't given you any bills of sale. There aren't any. Why, he robbed us. Where is he now? I don't know. I ain't seen him since last night. Well, then I think we better start looking for him. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, what is it, Captain? I got something to say. It's mostly to Calhoun. Oh, you two can settle your problems later. No, Marshal, we got to settle them right now. You'll see why. Now, listen to me, Calhoun. I ain't a man for much talking there, especially about women. But the way things are, I got to say it. Say what? Your wife's sitting there. I never went near her. Never once. Now, that's a lie. No. No, it's the truth. I hate to tell you this, Calhoun... But it was her that come after me. What? I told her not to. I told her to stay away. I even said I'd show her up what she is if I had to, but I didn't do it. Not till now, I didn't. What are you saying? When did you see her last, Calhoun? At noon, when I come in for my dinner. Yeah. I saw her about two o'clock. Where? I was downriver, about a mile, sitting quiet in a clump of elder, taking a little rest. Your wife... Rode by on the other bank. She was headed in the direction of Dodge. She was with a man. With a man? What man? Trumbull. Smile with Chesterfield. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC. Because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. B, better tasting. C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making. Gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily, lets you enjoy all the flavor. And a Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. No hot spots, no hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Train's still there, Mr. Dillon. Way past midnight, it ought to be leaving any minute. Now run up and tell the engineer to hold it, will you, Chester? All right, sir. Marshal. Yeah. Look, coming out of the depot. It's Trumbull and my wife. Yeah. They don't see us. They ain't even looking this way. You let me take him, Marshal. No. He's rightfully No, man. Calhoun. You might get excited and shoot him before he draws. I'll handle this. Now, you two stay back out of the light. Hey, Trumbull. Marshal. Evening, ma'am. What do you want, Marshal? I want to talk to you. Don't have time. That train's about to leave. It's not going to leave. Anyway, you're not taking it. Oh. You're interfering because of Sydney here. Well, she's gone with me, Marshal, and that's no business of yours. I'm arresting you for robbery, Trumbull. What? Give me your gun. No. I said give it to me. You know the way, Sidna. You killed him. You killed him. Jim! 
Is he dead, Marshal? Yeah. Keppard, see if he's got the money on him, huh? I sure will, Marshal. I didn't mean nothing, Jim. He, he he made me go with him. It was it wasn't my fault. You believe me, don't you, Jim? I don't even want to talk to you. But it's true. I found it. Here it is, Marshal. Yeah. It should be over four thousand dollars there. Good. We'll count it later and give it back to everybody. Marshal. Yeah, what, Calhoun? I'd like mine now. Well, all right. $125. Thanks. Sidney, take this money. What for? Take it. But why? That's all the money I got in the world. I don't figure I owe you nothing now. What are you saying, Jim? You know what I'm saying. Yeah, sure. I know. So long, Jim. Goodbye. Calhoun. What, Kevin? I got some money coming back. I'll lend you half. After all I've done to you. Well, can't blame you much for that. I've been a fool, Keppert. You was right. No, that's over and done. But I can't take your money. That wouldn't be right, now would it, Marshal? Well, you can decide about that tomorrow, Calhoun. We'll ride out and bring those other people back into Dodge. What for? So they can file for government land at the land office here. Freeland. Should have done that in the first place. You know, I know of a fine section north of here that uh, I'd kind of like to file on myself. Why don't you? Well, one man couldn't handle it. It'd take two men to prove it up, you know. Two good men. Uh, I might show it to you sometime if uh, you're interested. With our star, William Conrad. Remember, friends, this Christmas, give everyone Chesterfields. Chesterfields are easy to give because they come ready to give in a bright red special holiday carton that's wrapped in its own colorful Christmas ribbon. Everyone enjoys Chesterfields' smoother, cooler smoking pleasure. So to all your friends, this year say Merry Christmas with cartons of Chesterfields. No wrapping, no tying. They're easy to give because they come ready to give. Chesterfields, in the bright red special holiday carton. You know, there are a lot of ways for a man to die on the frontier. But on our next gun smoke, a man dies the worst way of all. Needlessly. But that was the West. Good night. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Henley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vivi Janis, Vic Perrin, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Christmas there, Red Letter Day, their L&M Red Letter Day. Give them a Christmas card and full of America's best. Yes, give L&M's on Christmas Day to friends who smoke the builder way. L&M's got everything the gift for Christmas Day. This is it. For Christmas, L&M filters and the handsome Christmas carton. No fuss with ribbons or paper. It's all wrapped and ready to give. This Christmas, give L&M Christmas cartons. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke.
Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made the modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> that table in the back. I want you to meet Ida Stewart. All right. Ida's only been working here about a week. Now, isn't that Gil Varden sitting with her? Yeah, uh-huh. Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. Marshal Dillon. Hello, Gil. Ida, I brought the marshal over so she could meet him. How do you do, Marshal? Pleasure, Ida. Gil's been telling me a lot about you. He's quite an admirer of yours. <laughs> Well, that's good to know I got some friends. You always did right by me, Marshal. You never caused anybody any trouble, Gil. And I don't aim to. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse us now, I promised I'd try to bring Gil a little luck at Faro. See you again, Marshal. Sure. Come on, Ida. And you'd better bring me luck, too. Uh, she sure has a way with kids. Kids? <laughs> Gil's 20, Kitty. <laughs> to me, that's a kid. Well, I've known kids who were men at 16. Oh, sure. But there aren't many of them. Yeah, maybe it's good to take your time growing up, huh? Oh, maybe. As long as you don't take forever. Like Henry Gant over there. He must be 40. And all he's ever learned to be is a loudmouth bully. I don't call him grown up. Well, I don't care much for Gant myself, Kitty. Look at him right now, Matt. He's trying to horn in on Gil and Ida. Yeah. Well, that Gant's mean. It's going to be trouble, Matt. Look, he and Gil are going outside. Well, I better go throw some water on that. Well, shoot him for me, Matt. All right, everybody stay inside. Stop it, Marshal. He'll shoot him. I'll stop it, Ida. Okay, Gil. You're wearing a gun. Use it. Hold it, you man. Now, how'd he get here? I won't have any gunplay. You know that. He's going to shoot me because I call his girl a bad name, Marshal. Ain't that something? If there's any shooting, I'll do it, Kent. All right. I'll fight him barehanded. Well, you little scut. That's man. enough, Kent. Now, you leave him alone and get out of here. I'll kill you, Gant. One way or another, I'll kill you. Hear that, Marshal? He means he's going to shoot me in the back. He wouldn't dare try it no other way. I've heard all I want to hear. I told you to leave, Gant. He's a coward. He's a dirty little coward. You know what he called Ida Marshal? Forget it, Gil. And you forget about killing him, too. No, I won't. I'll get him. You want to hang for killing a man like Henry Gant? I don't care. You don't? Huh? No. Yeah, then maybe Kitty was right. Maybe you are only a kid after all. <laughs> This year, this easy way Give Chesterfields this year So bright and gay Wrapped and ready They're the best to buy 
gardens of Chesterfields, they satisfy. This Christmas, give everyone Chesterfields. Chesterfields are easy to give because they come ready to give in a bright red special holiday carton that's wrapped in its own colorful Christmas ribbon. Everyone enjoys Chesterfield's smoother, cooler smoking pleasure. So, to all your friends this year, say, Merry Christmas with cartons of Chesterfields. No wrapping, no tying. They're easy to give because they come ready to give. Chesterfields, in the bright red special holiday carton. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfields, they satisfy. Morning, Doc. Yeah. Oh, 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 well, well, good morning, Matt. Good morning. <laughs> You've been sleeping in that chair all night. Why well, wasn't asleep? <laughs> oh, well, your eyes were closed. Yeah. You ever hear of a man doing a little thinking? What were you thinking about, Doc? Oh, about sitting out here in the morning sun, settling my breakfast and breathing fresh air, wishing good for my friends. And evil for my enemies. That's pretty stout thinking, Doc. Well, I was doing fine till you came along and spoiled it. Now I might as well go up to my office and back to the sordid trade I'm in. Now, what's his hurry? Who is it? Gil Varden. Maybe he's being chased by Indians. Yeah, he sure acts like it. Or maybe he's just exercising his horse. <laughs> I'll stick with the Indian theory. Doc. Yeah, oh, my. When I was a young man, I used to ride like that. Oh, I was fearless as an eagle. No wonder the women loved me. <laughs> you know, you better get up to your office, Doc. You don't handle this fresh air too well. Oh, you think I'm lying? I know. You never heard about the time the preacher's daughter and I were about to elope, huh? <laughs> you didn't hear that, did you? I helped carry you home the night you invented that story, Doc. Mr. Dillon! <laughs> Mr. Dillon! It seems like everybody's in a hurry this morning. <laughs> Henry Gant's been killed, Mr. Dillon. What? A cowboy found him half a mile north of town. He was shot in the back. Gant was shot in the back? Yes, sir, shot in the back. Must have happened last night sometime. Well, we won't have much trouble catching this killer. He just rode by here. All right, let's go, Chester. By the time Chester and I picked up a couple of rifles at the office and got saddled, Gil Varden had a good start on us. So to make sure of catching him, we each took an extra horse along. We tracked him south and rode hard till noon without even seeing him. But then we found his horse. It had sold on him and was standing head down and feet apart near a wagon. And the wagon, it was sitting there with no team to pull it. A harness strewed all over the ground. And on the seat, stony-faced and unmoving, was a gray-haired country woman. Howdy, ma'am. Uh, I'm Marshal Dillon. I'm looking for the man who was riding that horse out there. He's gone. Well, uh, what did he do? Uh, take your team? He took him. Well, man, you just can't sit out here. Can't go no place without a team. Uh, there's a ranch about a mile west of here. Give that horse a little more rest and he can carry you that far. We'll rig a blanket on him for you, huh? Can't leave my man here. What? My husband. He's in the back, Marshal, under them blankets. Oh, what's the matter with him? Is he sick? He's dead. Killed dead. The man who stole your team? He done it. He rode up and never said a word. A man reached in the back for his rifle and this fellow shot him. I just can't believe Gil Varden would do a thing like that. He was shaken like a leaf. He's plumb scared, Marshal. Scared of you, I guess. He's got a reason to be, ma'am. Especially now. Go catch him before he hurts anybody else. I'll manage here as soon as I stop aching a little. 
Well, I don't like to leave you. I'll be all right. But stop him. He's done enough. Chester, bring a horse over, will you? We'll fix a rig for her. Thank you. My first husband was killed by Indians, Marshal. Bad as it was, I never hated them Indians. It's different now somehow. Yes, ma'am. I'll catch him, ma'am, I promise you. I sure do feel sorry for that poor lady, Mr. Dillon. Well, I guess Gil figures he can't hang but once, Justin. What got into him? He's the last man in the world I'd expect to run wild killing people. Uh, like she said, he's scared. Blind, crazy scared. No telling what he'll do next. My. Hey, look. There's a couple of buffalo out there. Yeah, I've been watching them, but they aren't buffalo. No? They're horses. Yeah, you're right. One of them just put his head up. Say, it must be that team. They're big enough. Yeah. I don't see Gil. No. Say, maybe he's laying out in the grass there waiting for us. Yeah, maybe. There's something on the ground there. Looks like a man. It is a man, and he's lying face up. He must have got thrown and knocked out, huh? I've won that team. Gil's a better rider than that. Well, something's happened to him. That isn't Gil, Justin. It's some cowboy, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. <sighs> He's been shot. Well, it looks like Gil did a little horse trading, Chester. The rough way. He left this fellow the team and a bullet in the chest. That boy's really gone crazy. We'll catch him quick enough unless this man was riding an awful good horse. There's no way of telling about that. No. Well, let's get busy. We buried the stranger as best we could. And then took up Gil Varden's trail again. By mid-afternoon, his tracks showed we were closing on him. Still, it was almost dusk before we saw a sod hut up ahead and a saddled horse standing in front of him. At one side was a corral holding two other horses. But Gil and whoever owned the place were nowhere in sight. We made a circle, rode up behind the hut, and dismounted. He ain't been here very long, Mr. Dillon. That horse of his is still winded. Well, I don't know whether to wait for him to come out or go in after him. It'd be a lot safer to wait, if you ask me. There might be somebody in there with him. Either way, we've got him now. Look, uh, Chester, you wait at the edge of the cabin there. If he runs out alone, take him, huh? All right, you. Uh, we're too late. Drop your gun, Gil. No! You all right, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, come on in, Chester. Did he kill that fellow? I'll take a look. You get Gil's gun. He's still conscious. Yes, sir. Yeah, he killed him, all right. Gil don't look hurt too bad. Tried to shoot him in the shoulder, but I'm afraid one bullet went a little low. His eyes is open. Gil, can you talk? You busted my chest. Here, let me open your shirt for you. <coughs> well, I don't know. You might live at that. Not with two bullets in me. You want to try it, Gil? Try what? 
There's a wagon outside. It'll be a rough trip, but we might get you into docks. You shoot a man, and then you try to save him. I've done it before. I asked this fellow to trade horses, but he figured I was running, and he tried to jump me. I shot him. You shot a lot of people today, Gil. I didn't want to. I didn't know what I was doing, except running. I heard about Gant. I knew it was me you'd be after. What do you mean you heard about Gant? Uh, I'm getting dizzy. I'm going to fall. Hold me, Marshal. You're lying on the floor, Gil. I'm going to fall. She did. No, he's still breathing. What was that he said about Gant? I don't know what he meant, but he sure didn't admit killing him. Let's get him back to Dodge if we can. And maybe we can find out what this is all about. Stop. Shop. For all your friends this year, this easy way. Give Chesterfield this year so bright and gay. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfield, they satisfy. This Christmas, give everyone Chesterfields. Chesterfields are easy to give because they come ready to give in a bright red special holiday carton that's wrapped in its own colorful Christmas ribbon. Everyone enjoys Chesterfield's smoother, cooler smoking pleasure. So, to all your friends this year, say, Merry Christmas with cartons of Chesterfields. No wrapping, no tying. They're easy to give because they come ready to give. Chesterfields, in the bright red special holiday carton. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfields, they satisfy. You go back up to docks, Chester. I'll wait in the office. When Gil comes to you, let me know. Huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. He's an awful tough boy, ain't he? Yeah, you had to be to survive that trip. It wore me out, and I wasn't even shot. Oh, say, if you leave the office, you'd better let me know where else you'll be. Yeah, I will, Chester. All right, Kitty. Hello, Matt. Hello, Ida. Oh. What are you girls doing here? We've been waiting for you, Matt. We heard you brought Gil in this morning. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's up at Darks. How is he, Marshal? But he's got two bullets in him, Ida. He survived that wagon trip, but Doc can't tell much yet. What do you think? Well, he's still alive, and I've seen men pull through shot up a lot worse than he is. Even if he does live, he'll hang, won't he? Yeah. I'm sorry, Ida. It's all my fault. Your fault? <laughs> Ida did it, Matt. Did what? <laughs> killed Henry Gant. Ida killed... Yeah, she came and told me about it after she'd left. Gant tried to run off with her, but she got his gun away from him and she killed him with it. Is this true, Ida? Or are you trying to cover for Gil? Gil's going to hang anyway. It's true. Then it was self-defense. Why didn't you come tell me about it? I was scared to. I, I didn't think about it being self-defense. I was too scared to think. Yeah, yeah, she was, Matt. I had a terrible time calming her down. She's telling the truth, all right. Yeah, I believe her. If Gil hadn't run everything, it'd be fine. He got scared, too, I don't know. For real scared. But why? He didn't do anything. Well, he'd threatened to shoot Gant when he heard about it, when I... I guess he was like you. He just stopped thinking. Oh, Miss 
Kitty. Miss Allen. Hello, Chester. I, I didn't expect to find you here. Is Gil conscious, Chester? No, sir, he ain't. How is he? He's dead. <gasps> he died just a couple minutes ago. Doc done all he could for him. That poor scared kid. You killed him, Marshal. Why? Why'd you have to kill him? He was only a boy. Oh, that isn't fair. What chance did he have against you? You shot him down easy. Why'd you have to do it? I don't like it any better than you do, I don't. But Gil just killed three men. And I don't think they wanted to die any more than he did. <laughs> In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Remember, friends, this Christmas give everyone Chesterfields. Say, have you remembered the milkman, the postman, and the others who make life easier for you during the year? Well, there's still plenty of time to get them Chesterfields. Just drop by your neighborhood cigarette dealers any time this coming week. You'll find Christmas cartons of Chesterfields are easy to give because they come ready to give. In a bright red special holiday carton with its own colorful Christmas ribbon. So to all your friends this year, say Merry Christmas with cartons of milder, better-tasting Chesterfields. You know, Dodge City was the end of the railroad and the beginning of the frontier. And it was filled to overflowing with people from all walks of life. Well, next week during the Christmas season, two real mountain men come to Dodge to win their three-generation feud just in time for Twelfth Night. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Eleanor Tannen, John Daner, and Ann Morrison. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Make Christmas their red letter day, their L&M red letter day. Give them the Christmas cars and full of America's best. Yes, give L&M's on Christmas Day to friends who smoke the builder way. L&M's got everything the gift for Christmas Day. This is it. For Christmas, L&M filters and the handsome Christmas carton. No fuss with ribbons or paper. It's all wrapped and ready to give. This Christmas, give L&M Christmas cartons. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. 
Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Good morning, Doc. Chester. Good morning, Mr. Dillon. Come and have some coffee with us, Matt. You've got nothing to do in your office. <laughs> no, but in there, people can't see me doing it. Oh, it's no use to hide. They're on to you anyway. You know, I don't think the Christmas season has made you any more charitable at all, has it, Doc? Well, I'm not a man to be good on Sunday and sin all week, if that's what you mean. Well, you're honest, if nothing else. Oh, I don't know. Hey, look at that fellow. Hey, eh? what fellow is uh, Yonder, across the street there, in, in the coonskin hat. Oh. Now, that's the tallest man I ever saw. And that rifle he's carrying is as long as he is. <laughs> he sure looks out of place in Dodge, don't he? He is out of place, Chester. That's a squirrel-hunting southern mountain man. He's coming over here. Look at him walk. Yeah. If everybody had legs like that, the Santa Fe Railroad would go out of business. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my, he's from the hills, all right. Well, at least he ain't another gunman, Mr. Dillon. That's something to be thankful for. Howdy. Hello. Which of you be the... What do you call him? Uh, do you mean the marshal? That's the word. I never heard it till a fellow told me this morning. <laughs> well, that just means peace officer. I'm again, peace officers. Uh -huh. It ain't fitting for some folk to be meddling in other folks' business. Where do they figure it like that, stranger? Uh, Ozark Mountains? Better country than this. My name's Eben Hakes. Well, my name is Dillon. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot and Doc Adams. Uh, how are you? Peace officer, the man said you'd help me find where that Joth Monger is living. Joth Monger? Yeah, uh, he come out here about a year ago. He's got an old mountain gal with him. They're married. Uh, yeah, they got a place up near Rock Springs, about, uh, oh, ten miles north of here. I'll find it. Uh, you've come a long way to see a friend, Hicks. Josh Monger ain't exactly a friend, peace officer. But I gotta get going, it being Saturday and all. Well, what Saturday got to do with it? Nothing. Except I won't kill no man of a Sunday. I never have. I never will. <laughs> People everywhere are finding that Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Yes, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. For the more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. And Chesterfield, made with Accuray, is more perfectly packed than any cigarette ever could be before. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying to the taste, an Accuray Chesterfield has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. So remember, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Buy Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most.
Duff Munger's face don't look no better than it ever did, does it? No, not much, Chester. No, look at that for me, Munger. Out doing chores as usual. I wonder where Joth is. Asleep somewhere, probably. Morning, Miss Munger. Howdy. How are you, ma'am? Poorly. Uh, is Joth here, ma'am? Uh, today, one Saturday, he'd be here. What? Joth goes to Dodge every Saturday. He does? Oh, I never see him. Now, if you socialize more, you'd see him. Joth's got his ways, Marshal. They're lonesome, but they're his. And... I see. Uh, Miss Munger, do you know a man called Eben Hakes? Hakes? If you speak that name round here, you won't be welcome, Marshal. Well, there's trouble between you? If you call Joff being the only monger left and even being the only Hakes left, then you could say there's trouble. Oh, you mean it's a feud, huh? Both families been whittled down to just them two. I see. Is that why Joff came out to Kansas to uh, get away from it? Not if he's always talking about going back long enough to kill even Hakes. Yeah. Well, what do you think, ma'am? Don't you think it's gone far enough? Either one of them could call it off if he wants so muley. Uh, how did this feud start, ma'am? If you had any upbringing, you wouldn't ask. Oh, it's I'm a family to... matter. Mm-hmm. Where'd you see even Hakes anyway? Well, he was in Dodge asking about Joth. Uh, if he was asking, then he'll find him, and that's bad. Joth don't even know he's around. Well, that's why I came out here. Joth knew about him. I wouldn't worry. Joss better shot than even Hakes any day. Look, Miss Monger, the law doesn't hold with feuding. Whichever one kills the other, he'll hang for it. You start meddling, they'll shoot you. But I'm worried about Joss. He'll be drunk as soon as it's dark. Well, I'll find him, ma'am. Goodbye. Goodbye. Is all hill people like that, Mr. Dillon? Well, they're mighty independent, Chester. Well, the law sure don't seem to mean much to them. Yeah, not when it comes to feuding. Mm. Now, look over there. Hmm? By that little bluff there. Well, well for, now, how did he get here? I don't see no horse. Well, let's go ask him. Hello, Hicks. Is that Joss Monger's place yonder, peace officer? Yeah. Good. I'll get a little closer and shoot him when he comes out. You don't care whether you hang or not, do you? Hang? For shooting the monger? For shooting anybody. You ever hear a murder? Peace officer, you're getting <clears throat> downright contrary. Where's your horse, Hicks? I got no horse. Well, you left him in Dodge? I don't need no horse to travel by. You mean you walked all the way from the Ozarks? It's mostly downhill, peace officer. But I'd walk anywhere to get me monger. Well, maybe I ought to throw you in jail. Now you are being meddlesome. I got to get closer to that house. And don't you fret none about the old lady. I don't aim to shoot her. Mr. Dillon, you going to let Hakes wait here and shoot John? No, let him go, Chester. Let's get back to Dodge. We'll find Joff and warn him. Why don't you just let them shoot each other and have done with it? (laughs) Don't tempt me, Chester. Chester, you go ask Sam if he's seen Chath, huh? Okay. Evening, Kitty. Hello, Matt. Where you been? It's pretty near midnight. I've been trying to stop a feud. Well, it's a long time since I've heard of a feud around Dodge. Well, this one kind of got transplanted from the Ozarks. The Ozarks? Yeah. <laughs> the wonder that crazy Joth monger isn't mixed up in it. Now, that's Joth I'm looking for. You are? I've been in every saloon in Dodge. He must have a cave somewhere. I'll bet you a dollar he's right out back, Matt. Out back? Sure. He's there every Saturday night. Comes in and buys a bottle of corn from Sam and takes it out back and drinks it. Sits there all along with his long rifle in one hand and his bottle in the other. Nobody knows what he's thinking. And yeah, no wonder I haven't seen him around. Hey, oh. Mr. Dillon, Sam. Oh, oh, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Yeah, Kitty just told me, Chester. Go out back and see if he's there. If he is, bring him in, huh? All right. 
Well, who's Joth feuding with, Matt? man called Eben Hakes, Kitty. Is he from the Ozarks, too? Yeah, he arrived today on foot. On foot? Yeah, he's all legs. <laughs> Real traveling man. Hey, I'd like to see him. He's got a face like a hatchet, and he's built like a piece of wire. Uh, I'll bet he carries a long rifle, too. He does. Here he is, Mr. Jones. I made him leave his rifle with Sam. Hello, Jeff. You just up and say what you want, Marshal, because I don't care to be cooped up inside here very long. Eben Hakes is looking for you, Jeff. Of course he is. Mongers and the Hakes been looking for each other nine out of 40 years. They most all got found, too. You been drinking, Jeff? Well, the missus won't allow no drinking on the place, Marshal, so I got to come to town every Saturday. Joss Monger. It's Hakes, Mr. Young. Yeah, get out of the way, Kitty. Sure will. I got you caught like a bar up a tree, Joss. Put your rifle down, Hakes. You're going to kill me. I ain't even got no gun. Put it down, I said. You're standing in the way, peace officer. And I'm going to stay here. Then I'll have to shoot you first. You're not going to shoot anybody. Of course I am. That's what I come for, ain't it? Don't try it. Now, here. W- wait a minute, everybody. I just thought of something. I wished all you folks had stop meddling in it's this. It's after midnight, Hicks. What? It's Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, he's right, Hicks. Well, of all the gall blame luck. Oh, quit looking so troubled, Josh. I won't shoot no man of a Sunday, even a monger. But you come awful close to it, Eden. It's a doggone shame it took me so long to find you today. You traveled a long way, Eden. I know, but I got tired waiting for you to come on back home, Josh. I was coming. I was coming this summer. I know, but your old lady told me about it today. I seen her scratching around doing chores. That ain't much of a place you got there, Josh. Be quiet, Chester. Oh, fella can make a crop here sometimes, Eden. But it's a hard fight with a short stick. I didn't see no hogs out there. Where's your hogs, Josh? I'm getting some come spring. Eden, how's things back home? Well, there's been a lot of changes since you left. Eden? Yeah? I got a little jug out back. It's most empty now, but we can maybe buy another one set out there for a spell, kind of get soured on the cob. What say you? Might as well. We can't do no shooting till Monday. Where at do we buy this jug? I'll show you. Fell over here, so... You'll have to lend me some money. I didn't bring none with me. Well, if they don't be... Oh, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Looks to me like they're going to call that feud off. No, not them, Chester. Midnight tomorrow, they'll be stalking each other all over again. Well, how are you going to stop them? Hell, I'll let them enjoy themselves tonight. But tomorrow, I'm going to throw them both in jail. And they're going to stay there till they learn something more than feuding. People everywhere are finding that Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Yes, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. For the more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. And Chesterfield, made with Accuray, is more perfectly packed than any cigarette ever could be before. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying to the taste, and Accuray Chesterfield has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. So remember, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Buy Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy. The most. I wasn't sure that jail would teach Joff and even a thing, but I still couldn't let them run loose and shoot each other down. So the next morning, Chester and I went looking for them. We found where they'd built a small fire out back of the long branch, and we found a number of empty bottles. 
but that was all. We searched the town till noon with no luck. Then I decided to ride out to the monger place and see if by any chance Joff had returned. There was nobody in sight when we got there, so we dismounted and walked up to the door. There's smoke coming out of the chimney, Mr. Jones. Yeah, that doesn't mean Joff's here, Chester. Well, no, sir. Afternoon. You go away, Marshal. Now, wait a minute, Miss Mulder. If you don't want to get shot, you do what I say. Friendly, ain't she? Yeah. But she didn't have no gun. It must be Joth in there. Yeah, probably. Well, if it is, why would he want to shoot you? Well, there's one reason I can think of. You mean he's gone and killed Eben Hakes? I don't know, Chester. But I'm sure going to find out. Uh, oh, there's a window around the side. It ain't a very clean window. That'll do. Here, let me take a look. I'll, I'll be... What is it, Mr. Dillon? Here, have a look yourself. All right. Well, they're eating dinner. All three of them. Yeah. Come on. to talk to the men, Ms. Munger, and I'm coming in. Josh? All right, stay away from those rifles. Why, he busted in. He busted in right past the woman. I never heard of a man coming into another man's house that way. If he had any upbringing, he wouldn't have. Is this the kind of people they got in Kansas, Josh? It's the first I seen of. Never mind about that, Josh. Now, why did your wife threaten to shoot me? What's going on here? If you hadn't come to put them in jail, you wouldn't get shot, Marshal. How did you know I was going to put him in jail? Eden says you told him you was. Well, that's right, I did. If he killed anybody. I ain't killed nobody. The feud's off. We stopped it. You stopped it? Sure. Last night, we got to talking a little about old times and everything. And you know what we found out? No, what? You tell him. Well, peace officer, this here feud started a long time ago. What happened was, my grandfather stole Joss' grandfather's girl and married up with her. So, Joss' grandfather declared a feud right then and there. But you ain't told him what we found out yet, Eden. Oh, well, we hadn't thought of it before, peace officer, but last night we was thinking that if my grandfather hadn't done that, then Joss here would have been me. What? Don't you see? Otherwise, my grandmother would have married up with Joss' grandfather, and I'd have been Joss. So any way you look at it, we're kind of related, like? Any way you looked at it last night, you mean I saw them bottles? <sighs> no, it doesn't matter, Chester, as long as the feud is off. It ain't only off. Eden's going to stay on here with us. We're going to work this place together. I'm going to give him a share in it come Christmas. Come Christmas? Think far off. January 6th. Right, now, here, wait a minute. Since when did Christmas get to be January 6th? If you knew anything, you'd know that. I swear I'm getting to know less and less, ma'am. No, oh, you folks don't understand. Back in the Ozarks, we do our Christmas celebrating 12 days from when you do. Wait a minute, you're talking about 12 nights. We call it Christmas, too. And if you only knew, Marshal, it works just fine for us. Oh, well, there's no reason why it shouldn't, ma'am. It's an old custom. Say, maybe you and Chester would come out and celebrate with us. If they don't mind kraut and sour pickles and cornbread and coffee, they'll come. Now, ain't there going to be no chitlins, woman? I was keeping them for a surprise. <laughs> Chitlins or no chitlins, I'll be proud to come, Miss Monger. And me too. Well, uh, we'll leave you to your dinner now, and uh, <laughs> we'll see you at twelfth night. Now our star, William Conrad. 
Friends, at this time, I'd like to join with Ligon and Myers, the makers of Chesterfield and l and Filters. There are over 6,000 wholesale distributors and the 1,300,000 retail cigarette dealers. And wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. On the frontier, violent death might come to a man in a number of ways. And life around him served as a daily reminder. Gunfighting in the street, stampeding cattle, marauding Indians, hunger, thirst. Now, there were a lot of ways to die, and most of them hard. But the Westerner wasn't bothered by that. The important thing was, when his time came, that, well, that he'd die standing up and in fine style. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Helen Klebe, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Most accidents aren't really accidental at all. Only you can cause an accident. That's right. It's up to you to read and heed the safety signs. To keep your eyes on the road, to watch out for those curves ahead and the cars driving along near you. Most drivers know how to operate a car. They know the traffic rules. They know that speeding, taking chances, failing to keep to the right of the line are dangerous hazards. Accidents happen because drivers do these things despite what they know. So while you are driving, remember that you and only you are responsible for your life and the lives of those driving with you. Drive carefully. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M superior taste and filter. L and M America's best filter tip cigarette. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. 
And that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Chester and I were about 30 miles from Dodge when we ran into the Buffalo Hunters' camp. We'd been holed up for two days in a deserted sod hut, taking cover from one of the worst blizzards in years. But it was over now, and a warm, dry Chinook blew out of the west, down off the Rockies and across the prairie into Kansas. It was Chester who saw the camp first, a pile of buffalo hides half covered by snow, the skeleton of a wagon, its canvas torn and shredded by the blizzard. The camp was silent as we rode up. We got on. They ain't nary a soul here, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, maybe the men got caught out on the prairie when the blizzard hit and couldn't get back. It sure does look that way. I don't know how that team is still alive with nothing but that wagon for protection. They don't look none too lively. Uh, you sure can't blame them. Get your hands up. What? Both of you. What? You better do what the old man says, Chester. He was hiding in the wagon. Come over here. Closer. This your camp, mister? Of course it's my camp. Now you two drop them guns. Now we got our hands up. Is not enough? You do what I say. I ain't take no chances. I ain't going to get left here again. Left? You're going to hitch up that team, and you're going to take me into Dodge. You ain't running off like Jed Larner. Who's Jed Larner? He's my skinner. Oh, why did he leave you? Well, he seen that blizzard coming, and he didn't want to take any chances, so he rode off. He's probably been in Dodge all the time, warm and cozy. Oh, why didn't you go with him? I twisted my leg and my foot so I can't ride a horse, that's why. Larner figured driving a wagon would be too slow. You mean he left you here to freeze? Yeah, and I'll kill him when I find him. And I'll kill you if you don't drive me to Dodge. Now, here, he's a U.S. Marshal, mister. He ain't gonna leave you out here. Uh, Marshal? Yeah, that's right. Now, why don't you put down that rifle and tell us who you are? Well, all right. My name's Ira Puckett, Marshal. I'm usually up north following the Republican herd, but I come south this year. I'm getting old, and I thought it'd be warmer down here. <sighs> you sure made a mistake about that, didn't you? You'll get me into Dodge, won't you? Sure, of course we will. Foot I twisted, I don't feel nothing in it. Must be froze. Huh? Well, it could be. I'll kill Jed Lorner for this. You forget about that, Pocket. I'm not taking you back to Dodge just so you can hang. I'll forget it. Till I find him. People everywhere are finding that Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Yes, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. For the more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. And Chesterfield, made with Accuray, is more perfectly packed than any cigarette could ever be before. Firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild yet deeply satisfying to the taste. An Accuray Chesterfield has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. So remember, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Buy Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy. The most.
Now, how is he, Doc? Oh, he'll be all right, Matt. In time. Now, then his foot wasn't so bad after all. He didn't have much foot left when I got through him. Oh. But he'll be able to walk with a cane. But his buffalo hunting days are over. How does he know that? Mm-hmm. I told him. Ira Puckett's a proud man, Matt. A little too proud. Oh, what do you mean? Well, what he hated most about this Jed Larner leaving him on the prairie wasn't the fact that he might have died, but that he was helpless. A man like Puckett can't stand being helpless. Yeah, I see. So now, all crippled up, he, he's a better man, Matt. Well, he'll get over it, Doc. A man will get used to most anything in time. <laughs> I've got my doubts about Puckett, though. Well, you know that ornery old goat? He won't even admit how old he is. Oh, how old would you guess, Doc? Oh, he's past 70 anyway. Uh, he's in the back there if you want to see him. All right. I'll come with you. Well, hello, Puckett. Marsha. How you feeling? Doc, tell you what he done to me? Uh, yeah. You ruined my foot. Oh, I... Oh, I saved your life, Puckett. I ain't sure I'm grateful, Doc. Uh, you're gonna be all right, Puckett. You're gonna be able to get around. Yeah, like old woman. What am I gonna do for a living? I ain't one of you city people. I live off the country. I always have. I'm a man, not a dude. You'll get used to town life. And you'll find men here, too. <laughs> what kind of men? Walking around all slickered up, parting the hair in the middle, bowing to the ladies. Ain't one of them could do half the things I've done. Why, well, I was living with Comanches when most of them was sniveling in their mother's aprons. Yeah, I know. But you'll find something to do. I'll help you. You will, eh? Well, sure. Then help me find Jed Larner. Bring him in here so that I can kill him with my bare hands. What does Larner look like, Bucket? No, oh, he's tall, black hair, got a big scar running across one eye and halfway down his right cheek. All right, I'll try to find him. And if I do, I'll run him out of town before you get to him. <laughs> so, can't even trust you, can I? Not when you want to murder a man. I told you I didn't bring you in so you could hang. <laughs> The next few weeks, I kept a sharp eye out for Jed Larner, but he must have headed for some other part of the country. Anyway, he never showed up in Dodge. Well, time passed, and Ira Puckett was able to get around a little, first with the help of crutches, and then finally with a cane. But it was obvious his hunting days were over, and that alone seemed to shame him. Then one night, his pride really got a blow. I was at the Long Branch having a beer with Kitty when it happened. Oh, this is a great way to start the new year, Matt. Uh, what do you mean, Kitty? Well, all last year I was hoping maybe I'd be in San Francisco by now. Oh? Well, you never told me. <laughs> what would you have done about it? <laughs> oh, nothing, I guess. Hmm. Uh, why San Francisco? No blizzards, no dust... No cowboys. Uh huh. Yeah, but they got fog. Yeah. And all those sailors and miners aren't any gentler than these cowboys, you know. Well, I know. But imagine going to dinner in a carriage, eating off a tablecloth, dancing on a hardwood floor. <laughs> You're spoiled, Kitty. Well, now, how could I got spoiled? Here, in Dodge City? Ah. <laughs> uh, save your money. You'll get to California someday. Yeah, sure. If I walk. Well, a lot of people have gone that way. Who do you think I am, Sacagawea? <laughs> ah, there was a woman. Yeah. You know, I always... What's the matter, Matt? That man at the bar, he just turned around. Which man? The one with a scar down his cheek. I'll be back, Kitty. Good evening, Marshal. Evening. What are you staring at me for? Your name, Jed Larner. And if it is, how long you been in town, Larner? About an hour. Something wrong, Marshal? You remember the big blizzard we had? Hmm. Who don't? 
We all do, I guess. Especially Ira Puckett. What? He didn't die, Warner. Well, that's fine. I went back looking for him. I wondered where he got to. Yeah, sure you did. Well, it's true. Pockets here in Dodge, Larner. He is? And if he finds you, he'll kill you. But he isn't going to find you because you're leaving right now. And don't show up around here again. Now, wait, Marsh. I you can't can... arrest you. I can't put you in jail. But I tell you what I can do. What? Suppose I just let everybody here know that you're the man who ran off and left Ira Puckett to die. No. You know something? They'd tear you apart, Larner. They'd set you on fire. Don't say nothing, Marshal. Don't tell him. I'll leave. I'll leave right now. Well, you got rid of him in a hurry. I saved him from being shot and Ira Puckett from hanging for it, Kitty. Well, that was Jed Larner. Uh-huh. He's the one that ought to hang. Yeah, he didn't mean to kill the old man, Kitty. What's the difference? Well, legally, there's some. Enough to give Ira his foot back? <sighs> You're sure hard to argue with, Kitty. Why? Because I think straight? <laughs> Let's uh, talk about San Francisco, huh? I've changed my mind. I think I'll go to New York. Oh? No? Marshal Gillen. Cairo Puckett, man. Yeah. He looks awful mad. Good thing he isn't armed. Now he can always find a gun, Kitty. You, you done it, Marshal. It was you, wasn't it? You yeah, saw Judd Larner. Huh? Jumped on his horse and rode out of town before I could stop him. And I had to stand there and watch. I didn't even have a rock to throw at him. Why'd you do it, Marshal? To save you from hanging, huh? Well, I'd rather hang and live this way. I wasn't born to become my helpless old man. The least you could have done was let me fight my own battle like I always did out on the plane. You took my manhood away from me, Marshal. You're living in town now, Ira, among people. Why don't you get used to it? All right. All right. All right, I will. I'll live like you town people. Fine. Then why don't you start by getting yourself a job? I'm a going to. I sure am. And it's going to pay me a lot of money, too. What do you mean by that? You find out, Marshal. When it's too late. This is Jack Webb. I suppose most of you have made your New Year's resolutions. I guess with most of us, that implies some kind of a change. Well, beginning with this brand new year, we've made a few changes in our Dragnet television show. I like to think the most important is what we call the Dragnet New Look. In our brand new series, we'll show for the very first time the new Los Angeles Police Administration building, the first of its kind in the world. But the biggest change of all is our new television time, one half hour earlier. Now, speaking of a change... Here's a great suggestion for 1956. Change to milder, better-tasting Chesterfields. My cigarette. Make it yours. I think this little jingle of ours sums up our case for Chesterfield very nicely. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy Nice morning, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, thanks to that wind we had last night. Well, it kept me awake. Uh, all night, Chester? Well, no, sir, I wouldn't say that. About 15 minutes. Hey, look over there by the bank, Mr. Dillon. Ain't that our pocket? Uh, yeah. That's the first time he's had his team and wagon out. Where you reckon he's going? Right now, he's gone into the bank. Well, what's he carrying that shotgun for? He can't do no hunting in the bank. Yes, he can, Chester. Come on. 
Mr. Dillon, you don't mean to say old Puckett's going to hold that bank up. He said last night he's going to start living like town people and get a job and make a lot of money. This could be his idea of how to do it. You sure couldn't have no other reason to carry that shotgun in there? You going in after Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Well, he's got a shotgun. I know. Look, Chester, take his team and wagon off somewhere. Uh, lead him around back of the bank, huh? I'm out of sight. Maybe we can handle this without a shooter. All right, sir. Hurry it up, Chester. He's coming out. I'm all gone, Mr. Dillon. Marshal. Come on out, Puckett. They're not stopping him. You better not try it. I can shoot with one hand, Marshal. Yeah, sure. Don't you try to follow me, Nick. Hey, wait a minute. Wait. Where's my wagon? Where's my team? You're in a bad fix, Puckett. Somebody stole them. I can't get away without my team. No, you can't, Puckett. So you might as well give up. You've done it. You're behind this, Marshal. You gonna shoot me? Well, why shouldn't I? Because you're in enough trouble already. And shooting me won't help a bit. You're trapped, Puckett, and there isn't a thing you can do about it. Now, you use your head. Uh, all right. Here. Here's the money. Now, you bring my outfit back. I ain't going to jail, Marshal. It's like I said, Puckett. Shooting me isn't going to help you. And I'm not going to do a thing about your outfit. You think you outsmarted me, don't you? Give it up, Puckett. You're licked. Yeah, well, I... Oh, oh I can't shoot you, Marshal. Here. Here, take the gun. Good. Uh, I'm nothing but a helpless old fool. Can't even rob a bank proper. I'm not sure you really wanted to, Puckett. What? All you wanted was to prove something about that manhood you think has been taken away from you. But you sure picked a foolish way to do it. Yeah, I guess it did. My goodness, I thought he wouldn't never give up, Mr. Dillon. He didn't have much choice, Chester. I went in the back way and told the people in the bank to keep out of the way. You want me to take him to jail? Oh, no, no. No, no, I, I can't stand jail. Please, Marshal. Lock him up, Chester. I'll return this money and have a talk with Mr. Botkin. I'll be over later. <laughs> I told you to lock him up, Chester. Well, I started to, Mr. Dillon, but I just couldn't stand the look on him when I got him in the cell. I... I... Ira, you know, it seems to me everybody treats you pretty well. Yeah, everybody but Jed Larner. That's true. But Chester and I brought you in. Doc saved your life. I kept you from hanging, and if I hadn't outsmarted you at the bank, it'd probably be lying dead somewhere now. You know, it seems to me everybody's gone to a lot of trouble for an old man full of a lot of foolish pride. What do you think? I, I've been thinking, Marshal. Sitting here thinking. You know what? You're right. But it's too late now. No, it isn't, I don't what? I explained everything to Mr. Bodkin at the bank, and he's willing to drop any charges against you. But on one condition. What's that? Well, to be honest with you, it was my idea, but Mr. Bodkin agreed. You get a job here and quit being so doggone ornery. Otherwise, you're going to go to jail. Oh, what could I do with this crippled foot? Well, seeing you're so handy with a shotgun, I think Jim Buck might hire you to ride messenger on the stage. You think so? Well, he told me he would. You... You you went and saw him? And it doesn't take any walking, Ira. So, uh... How about it, huh? Well, I, I never had a job like that. But, uh... Man's got to make a change once in a while, lady. And, and it'll sure be a good way to start the new year. In 
a moment our star, William Conrad. People everywhere are finding that Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Yes, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. For the more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. And Chesterfield, made with Accuray, is more perfectly packed than any cigarette could ever be before. Firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying to the taste. And Accuray Chesterfield has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. So remember, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Buy Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, out on the high plains, they used to have a saying... Never argue with a mule, a cook, or a horse and buggy doctor. Well, next week, an Easterner who never heard that saying comes to Dodge. And uh, he makes the mistake of fighting with the wrong people. He nearly dies as a result of it. But uh, that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody and James Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M, superior taste and filter. L and M, America's best filter tip cigarette. Be sure and listen to another transcribed story of the Old West on Gunsmoke next week at this same time. Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. 
and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Chester, you going out on a sick call? I don't usually carry my bag when I'm going for a beer. <laughs> Why, did you want something? Oh, no, no, no. I, I just thought I'd stop by. Well, you can walk with me at the stable if you want to. I'm going out to Jake Morrison's. His boy has the ague. Oh, no, ain't that a shame. Seems like everybody's getting the ague these days. Had a touch myself last week. Oh, I uh, saw. You know, most folks swear by Osgood's Caligog. But I found me some new stuff. Mm. Professor Curtis's original Mameluke liniment. Mameluke? Uh, look, it says right here on the bottle what it's good for. Uh, guaranteed to cure cramps, pains in the joints, mm-hmm. sore throat, frosted feet, mm. rheumatism, umbago, old sores, bites of insects and reptiles, mange, salt, rheum, dysentery, diora, and cholera. Well... A regular medical arsenal all in one bottle. Hmm. And it's doing you good, isn't it? Well, of course, Doc. Well, then how come you're still walking around like a buffalo with ring bone? Well, maybe I still got just... Oh, so you come to me for some free advice now, didn't you? Well, I'll just give you some free advice. Chester, stop eating all that salt pork and dried beans. What? And put some fresh greens in your stomach. Why? And stay away from the saloons for a few days. Oh, now, Doc. A little whiskey and sugar never... Oh, a little buddy, whiskey. I... Oh. And most important, take all those patent medicines you got and use them for cleaning your boots. Oh, They're I... just the thing to kind of toughen up the leather. And as far as I'm concerned now, Chester, you could... You... What's the matter, Doc? Doc, what is it? Something about that fellow that just rode by? Yes, Chester. Well, you were staring like you seen a ghost. You go ahead, Chester. I'm going back to the office. The office? What for? To get my gun. Your gun? Why? I'm going to kill that man. More pleasure packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Dillon. Yeah, what's the trouble, Chester? You better come on out the plaza. Maybe you can stop him. I'll stop who? Doc, he's going to kill a man. Doc? Doc, yes, sir. 
He's gone and got his old army walker and strapped it to his belt, and he's marching up Front Street looking for the fellow, whoever he is. All right, let's go. I tried my best to stop him, but he wouldn't listen. Oh, you should have saw his face, Mr. Dillon. He means business. I never seen Doc like this. Who was the fellow, Chester? I never seen him before. Well, you know what it's all about. No, sir, but I do know one thing. I'd hate to have to face that old walker pistol, even if it is an old cap and ball. Why, it'd blow a hole clean through a buffalo. Matt! Oh, wait a minute. It's Kitty at the door of the long branch. She's waving. He must be down there. Yeah, come on. Matt, it's Doc. Is he in there, Kitty? Yeah, and he's got a gun. He's threatening some man. All right, thanks, Kitty. And if you won't come outside, uh, I'll kill you where you stand. I told you I'm not going to fight you. That's up to you. But I'm going to kill you whether you defend yourself or not. Doc. That's enough. Matt, you stay out of this. Happens to be my business, Doc, when a man threatens another man in this town. When the other man doesn't want to fight, won't defend himself, it could turn out to be murder. You think I don't know that? You must want to kill him pretty bad. I've wanted to for a lot of years. Why? I've got good reasons, Matt. But you won't tell me, huh? No. No. All right, what about you? I could say I don't know. But I'm just a stranger passing through town. But I know. There's no good reason for murder. I guess he thinks there is. Do you? Not many men would say yes to that, now would they, Marshal? But you won't defend yourself, huh? I won't draw with him, no. If he's going to shoot me, he'll have to take the consequences. I'm not a fighting man, Marshal. I'm a miner. Me and my partner here, we're just traveling through Dodge. We don't want any trouble. That's right, Marshal. We made our strike out in Arizona Territory, and we're headed back for St. Louis. Oh, we was just minding our own business, having a quiet drink when this fella comes along. What's your name? Clem Maddow. This is Ben Bartlett, my partner. We don't want no trouble. You won't have any. Go on back to your drinks. I'm going to kill him one way or the other, Matt. And you can't stop me. Look, Doc, you're taking an awful lot for granted. Maybe you think I won't throw you in jail for threatening murder. Maybe you think because you're the town's only doctor that you can get away with... listen. No, you listen to me. You're forgetting a lot you ought to remember, Doc. For instance, your position in this town. You ought to be setting an example instead of acting like an ordinary gun hand. And more important, your responsibility... Another man's life may be his own risk, but yours belongs to this whole town. And a good many lives depend on you. So you calm down and you put that gun away. (laughs) Hey, you sure told the old fool off. You shut up! Matter. I don't know anything about you. Maybe you're what you say, but if Doc doesn't like you, that's good enough for me. So you get out of Dodge while you got a whole skin. And you stay out. Why should we? We got a right... And you take your partner with you, Maddow, because I don't like him. Sure, Marshal. We was going on tomorrow anyways. We're right on tonight, as soon as we stock up on some grub. All right. Where did Doc go, Chester? Up the street, probably back to the office, like you said. To Matt, me. look on his face when he went out. Yeah, I know, Kitty. Well, I'm going up there. Matt, you had to do it. Yeah. I'll see you later, Kitty. Yeah, sure. Mr. Dillon, that Maddo, he, he didn't seem like such a bad fellow. No, he didn't, Chester. I'd sooner be bad of that partner of his, that Bartlett. That one seemed like he could be a hard case, all right, thought half trying. Maddow wouldn't even defend himself. No. But I don't think that was because he was afraid to. No, that's true. Seemed more like he just didn't want to fight Doc. Didn't seem mad at all like Doc. More like he was sad. Maybe a man with a guilty conscience, Chester. Mm. Yeah, well, I guess so, Mr. Dunn. Uh, you better go on over to the office, Chester, huh? I want to go up alone. Yes, sir. Doc. Hmm. 
Now, Doc. Huh. Now, I wonder where he could have gone. Well, he didn't show up at Del Monco's for his supper, and it's way past his usual time. I've been watching the office, and his light ain't come on. Of course, he could be sitting up there in the dark. I just tried again. He's not there. Uh, Mr. Dillon, you don't reckon he might have just left town? Run away? Because of what I said? Not Doc. He's too bullheaded for that. Most likely he's out there somewhere with an old pistol of his looking for Matto. I'm afraid you're right. Doggone it, I don't know what this town would do without Doc. He can be awful irritating at times and all, but... Hey, that, that was a shot. Yeah, come on. Dylan. It's Clem, Marshal. I think he's dead. All right. Everybody stay back. Give me that lantern, will you? He was shot in the back, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. It looks mighty bad. He said he'd kill him, and he's done it. Did you see who did it, Bartlett? No. We was loading horses, and I just turned to go back into the store for another load when I heard the shot. Anybody else around to see it? Why, uh, no, but after all, Marshal can't be much doubt who did it, can there? Everybody in town heard him threaten to kill Clem. You know, just because the man's a doctor doesn't give him any right to go around murdering people. That's enough, Bartlett. The important thing right now is to try to save this man's life. Where are we take him at, Mr. Dillon? There's only one place, Chester. Yes, sir. Now, where have you been, Doc? I was down by the stable, and I heard a shot. What's the matter? He's still alive, but he was shot in the back. Oh, I see. <laughs> As if you didn't know. Doc, I could understand you getting into a fair fight, but not shooting a man in the back. Why, you just gonna let him walk away like that, Marshal? Doc! He's going to die if he doesn't get attention right away, and you're the only doctor in town. You're going to let him die? Where do you think I was going, Matt? Bring him up to the office. I'll have everything ready. more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs>
you going to pull through, Doc? I don't know. I've done all I can. Yeah. Good. You really didn't have to stand here and watch, man. No, I know I didn't, Doc. That's not why I stayed. I thought maybe I could help. And I wanted this. Uh, the bullet? Yeah, that's right. You see, Doc, I knew you didn't shoot Maddo, but I had to be able to prove it. How did you know? Because Maddo was shot in the back. I... I, I tried to tell you out there, Doc, only you, you didn't understand. Oh. But you did have me kind of worried when you started to walk away from him. Why, it, it never occurred to me to walk away from him. Oh. I guess being a doctor is a lot more important than any personal grudge. Well, I reckon I'm under suspicion, aren't I? Doc, uh, look at this forty-five bullet. Took it out of Maddo's chest. Now, I couldn't have been shot from that old pistol of yours, could it? No, no, no. I guess it couldn't. And... Well, then who did it? Well, that's not hard to figure. Oh, Bartlett, Chester, you can come in now. How is he, Marshal? I think he's going to be all right. He ain't going to die? Say, that's mighty fine. Well, I was plenty scared with this man operating off. You needn't have worried. He's a doctor and a good one. You see, he didn't shoot your partner. He didn't? No, we have the proof for that. Uh, who did? Now, there's only one other man in town who'd have had any reason to. A coward who saw a golden opportunity to double his takings of a mining strike by shooting his partner in the back. You just keep your hands away from your belt, Bartlett. Well, I want me to get his gun, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. Well, you're crazy, Marshal. You can't prove this. I think we can, Bartlett. Anyway, we'll just wait and see. All right, take him down and lock him up, Chester. Yes, sir. Come on, you... Looks like Maddo's going to come, too. Yes, maybe. His color's better. You know, it's funny. I, I don't hate him anymore. You mind telling me why you ever did? Uh, it happened a long time ago. It had to do with a girl we were both pretty fond of. She chose Maddo, but he jilted her. She drowned herself. I swore I'd kill him. And I carried that hate in my heart all these years. That's not good for a man. No, it's not, Doc. Well, you brought me to my senses, Matt, in that saloon. Thank you. Well, I looked all over for you afterwards. Well, I guess I was out of Jake Morrison's. I, I remembered I had to treat his boy for the ague, so, so I did. <laughs> Doc. Oh, yes. Yes, Clint. Yeah, uh, now you just take it easy. Uh, that's right. You lie still. You're going to be all right. Doc, I wanted to tell you I'm awful sorry for what happened. Maybe sorrier than you. I loved her. I would have come back if I could have. Well, I guess I never even thought of that. Well, we've both been sorry too long. It's all over now. Thanks. Now you just go on to sleep. You get your rest there now. And the world will look a lot better to you tomorrow. That's it. That's it. Well, good night, Doctor. Good night, man. moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. 
Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. Cowboys, with six months' trail pay, made the frontier a good place for a crooked gambler. Next week, one comes to town and gets cured of his bad habits the hard way. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M, superior taste and filter. L and M, America's best filter tip cigarette. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's gun smoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Thanks to Accuray, they satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Oh, 
Mr. Zellin, ain't old Teeter's ever going to finish cutting that man's hair? Oh, are you in a hurry, Chester? Oh, no, no, sir, I ain't. But I don't take to setting around the Tom Sawyer the entire day. Uh-huh. There oh, you are. Looks like he's through now. Well, it's about time. That'll be 25 cents, mister. Oh, okay, thank uh, you. Uh, Chester, why don't you go first, huh? Oh, no, sir, I don't mind waiting. You go first. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be like eating pork chops in front of a starving man. <laughs> well, if you insist, I guess I'm going to be next, Mr. Teeters. I'll be glad to get you out of here, Chester. You're fidgeting around over there, and then they maybe put a brand on that man. Well, it's just because I'm hungry, Mr. Teeters. I ain't at my dinner yet. Well, next time, eat before you come in for your haircut. I sure will. And bring a lunch, too. Set still. Marshal? Uh, yeah, what, Teeters? Heard something yesterday might interest you. No. A couple of strangers was in here. Ouch. Heard them say they was taking the Santa Fe to Wichita last night. Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I ain't through yet. They come from Texas, Marshal. San Antonio. What they said was there's a gambler down there who's coming to Dodge. Said he'd be here on the stage tomorrow. <clears throat> uh... Teeters, if you cut hair the way you tell a story, you'd go broke. Put your head I, down, Chester. What my This particular right. gambler, Marshal. Well, they said he's real clever. And also the biggest crook they ever knew. Oh, is that so? They said he could outsmart anybody. Well, did they say his name, Mr. Teeters? Yes, they did, and I remembered it. It's Search. Nick Search. Nick Search. You sure, Teeters? That's what they said, Marshal. Uh, well, uh, maybe they were just talking. Now, how do you mean? Well, any man's got enemies, especially a gambler. You sound like you don't believe him, Mr. Dillon. Well, I don't want to, Chester. You don't? Why? Nick Search isn't only a gambler. He's also about as handy with a gun as anybody I ever knew. Now, Marshal, you don't mean you're afraid of him. We were friends once, Teeters. Real good friends. Packs more pleasure. Packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Stage ought to be here any minute, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. How long has it been since you saw this Nick Search, anyway? Oh, uh, ten, twelve years. Well, it was in Texas you knew him? Well, there and other places, yeah. Like I said, he was a good friend, Chester. Well, yonder it comes. Hey, my, you make it sound like he must have saved your life or something. I was just the opposite, as a matter of fact. What? I saved his. You did? Yeah, a man tried to shoot him in the back, and I put a stop to it. Oh, there he is. Hey, Nick. Nick, search. 
Hey, he sees you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Matt. Matt Dillon. <laughs> Nick, how are you? Well, I heard down the trail you was Marshal here. And I heard you were on your way. <laughs> Did? Who told you? Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Nick, I want you to meet Chester Proud. Well, Chester? Well, I'm glad to know you. <laughs> oh, Matt. Matt, if this don't beat all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you planning to stay a while? You know a fella here named of Sam Noonan? Well, oh, sure. He runs a long branch. That's it. Yeah. Tell you what, Matt. You wait here till I dump my war sack in that hotel over there, and then we'll go see him. Gambler can't work without a place to gamble. <laughs> I'll be back direct. Okay, Nick. Well, I declare he seemed like a nice fellow, Mr. Doan. Yeah. Hey, you don't believe what them men told Mr. Teeters, do you? <clears throat> About him being a crook? Uh, Chester, when he comes back, I, I'm going to have to ask him about it. Oh, that's the long branch, man. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Nick. What's the matter? I, I want to ask you something. Well, go ahead. The uh, men who said you were on your way to Dodge, they said something else about you. What was that? Well, they, they said you were a crooked gambler. Did you believe them? I'd rather believe you, Nick. Huh? You saved my life once, man. If you catch me cheating at cards, you can try to take it back again. <laughs> That's not a very clear answer, Nick. <laughs> I'm no crook, Matt. I'm too smart for that. Yeah, let me go and talk to this Sam Noonan and then we'll have a drink. Okay. Nice place. Oh, uh, that's Sam behind the bar there. I'll introduce you. No, no, Matt, no. Never mix friends with business. Well, then I'll wait for you. Uh, I'll be with that girl in the corner over there, Sam. Oh, eh? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> I won't be long, Matt. Okay. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Matt. Who's your friend? Uh, his name's Nick Search, Kitty. So that's Nick Search. Oh, you've heard of him, huh? A couple of Texans were talking about him the other day. Who were those men, Kitty? They never said their names, Matt. They were sure talking about Nick Search. Nick's an old friend of mine. He is. And I think those men were lying. Well, I hope so, for your sake. Oh, why for my sake? He's an old friend of yours. That's not what you meant, Kitty. No. They also said he's pretty fast with a gun. Yeah, he is. And so, if I back him up here, then it's going to look like I'm doing it because I'm afraid of him, huh? Not to me. You know that. Yeah. But to most everybody else. I don't know, Matt. Here he comes. Sam's bringing him over. Uh, hello, Marshal. Hello, Sam. Marshal, I seen you come in with Search here, so I figured you must know him. Well, won't he admit it? <laughs> I don't like mixing friends with business. You don't have no choice this time, Search. Not if you want to deal in Long Branch. What is it, Sam? Those two Texans and their stories. Well, I heard them. We all heard them. Probably a couple of saddle bums lost their pay in an honest game, and now they blame the dealer for it. It happens every day. I know that, but they they said other things about you. Like what? The way you can handle a gun. 
Well, Marshal, are you a good friend of this man? You want me to say it's okay for him to deal here? Now, wait a minute. If Matt's got to get involved, I can go someplace else. No, it's all right, Nick. I don't mind. Well, what do you say, Marshal? Yeah, Sam, I'll vouch for him. I run clean games here. And I run a clean town here. All right. I'll take the marshal's word, search. You can open your game tonight. Oh, well, good. Come on, Matt. Let me buy you that drink. Okay, Nick. Um, I'll, I'll see you later, kid. Yeah, sure. What's the matter, Sam? Oh. Oh, it's nothing, kitty. Why, it's just a hate to think Marshal Dillon's standing up for that fellow for the wrong reason. Started with Sam Noonan. Before long, everybody got to thinking I was backing up Nick's search because I was afraid of him. I talked to Nick about it, but he laughed and said there were as many fools in Dodge as any place we'd ever been. Well, maybe he was right. Anyway, after a month passed without any complaints about his dealing, I began to forget it. So one afternoon when Chester and I were taking our ease on the porch in front of my office. Mr. Dillon, did you ever know any Irishmen? <laughs> well, of course I have, Chester. I, I mean, do you know much about them? <laughs> well, I have a feeling anything I don't know, you're about to tell me. Oh, no, sir, it, it's not me. It's a fellow I used to live with. He was born in a place called Bingo Bay. That's in Ireland. Too. And what did he tell you? Well, sir, he told me never shoot an Irishman. What? Yes, sir. Because he said, if you can lick one of them, then he'll be your friend for life. But he warned me about that, too. He said, be careful, never punch one of them in the face. Just give him a good whack in the belly, and then a little child could whip him. <laughs> That's a good thing to know, Chester. I'll remember that. Yes, sir, I've always remembered it. I've made lots of friends that way. Irishmen. Yes, sir. All Irishmen. All of them? All of them Irishmen. <laughs> They're mighty fine people, Mr. Dillon. Yes, they are, Chester. I sure do like them. Hey, ain't that old Enoch Mills? No, where? Yonder. Come down the street there. Yeah. He looks mighty serious about something, too. Well, if I was the richest cattle buyer in Dodge, I'd look serious, too. Just thinking about all the money he's got sobers me. Oh, Hello, Marshal. Chester? I do, Mr. Mills. Sit down, ain't it? No, oh, some other time, Marshal. i got to get back. i got to clean this fella out. What? That gambler, Nick Search. I... You in a game with Nick Search? Yeah, I've been going on for 12 hours. i got him going, Marshal. I've been winning steady. Now I'm about ready to double on everything I've won and really take him. I see. Uh, how much money does it amount to, ain't it? Well, it's what I just got from the bank to throw in. It'll be some $5,000. Yeah. What's the game? Poker. Head and head. Just him and me. And the only time he wins is when I deal. So I don't do any betting till he gets the deck. Now I'm really going to give it to him. I'll break him good. i got to get back now. Easiest money I ever made. Well, I guess Nick ain't so much of a gambler after all, is he, Mr. Dillon? Nick knows what he's doing, Chester. <laughs> I'm going to follow him down. I want to watch this. Pleasure packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch... 
to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Buy Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Just in time, Marshal. Game's just about to get started again. That's fine, Enoch. Uh, you mind if I watch? No, sure, of course not. Here, your deal, Nick. There's a dick. Well, pick it up and deal. What are you waiting for, Nick? Makes me nervous to have people watching, Enoch. I told you that. Oh, Marshal ain't people. Go on, deal. I'll join you later for a drink, Matt. You mean I'll spoil the game if I watch? Maybe that's what I mean. Well, let him have his way, Marshal. Don't bother him if it makes him nervous. I'm sorry, Enoch. I'm staying. Oh, you're not, Matt. So you lied to me, Nick. And now I'm warning you. Get through here, Nick. Am I? No, don't do it! My hand! Look at my hand! You busted his hand, Marshal. He'd have killed me if I hadn't. I'll kill you yet. Yeah, sure. But first, you better let Doc fix that hand. Come on, I'll take you up to him. That's the best I can do for you. Here, Nick, uh, have another drink. Huh? Yeah. I could drink that whole bottle, not feel an ounce of it. That hand will hurt worse tomorrow. Tell me, Doc. Your hand's pretty badly smashed, Nick. It's going to be stiff. I won't be able to deal cards very well, will I? You won't even be able to hold a deck. Well, Matt, I guess that does it. <laughs> no more taking my time setting up suckers like Enoch Mills for one big stake and leaving town fast after it's done. I guess that's all over. Yeah, I guess it is, Nick. My gun hand, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Funny thing, Matt, now that it's all over, I feel... feel kind of relieved. Like I got nothing to worry about no more. You said you were going to kill me, Nick. Doesn't that worry you? You saved my life once, Matt. Saved it again tonight. I'd be pretty ungrateful to hold that against you, wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, I guess. There's one thing I do hold against you. What? But maybe I'll get used to it again. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to go back to being honest. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, ma'am? Why don't you and I sit down and uh, help Nick finish that bottle? Huh? Well, <laughs> by golly. Oh, say, that's it, Matt. <laughs> I knew there was something more that we could do for him. <laughs> In a moment.
moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accurate, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, frontier cattlemen often fought and died over grazing land or because of water rights with sheepmen. But next week, a feud flares up because of two people in love. But that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, John Daner, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter. It's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste. And superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M. Superior taste and filter. L and M. America's best filter tip cigarette. Be sure and listen to another transcribed story of the Old West on Gunsmoke next week at this same time. Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs>
Marshal Chester. Uh, hi, Mr. Uh, hello, Jake. What brings you into town? Marshal, are you interested in stopping a killing? A killing? One, maybe more. Uh, what's the trouble, Jake? Andy Bowers. Emmett Bowers' kid? He ain't a kid if he's old enough to be bullying around after my daughter. Well, Judy's a pretty little thing. I can't say I blame Andy. I told that boy, if he ever set foot on my place again, I'd shoot him. And you would, huh? I would. Jake, you and Emmett Bowers are the two biggest cattlemen around here. Why do you have to be enemies? There's room for both of you. There ain't enough room in the whole United States for me and Emmett Bowers. All right, all right, Jake. And I suppose you know what'll happen if you shoot Andy. That's why I want you to put him in jail. Let him cool off for a while. He'll forget about Judy. You think I'd put a man in jail just because you don't happen to like him, Jake? I'm an important man in Kansas, Marshal, and I run things my way. But you don't run the United States government, and you don't run me. All right. I tried... Now it's going to happen, Marshal. It's going to happen fast. Hey, you two loafers better get saddled up. Your whittling days are over. Now, what's Doc yammering about, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. Sitting here, taking your ease in the sun while the whole country's gone to war. Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. What you been feeding on, Doc? <laughs> it isn't me, Chester. I just came back from Bower's Ranch, Matt. The cook out there's got the ague again. And let me tell you, that place is an armed camp. Every man on it is carrying a rifle. They've got sentries posted and everything. Now, does Emmett think Judy Worth is going to come over there and steal, Andy? No, but it seems like some of Jake Worth's men fired on a couple of Bowers riders the other day. Said they were off their home ground or some such fool thing. And ever since, both sides have been fixing for battle. Oh, <laughs> and it won't take much to start one either, Matt. Yeah. Well, knowing Jake and Emmett, there's no point in my talking. Yonder comes half the cause of the trouble right now. What? Yonder. Huh? That's Andy Bowers. Hey, Andy. Andy. Oh, he's a nice boy, Andy. Well, that little Judy Worth's a nice girl, too. Howdy, Doc. <laughs> Hello, Andy. Andy, uh, Doc tells me that there's a war about to break out over you and Judy Worth. Well, I know, Marshal. But I can't talk my paw into anything any more than Judy can hers. If her mothers were alive, it might be different. The way it is, it's pretty hopeless. What do you mean, hopeless? Well, I guess I'd better stop trying to see her, that's all. Oh, that's a fine way to talk. Well, I don't want to, Doc. Then where's your spunk, boy? Where's your get up and go? Don't you love the girl? Of course I love her. But you're going to let a couple of cantankerous, selfish old men beat you out of her. Doc. Why, you don't deserve her. What she needs is a man, not a whimpering kid who turns back at the first sign of a little rain. Doc. Well, it's true, Matt, and you know it. They'll never let us get married, Doc. What have they got to do with it? It isn't them who's getting married. I know. Well, I've thought of running off. I never said nothing to Judy about it, though. Don't talk about it, Act. Doc. If she won't go with you, then she doesn't love you as much as you think she does. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. What do you think, Marshal? It's not for me to decide, Andy. Yeah... Yeah, you're right. It's my business. Mine and Judy's. Yes. I better get going now. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, goodbye, boy. Uh, oh, Doc, you did a real good job. Yeah. You think he'll do it? I don't know. But if he does, there'll be war short. And I know a broken down, romantic old country croaker we can blame it on. Oh, fiddle faddle. You want those kids to get married just as much as I do. And anyway, it's time you started earning your pay around here. <laughs> well, I got things to do. Let me hear what happens, Matt. Yeah, don't worry, Doc. You'll hear. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 
packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Quiet night, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? Nobody's lost his temper so far, Chester. <laughs> Reckon you'll be needing me anymore? <laughs> no, I won't need you. You can go to bed. Somebody sneaking in back. Yeah. Get over on the other side of the room, Chester. Yes, sir. Why, it's Andy Bowers. Andy? Who's that in back of you? Come on, Judy. Hello, Marshal. Chester. Well, I... What are you two doing here? I got word to Judy and she sneaked off and met me. Doc was right, Marshal. She wanted to go. Of course I did. Well, what did you come here for? We're being followed, Marshal. We've got to hide somewhere. You can't stay here, Andy. I'll think of a way we can sneak out of Dodge, Marshal. But we can't do it tonight. Uh, you say you're being followed, huh? Yeah. Judy's pa and a couple of his men. We lost them a few miles back, but they're sure to ride on into Dodge. Where'd you leave your horses? Oh, they're tied out and back. And I gotta do something with them. Look, Andy. Your pa and Judy's are gonna start a war over this, and you're putting me right in the middle of it. Don't you realize that? Well... I guess he's right, Andy. We can't get him mixed up in it. But he's the only man around here we can trust. I know, but it isn't fair to put all this on him. Oh, maybe you're right, Judy. Come on. I'll think of something. But we better hurry before they catch us. Wait. Wait a minute. What, Marshal? Chester. Yes, sir. You go with Andy. Take those horses down to Moss Grimmick's stable and tell him to hide them. Oh, well, Moss knows how to do that, Mr. Brown. And put Andy up in the loft somewhere. Moss will understand. All right, sir. Well, what about Judy? Now, you two get going. I'll take care of Judy. Oh, he's going to help us, Andy. He's going to help us. Yeah, I'm going to help you. But who's going to help me, I sure don't know. <laughs> Judy. Doc. Hey, Doc. Yes, Matt. Let her do it. Uh, come out here a minute, will you? Uh, I was just mixing a little something out here. So, uh, well, hello, Judy. Hello, Doc. Look, uh, Doc, I was wondering if Judy could stay here until she and Andy can get on out of town. I... I'm sure it'll surprise you, but they're running away. They're running away? Oh, no. They are? Oh, well, isn't that wonderful? Yes, and we're going to make it, too, in spite of our father. You sure are. And you're welcome to stay right here as long as you want, Judy. Nobody will look for you here. Oh, that's real kind of you, Doc. Oh, no, no. It's just that I like the idea of people who want to get married just as much as you and Andy do. (laughs) Yeah. 
Well, I better get going. Uh, now, you stay here, Judy, until you hear from me. You understand? All right, Marshal. Uh, yes. I think I'll go with you, Matt. <laughs> and now, you can make yourself comfortable, Judy. And I'll be back in a couple of hours, and I'll bring you something to eat, huh? How's that? I'll be waiting for you, Doc, and thank you. Oh, you're a nice girl. Come on, Matt. Well, Matt? Doc, I know how, but I don't know why I got mixed up in this. But I'm sure on it now. Come on into the Long Branch, Matt. You need a drink. Yeah, maybe I do, Doc. <laughs> Say, look, Matt. It's Jake Worth. Yeah. Who's that with him? His name's Ab Drain, Doc. Ab Drain? Yeah, Jake's hired himself a gunman. And a pretty good one, too. Uh-oh. They've seen you. Yeah, you stay out of the way, huh? <laughs> Don't worry. Well, I haven't seen you in a long time, Ab. Cheyenne, wasn't it? Me and Jake have been looking for you, Marshal. How's oh, that so? Where's Judy? Judy? Now, don't lie to me, Marshal. You know where she is. You're going to tell me? Is that what Ab's for, Jake? So you can push people around more than ever? Never mind him. I never have. Have I yet? You'll get it someday, Marshal. Maybe I'm the one who'll give it to you. Shut up, Bab. I don't want no fighting now. Why do you think I might know where Judy is, Jake? She was in your office, wasn't she? What? One of my men here in town saw her and that rotten Bowers kid ride around back of your office. Now, where is she? All right, Jake. They were in my office, yeah. Keep talking, Marshal. Jake told you to shut up, Ab. Now I'm telling you. Never mind that. Where is she? Jake, why don't you and Emmett Bars call this off before there's a lot of useless bloodshed? Neither one of you can win anything this way. I ain't even listening to you, Marshal. All right, then go on home. And take Ab Drain with you. Who do you think you're talking to, Marshal? You can't bluff me, Ab. You know that. Now you get moving. I ain't bluffing much. Stop it. I don't want no fighting. Not yet. But I'm telling you this, Marshal. I'm going back to the ranch. And Judy's there in two hours, or I'm coming in here with every man I've got. And you know what I'll do. Don't be a fool, Jake. Let's go, Ab. Say, they look mad, Matt. Coming back in two hours, Doc, with an army. Oh, no. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to get Jim Buck out of bed. He's driving an empty stage west tomorrow morning anyway, and he can leave tonight. And the preacher can tie a horse on behind long enough to get Judy and Andy married. While you stay behind to take on Jake's army. Is that it? Yeah, that's it, Doc. <laughs> more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild, 
yet they satisfy the most. Less than an hour later, Jim Buck quietly drove his stage out of Dodge. A couple of miles down the trail, he stopped long enough to witness the marriage of Judy Worth and Andy Bowers. And then he headed west as fast as his team could travel. Six hours later, I was sitting in the front room at Jake Worth's ranch house, stalling for time. As I had been ever since I got there. <laughs> I'm getting tired of this, Marshal. He'll be here any minute now, Jake. Just be patient. I think he's lying to us, Jake. Will, will you quit poking and hollering at me? Ah, oh, here they are. You men stay outside and close that door. Bring her in here, Chester. Where's Judy? Well, I... Where is she? I, I wouldn't know where she is, Mr. Worth. What? What are you saying? I- I'm saying the truth. Marshal, is this a trick? Yeah, Jake, it's a trick. Judy's a long way from here by now. And you'll never find her. Tell me where she is. Tell me or by heaven I'll kill you. I'm like Chester, Jake. I wouldn't know where she is. You lied to me. You said Chester was bringing her. Yeah, I lied to you, Jake. Marshal, so help Wait me. Wait a minute, Jake. Jake. This is my job. Just get out of the way, Ab. No, no. You couldn't take him. Don't you try it, Ab. Watch me. Now, don't make me kill you, Jake. No. It's too late, anyway. Beauty is gone. It's too late for anything. Mr. Worth? Now get get out of here. I'll call you when I want you. Just get out. Where's he going? Wait here a minute, Chester. Yes, sir. must be Judy's room, huh, Jake? I'll keep it for her. Like this. Maybe she'll come back. Maybe. She won't be back, Jake. Don't... Don't say that. It's true. You might as well face it. And you drove her away. No. You and Emmett Bowers both. If you'd once thought of Andy and Judy instead of yourselves, they'd be here now. I don't blame them for running off. They wouldn't be any good if they hadn't. You helped. Why should they give up their happiness for a couple of mean, selfish old men? Sure, I helped them. You and Emmett have been too busy hating each other to be of any use to anybody, especially your own kid. Marshal, I... I'm going to tell you one thing, Jake. They're married now. Married? That's right. Now I'm going over and tell Emmett Bowers about it. No, wait, wait, Marshal. Yeah, what? You think it might help if maybe I rode over to Emmett's with you? It might help you and Emmett, Jake. And it might help the kids, too, when they hear about it. moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. 
Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, a newcomer to the West was often referred to as a pilgrim and made fun of. But next week, a pilgrim nearly causes a wholesale massacre. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, John Daner, James Nusser, and Joyce McCluskey. Harley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M. Mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. L and M filters. So good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Relax with L and M, America's best. Filter Cigarette. Be sure and listen to another transcribed story of the Old West on Gunsmoke. to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. I got a telegraph for you. Oh, who's it from, Chester? Well, I think somebody's playing a joke on you. A joke? What? Why? I never read such a thing. It's plum crazy. I mean, well, here. Maybe you better take a look at it. Yeah. 
Now, this is from the War Department. That's what it says. Rex Proctor coming to Dodge as full authority. Bad reports. Take orders from him. The, you see what I mean? It says they're sending this government man to check up on you. Well, that's an official telegram, Chester. But it says you've got to take orders from him. Well, yeah, I get it. He's kind of like an inspector general in the Army. But what do they mean they got bad reports about Dodge? Things is getting out of hand. Well, Chester, Dodge isn't the most orderly community in the United States. I don't like it, Mr. Dillon. I don't like no part of it. Well, we'll know more about it when he gets here tomorrow. It's insult. That's what it is. <laughs> now, Chester, maybe this Proctor's a good man. Maybe he knows what he's doing. How could somebody from Washington know anything at all about the frontier? No, sir, Mr. Dillon, you mind what I say. You're making a bad mistake if you even let him get off that train. There it comes, Mr. Dillon, the good old Santa Fe, right on time. Yeah. Well, I wished it wasn't on time today. I wished it'd never get here. Yeah, everything is going to be all right, Chester. No, it ain't. I will soon find out. You'll soon find out. I know all I need to. You were in the Army, Chester. You know how things go. That's what I mean. You're judging a man you haven't even seen. Well, we're getting off now. Look, I'll bet that's him. Yeah. Uh, with a beaver hat. Mm. Look at him. He looks like he takes a bath every single day, Mr. Dillon. Rex Proctor? Yes. How'd you know my name? Oh, I'm Matt Dillon, Mr. Proctor. Oh, yes, of course. Glad to meet you, Marshal Dillon. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Proudfoot? I don't believe I was informed of him. Well, that's all right, mister. I never heard of you, neither. Uh, you'll be wanting a hotel, Mr. Proctor. I've got you a room at the Dodge House. Well, thank you, Marshal. I'll go there first. I would like to wash up a little. Can I tell you, Mr. Dillon? Never mind, Chester. Then I'll show you the town, Mr. Proctor. No, Marshal. No? I'll look the town over alone. I want to be free to form an unbiased opinion of the situation here. I see. I might as well tell you we've had some rather damaging reports about Dodge City. And they all say that Dodge is a pretty rough town, is that it? The government is interested in making the frontier safe, Marshal, safe for everybody. And the impression in Washington is that Dodge hasn't entirely achieved that goal. In Washington? Oh, my You know, I'm going to tell you something, Mr. Potter. Yes, Marshal? You're right. You're absolutely right about Dodge. more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> Get 
out the geranium water. Here comes Mr. Proctor. Hello, Marshal. Uh, come, come in, Mr. Proctor. Um, Chester, isn't it? Chester Wesley Proudfoot. Well, I've looked Dodge over carefully, Marshal. Yes, it's uh, been pretty quiet today, Mr. Proctor, so far. You mean you're expecting trouble? Well, nothing out of the ordinary. What do you call the ordinary? I don't suppose you got out the boot hill, did you? No. No, but I've certainly heard about it. Well, it's got a growing population. Which doesn't seem to bother you much, Marshal. It has, Mr. Proctor. What do you mean, it has? Well, I've accounted for my share of those graves. I'm sure you have. And that's one of the things wrong with this town. Oh? There's no need for shooting here. I've made a study of such towns as this, Marshal, and I can't understand why you run Dodge the way you do. And what way is that, Mr. Proctor? Well, there's no deadline, for one thing. Your riffraff should be restricted to one part of town where they won't endanger respectable people. You know, there was a deadline when I came here. I got rid of it. And why, may I ask? Well, Mr. Proctor, the riffraff that you're talking about, they're not all bad men. Most of them are just honest cowboys or buffalo hunters or sodbusters on a little spree. But there isn't one of them that likes to be reminded he isn't quite respectable. And they don't need a deadline. They know where it is. I don't agree, Marshal. We'll put the sign back up. We'll put up some other signs, too. Like what? Plant your delphin ears straight? Take it easy, Chester. This is a serious matter. Well, go ahead, Mr. Proctor. How is it I haven't seen a man in Dodge who isn't wearing a gun? Oh, you think they should check their guns? Certainly. If men want to fight, they'll fight, Mr. Proctor. But if they haven't got guns... They'll use something else. And besides, if there's a rule that they have to check their guns, they'll think I'm afraid of them. And that'll be the end of any law at all. You're wrong, Marshal. This is going to be the beginning of a strong law here. I want those signs up before sundown. Well, surely you ain't going to do it, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I'm going to do it, Chester. But why? Because it's the only way I can teach Proctor his lesson. not the most popular man in Dodge tonight, Matt. I don't recall I ever was, Kitty. People are saying you've turned into an old maid. Yeah, I know. All because of that idiot Proctor. Look at him over there, staring at everybody like there was bugs. Well, he's trying to do his job, Kitty. The only trouble is he doesn't know how. You really have to do what he tells you, Matt? Well, I'll admit I never ran a town before except on my own terms. Then why do it now? Get out and let Proctor handle it. He thinks he knows everything. I never ran from a fight, Kitty. And it's Proctor I'm fighting now. And the only way I can. Oh, well, maybe you're right, Matt. If you quit now, things will only get a lot worse than they are. Oh, Matt. Yeah, I knew this would happen. He's got a gun. I don't take that gun, mister. No. Give it to him, Charlie. I got it. The boy's drunk. He just killed a man, mister. I I know that. And what are you standing up for him for? You a friend of his? My name's Stroud, Marshal. I'm trail boss of the TR outfit. And he rides for you? That's right. He murdered an unarmed man, Stroud. He's under arrest. You want me to lock him up, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I'll take him, Chester. All right, come on with me, fella. Ain't far. Stroud. I don't like to see that, Marshal. Neither do I, Stroud. Well, the other man started it. Charlie didn't know he wasn't armed. He just got into town. You know, he hadn't heard about your new rule against carrying guns. That's a good no. defense, Stroud, but Charlie wasn't wearing a gun belt. He had that six-shooter hidden. He knew. 
All right, I tried. But I'm telling you, Marshal, that's what comes of trying to disarm the men. I've seen it in other towns. I know, I know. Then you better do something about it, fast. So, you've got another man for Boot Hill, Marshal. Mr. Proctor, did you hear what Straw just said? I heard him. Good. And we'll count this man as yours. You think about that, Mr. Proctor. like you've been to a hanging, man. I guess I'm not too cheerful today, Doc. Propter? Last night's killing didn't seem to bother him much. He doesn't learn very fast, does he? No. Well, I admire you for trying that. But from what I hear people saying, you're buckling under to this man is making you look mighty foolish in their eyes. They don't work for the government, Doc, and I, I do. I told them that. I've said with a job like yours, you have to take the good with the bad. Up to a point, I do, Doc. What do you mean? Things might get so bad here, I'll have to quit. For everybody's... Marshal Dillon! Oh. It's prop. Yeah, now what's he got on his mind? Marshal. Right next door here. Right in that saloon, there's a man wearing a gun. I told him about the rule, and he laughed at me. He said to send you in. He said you know him. Maybe I do. His name is Fane. Nick Fane? Yes. Well, what's the matter? Is he a special friend of yours? Nick Fane's a gunman, Mr. Proctor. Does that mean you're afraid of him? I'll talk to him. See you later, Doc. Yes, sure, Master. I'm coming with you, Marshal. You shouldn't be trying to enforce the law around here, Mr. Proctor. I have that authority. On paper, maybe. I'm just telling you for your own good. You might get hurt. He back? Marshal, what's going on here, anyway? Got a new rule about carrying guns, Fane. Yeah, I know. I saw them sign. Then why are you still wearing Mr. them? Mr. Proctor, why don't you shut up and stay out of this? Marshal, did I ever cause any trouble in Dodge? No, Fane, you never did. And I never will, as long as you run this town the way you have. I respect you, Marshal. But a man like me, I got a lot of enemies. I'm not like most men. I take my gun off, my life wouldn't be worth a nickel. No, I don't think it would. I'm not taking it off, Marshal. Not even if it means fighting you. Is it going to come to that? Mr. Proctor, I'm going to have to make an exception in Fane's case here. You're afraid of him. Don't be a fool, mister. He ain't no more afraid of me than I am of him. He can't make an exception. You break the rule for one man, you have to break it for everybody. It's a bad rule, Mr. Proctor. Can't you see that? Are you going to take this man's gun? No. All right. And I'm sending a telegram to Washington. We need a new marshal in Dodge. <laughs> more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. 
Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy the most. What you doing? Yeah, what is it, Chester? You better come around and they've got Proctor. What? Who's got Proctor? Down the street there. They're going to tar and feather. Tar and feather? That trail boss, Stroud, him and some other fellows, they're going to tar and feather and they caught him just he was going into telegraph office. Now, that was to get me fired. Now, he'll probably think I had something to do with this. Well, he's taking it real good, Mr. Dillon. He ain't saying a word. Look, see? They got a fire going under that pot and everything. Yeah. All right. Let me throw it here, man. Let me throw it. Hello, Strom. I hate to spoil your fun. You ain't going to spoil it, Marshal. Yes, I am. We know the whole story. We get rid of this meddler here and things will be all right again. Little hot tar ain't going to hurt us. I can't let you do it, Strom. You can't stop us, Marshal. All right, you men, clear out of here. All of you. <laughs> you see? They ain't about to move. You heard me. What are you going to do, Marshal? Shoot us? If I have to. Ain't you forgetting them little signs you put up about not carrying guns and dodge? Marshal, there ain't a man here that's got a gun on him. You ain't going to shoot no unarmed man. You can't take us no other way. There's too many of us. By golly, he's right, Mr. Of course Dillon. I am. All right, let's get on with the party, boys. To start stripping our friend from Washington there. Car's about to cook. <laughs> yeah. All right, hold it. Hold it! Wait a minute. Well, you're pretty smart, Strahd. You win. You know something? I'm glad of it. What? Chester. Yes, sir. Go tear down every sign we put up and be sure you find all of them. Yes, sir. I'll do it, Mr. Dillon. I'll do it. All right, men, you can go pick up your guns. The game's over. <laughs> Marshal? Yeah, what's wrong? Uh, no hard feelings? <laughs> You'll get to know me better. I think I'd like to. Well, you haven't said much, Mr. Proctor. There's no use in my talking, Marshal. You were taking this tar and feather business pretty well. man tries to face things as they come. You were facing it like a man. Thank you, Marshal. Coming from you, I consider that a compliment. Coming from me? I've learned my lesson, Marshal. Now I'm going back to Washington to make my report. Well, that's fine. And you'll know how well I've learned it, Marshal, when you get your copy. Well, thank you, Mr. Proctor. Thank you. <laughs> In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield. 
mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, to build a home on the prairie, men often dug up squares of turf and made sod huts. Well, next week, our story centers around such a place and the two men who died there. But that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, John Daner, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Smokers, this is it. L and M filters. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day, change to L and M today. L and M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. Relax with L and M. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Join us again next week for another freshly transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. to Delmonico's for something to eat. If Marshal Dillon comes in, tell him to wait, will you? I'll send him on to Delmonico's. No, he's to wait here. It's Doc who's trying to find him. Oh. You look tired, Sam. I ought to. I've been tending bar for 12 hours steady. Well, what happened to the help you hired last night? 
You had the wrong idea, Kitty. Huh? I'm in business to sell whiskey, not give it away to anybody who needs a drink and can't pay for it. <laughs> Is that what he was doing? Was well, like caught him at it. <laughs> Uh, hello, Kitty. Sam. Oh, Marshal. Matt, you're to stay right here at the bar. What? I promised Doc if you came in, I'd keep you here. He's been looking all over town for you. Well, I thought Doc was delivering a baby down on Salt Creek. Well, he got back about a half hour ago. Oh, what does he want me for? It's about some trouble with a man and his wife called Tebbs. Tebbs? Well, not where he delivered the baby. This was in a sod hut about a mile above the crossing. Oh, well, well what about him? Here he comes. He'll tell you. Here he is, Doc. Oh, fine. So you're a good girl, Kitty. Yes, you are. You're a good girl. I might never have found him. What's all this about these Tebs people, Doc? Well, they're having trouble, Matt. Oh, what kind of trouble? Well, I stopped by to say hello and get acquainted. And they... Well, you know. Oh, sure. <laughs> but the woman, she didn't act like she wanted anybody around. And then I heard the man yell at me from inside. She tried to stop me, but I went in anyways. He was lying there in the bed, Matt, with a bad knife wound in his leg. Oh? Yes. It's festered and it's given him a fever, and I don't think he can walk with it. Uh, did he say what happened? Well, he claimed it was an accident, but he was holding a six-gun under that blanket, Matt. Well, what for? For is what? He scared to death of her. I think she knifed him, and I think she's waiting for a chance to finish him off. Uh, you better get down there, Matt. Maybe too late already. Introducing one of the country's best known jazz musicians and arrangers, Mr. Bobby Haggard. How about whistling along with him? Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> This a Tebb's place, all right, Mr. Dillon. That's the way Doc described it, all right, Chester. Including the wife out there hoeing in the dirt. She's letting on she don't see us. Yeah. I didn't expect we'd be very welcome here. You just wait till she finds out you're a marshal. And I'm not going to tell her, Chester. Not right off, anyway. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Ah. Uh, we were looking for a drink of water. Crick's over yonder. Yeah, but you got a well here. Water's no better than the crick. Okay, we'll use the crick. But, uh, first I'd like to talk to your husband. My husband? What about? Oh, I just, uh, wanted to get acquainted. He ain't here. Ah. Oh. Well, we go get a drink, then we'll come back and wait for it. No. Who are you talking to, Flory? Who's out there? Nobody. Now you stay quiet. He's feeling poorly, mister. I don't want nobody bothering him. Well, we won't bother him. You stay out of there. Well, then I'm coming, too. You better wait outside, Justin. Yes, sir. That hut can't hold more than three people anyway. 
Hello. Oh, I knew I heard somebody. Your wife says that you're sick, Ted. I told you to leave him alone. I told you not to be troubling him. Well, I'm only being neighborly, ma'am. If he's sick, maybe I can help. So you're a neighbor, mister? Well, my partner and I are planning a homestead nearby. As soon as we can decide on a good piece of land. Now, you get it staked out, then you'll come see us, mister. Everything will be fine, then. Now, Flory, don't be that way. Me being sick and her having to do all the chores makes her kind of edgy, mister. And being up nights, that's what's hardest on her. I ain't complaining. Yeah, I know, Flory, but I can tell. Mister, I got an idea. Said you wanted to help. Uh, sure, sure, anything I can do. Be willing to sit up with me tonight? No, Ben. Ah, you need some rest, Flory. You see, I got a... I got a fever, mister. I get to tossing them asleep. I throw off a blanket all like that. Uh, you don't look like you've been sleeping at all. Huh. Will you do it, mister? Sit up with me? No. No, he ain't going to sit up with you. Oh, why not, ma'am? I, I don't mind. Because I ain't going to sleep in here with no stranger about. That's why. Oh. Well, I didn't think she would. Look, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll spend the night on the ground outside, if you don't mind. We do mind. Rory, you ain't acting like a wife. You ain't acting like a wife at all. You can stay, mister. Now, oh, fine, good. Wait a minute, mister. Yeah, what? I was just wondering if maybe tomorrow if you'd be willing... I ought to get into Dodge and see the dock. There's a wagon outside. No, you don't. Oh, shut up. Well, I sure will take you in, mister. I'll be glad to. him in the dodge tomorrow, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, we'd better. Well, why don't she want him to go? Well, I guess Doc was right, Chester. She put a knife in him, and now she's trying to finish him off. Well, if he's got a six-gun under his blanket, why don't he just shoot her? Then who'd take care of him, feed him? He's getting more fever every day, and he can hardly walk anyway. Well, he sure can't last much longer. With him staying away, trying to keep an eye on her all the time. Yeah. Chester, I think I'm going to go in there and tell him who I am and load him into a wagon tonight. This has gone on long enough. I reckon you better, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Where's your wife? She went around back, mister. Look, uh, Tebbs. Hmm? I'm going to take you into Dodge tonight. You are? Oh, that'll be fine. Oh, except for Florida. You want to tell me what's going on here? What do you mean? I'm not a homesteader, Tebbs. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Huh? That's right. And I'm going to take you into Dodge, Flory or no Flory. You need sleep and you need care. Oh, well... Uh... Now, you can tell me your story when you want to. No, uh... There's no story. I just got hurt a little, is all. Yeah, look here, Marshal. You gotta understand, Flory. She don't she she don't mean what she says. She gets all riled up over nothing. She, well, you know how women are. What are you trying to say, Tebbs? Well, I, I'm I'm fine right here. And Flory, she's a good nurse, Marshal. You mean you don't want to go to Dodge? No, oh, shucks, I'll be up and around in a couple of days. Don't you worry about me. All right. But I'll be back. Chester. Chester. 
Get your hands up and turn around, Marshal. She's got a shotgun, Mr. Dillon. And I'll use it, too. She was listening at the window. Now my hands are up, Flory. I'm taking your gun. She got my gun, too, Mr. Dillon. You're making a bad mistake, Flory. I won't have you nor nobody else meddling where you don't belong. Now get your horses and ride out of here. All right. But we'll be back. I'm going to be setting right by that door, Marshal. First thing I see or hear gets a load of buckshot. It won't be us, Flory. But we'll be close enough to hear if you do shoot somebody. I, I couldn't help it, Mr. Dillon. She come ooching around the side of the hut, and I didn't even see that cussed shotgun until it was too late. Yeah, neither did I. What are we going to do? Yeah, there's nothing we can do tonight. But tomorrow, in the daylight, well, we got our rifles. We'll think up some tricks for her. <laughs> Listening to Gunsmoke in your favorite easy chair or out driving? Oh, there you are, in the kitchen. Say, you want to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable? Have a Chesterfield. Enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. A more perfectly packed cigarette gives you an open, easy draw that unlocks all the better taste and mildness of fine tobaccos. And Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, is more perfectly packed, with an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Remember, to the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Buy Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Here on the horse, Mr. Dillon. Uh, she must be inside the hut, Chester. Well, I hope she don't come charging out of there with that shotgun, Blade. <laughs> that would be a bad way to start the day, wouldn't it? I can't think of none worse, especially on an empty stomach. Huh. Now, there she is. Hmm? Now, wait a minute. It's all right. She isn't armed. Come on over here, Marshal. Now, what's she up to? Yeah, it's hard to say with a woman like that. Well, I thought you'd be back this morning. Yes, and I told you we would. We're going to take your husband into Dodge, ma'am. You're too late, Marshal. Too late? He died during the night. What? There's too much for his heart. He always did have a weak heart. Where is he, Flory? Lying there inside, Marshal. Why? Don't you believe me? I believe you, but I want to have a look at him. What for? I got him all wrapped up in his blanket, ready for burying I'll go dig a grave for him if you want to help so much. All right, we'll dig a grave after I've seen him. You got no respect for the dead, Marshal? It's the living that bothers me right now, Flory. I'm going to have a look at him now, Flory. You're no better than a coyote, Marshal. You don't have to watch. I'll go ahead. I don't care. Button his shirt here. All right, what did you use, Flory? Use? 
For what? I might have known he couldn't stay awake forever. He fell asleep and you stabbed him in the heart with a needle or something. That doesn't show much, does it? All right, I'll tell you. Don't matter none anyway. I I killed him. Why would you want to kill your husband, Flora? My husband? He wasn't my husband. He killed my husband, Marshal. We never seen him before. He rode by here and started trouble. Over me it was. My husband pulled a knife, but... But he shot him. And I swore I'd kill him for it, and I did. Why didn't you explain all this to Doc Adams when he was out here? Or to me last night? And let you take him and hang him? I had to kill him myself, Marshal. It's a promise I made my husband while he was dying. And I'm going to have to arrest you. You can't do nothing to me for this. You murdered a man, Flory. You're wrong, Marshal. You just admitted it. Well, I ain't doing no more talking. You take care of him and we'll go into Dodge. But I won't be in jail long. You'll see. <laughs> Good morning, Chester. Good morning, Mr. Dillon. What you got there? That's a mail. Oh, did you pick it up? Yeah, I picked it up. I was down there anyway. How's Flory? She ain't said a word. Go get her, will you? Go get What for? She was right, Chester. I can't keep her in jail. But, Mr. Dillon, we just Go can't... Go get her, will you? Yes, sir. Not much of a jail you got, Marshal. Well, it's not strong enough to hold you. Of course it ain't. Flory, the man you killed, you told me you've never seen him before. Huh? I never had. What was his name? George Bassett. What else did you know about him? He was wanted. Dead or alive. He was wanted. I got a circular on him in the mail, Chester. It's there on my desk. A circular... Well, forevermore. How did you know he was wanted, Flory? He said so. Now, that's hard to believe. Now, he told me. When he was bothering me. Before he killed my husband. He said one more wouldn't matter. I guess he planned to kill me, too, later. Only he hadn't figured on getting cut up. And he needed me after that. Yeah. Now, why didn't you tell me this out there, Flory? I didn't think you'd believe me, Marshal. Yeah, well, maybe you were right. I never heard of George Bassett before. You heard of him now? Yeah. Uh, there's going to be some reward money coming, Flory. Marshal? Yeah, what? You say it. Say what, Flory? Oh, please. Now, that you don't want the money, that you wouldn't take it. Thank you, Marshal. Thank you for saying it right. I, I feel some cleaner for that. Goodbye. Goodbye, Flory. moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. 
Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, on the frontier, almost anybody who had a few dollars could open a bank of his own. And by the same token, anybody who had a gun could try to rob it. And next week, a man does. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Helen Cleave, Lawrence Dobkin, and Stacey Harris. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Smokers, this is it. L and M filters. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day, change to L and M today. L and M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. Relax with L and M. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.